Now I see that like that was probably a trauma response. Me being trans Ooh. is probably a trauma response. That's interesting. Me being trans is probably a trauma response. Interesting. I thought like what a shame that the world puts this stop sign in front of people who begin to question why am I really trans or why are trans people really trans? Yeah. That the amount of real conversations you can have about it in this world is How about God? How about religion? How about anything? The world doesn't want to have the conversation. Why do you really believe in God, dude? Nobody wants to have that conversation because it's uncomfortable. Blair is upset. We can't talk about why you're really trans. I want to talk about why you really believe in God. So I agree. I want to have the conversation about why are you really trans? Is it spiritual, physical, trauma-based? What is it? And I want to have the real conversation like, so why are you a religious person. What's that about? Nobody wants to have those conversations. Trans people don't want to have them. Religious people don't want to have them. Nobody wants to have the actual conversation because it's easier just to pick the bubble and settle into it because at least you get a community, you get consistency, you get structure. The three things science has proved we need as human beings to feel fulfilled in life and to live longer, happier lives. Fuck you. Yeah. Fucker. Fuck you. Hope you fucking die, fucker. Yeah, I feel that. Ugh. Just breathe. Mm. Who are you talking to? Who is that? Hi, Dad. Because I've, I've said this, you know, early on, I feel this like protective energy toward you. The response I want to have to that is I know it's not the correct one. It's just like I can do that, but I shouldn't have to always. You do shouldn't that. have to always do it. You know, no, you shouldn't have had to do that. Your dad should have been there to. Oh, he's going to fucking trigger me, bro. I don't like him. Fucking protect you. That's his fucking job. And so just feel what it feels like. Stay the fuck. AWAY FROM HER! STAY THE FUCK AWAY! So Blair White was on David Sutcliffe's channel. He's the same guy that reviewed or did, quote, therapy with Andrew Tate. But now I'm realizing, I don't know if he's technically a therapist. If you look here on his website, he says, I'm a somantic, somant, somant, somatic practitioner certified in core energetics trained at the Radical Aliveness Institute of Southern California and Institute of Core Energetics in New York City. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, I thought he was a therapist. He's an actor who is also in Gilmore Girls, but he's a coach. He leads groups, workshops, and training since 2011. And I was like, okay. So then I went and I was like, well, what is this? So this is the founder of the Institute, John Perakos. He's Greek. So he's from Greece and then he came to United States and became a doctor through Newark. So he is an MD and then he created this whole like energetics evolution. They sort of believe in introspection and awareness of the consciousness and sort of like the stuff we talk about. But then my, you know, what in the crystal is kind of like humming. So I'm like, what is this? I went to their website, Institute of Court Energetics. And this is our vision. We are a force for the healing of humanity, transforming negativity and fear into love. We support individuals to fulfill their life purpose. Our diverse and international community embodies expanded consciousness. Through our presence and work, we contribute to a better and more conscious world. Mission. The Institute of Core, Energe core Energetics provides an exceptional training required to become a certified core energetics practitioner and facilitates personal transformation that promotes the expansion and evolution of human consciousness, values, and guiding principles. Ongoing commitment to the principles of core energetics, embodied grounded presence, accountability and self-responsibility, authentic self-expression, promote and honor diversity, practice inclusion, engage with respect. Okay, and then it's like, what is core energetics? Core energetics was developed in the early 1970s by the late John Paracas, MD. Um, he has been a mentee of William Rich and later founded Bioenergetics with Alexander Lowen. It says core energetics, which bridges body, psychotherapy, and spirituality is based on three tenets. That the individual is a psy psychosomatic unity, that healing lies within, and that all of life moves towards created, uh, creative evolution. <laughs> you guys are saying scam, cult, okay. <laughs> so they have training events. You can become certified, okay? They have a two-year program, four-year program, postgraduate program. I don't get the greatest vibes from this. Now this guy, David Sut Sutcliffe, He's the one who interviewed Tate, like I said before, and that has like 4 million views. And this guy has like less than 30,000 subscribers. Interesting. Blair White went and talked to him. They call it therapy. I think they're allowed to call it therapy, but I'm a little confused at how much this actually overlaps with 
traditional therapy because I'm a little confused on that. I also think it's interesting that David Sutcliffe is more right leaning, like he does my, more right wing politics. And he was even quoted that he would have smoked with the people who uh, raided the Capitol on January 6th. So he is right leaning. He does have right leaning politics. He hangs out with Andrew Tate and Blair White. And I think that's interesting. Now, disclaimer, I've worked with Blair White in the past and I have nothing bad to say about how she treated me or our working relationship was really, really good. All these years have passed and I've always had a very positive relationship with Blair. Um, I don't talk to her now, obviously. We just did an event together years and years ago, so long ago. But I have a very good impression of Blair, even though I disagree very strongly with most of her opinions. Um, she and I don't agree on most things because I do think everything is like a bubble and everyone's having a different lived experience. I think Blair's lived experience is always valid. And I want to give her space to express that experience, which I think we're going to learn about here. But again, I don't think David Sutcliffe is a therapist, right? Like, I'm a little confused on what to call him. I guess a spiritual coach. And so I'm a little confused about that, right? So I've said if it's not an accredited university, it's a bit sus to run with the label of therapist. Okay, and that's why I was confused because I swear when Dr. Kirk Honda reviewed him, he called him a therapist. I called him a therapist. But now I'm wondering if Dr. Kirk Honda even realizes because he uses the word therapist. Um, David does. So David, well, have you been to therapy? Do you like therapy? And then that sort of insinuates that this is therapy? So I'm a little confused. Like, I'm a little confused. And now, of course, they talk about diversity. And on their website, they're like all about inclusion. Izzy says, new age right-leaning gurus are having their moment right now. Reminds me of the Russell brand. Bro, you know how uh, I talked to Rashad about this, how the right is the counterculture right now. The right is pretending to be rebellious as if they weren't the ma majority oppressors for so long. And now that the left is having more of a momentum, the right is pretending to be counterculture and they're talking about spirituality and they're going into like quote unquote therapy practices. And honestly, I'm not mad about it because if this is the right's version of getting in touch with themselves, like who cares? The left has crystals and witch girls. The right can have spiritual gurus too. As long as it gets you closer to like knowing yourself in the consciousness. But let's see what we learned today because I think that's kind of interesting that the right is starting to embrace it. But that's what I mean. We're not that different, are we? No one's that different, guys. Whether you're conservative, conservative or liberal or leftist or progressive, whatever you want to call yourself. Okay. One side has crystals and astrology and witches. And the other side has spiritual gurus, coaches, um, quote, leaders that they can follow and listen to. You know what I mean? We're all the same at the end. We're looking for tools to have a better relationship with ourselves. I do think it's interesting, though, when you sort of brand yourself, whether more left-leaning or right-leaning, to have a specific kind of audience. And I think that just, again, pushes the narrative of bubbles, which I think is within reason. But that's the thing that I will always find funny. Have you, have you done any therapy before? Not in my... Okay, so right out the gate, have you done any therapy before? which sort of insinuates this is therapy or therapy adjacent. This was recorded January 4th, 2024. My adult life recently, right. like scattered throughout my life, my parents took me to a therapist or my mom did uh, when I was young, like observed a lot of, I guess now that I'm thinking of it, really like bad issues I was having as a kid. What issues? Uh, I recently talked to her on the phone and she was kind of, we're kind of opening up about the past in my childhood now because I had a super bad upbringing. And uh, I'm finally in the space to kind of like look at it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm more interested in doing therapy and like learning, I'm on neuroscience a lot lately, like right. learning about how the brain works, learning about repressed memory. I wonder how they're gonna feel if they start examining like we're biological creatures. Like, you know, it's always interesting. Again, the right has become, especially with Andrew Huberman being coming more popular. I'm very into neuroscience and all of these things. But then I wonder if they'll go, they're going to go a step further and maybe look at Robert's work or maybe talk about that, how we are evolved animals on this planet, most likely, or evolved biological creatures. And then I wonder how they feel about free will. I wonder how they feel about all those narratives. Now, I and you have talked about free will a lot. So I believe in a concept of free will that I think is more within reason. And then, of course, there's this idea that like we are so a product of our biology that I think is really within reason as well. So I wonder if they're willing to have those conversations, because I think at the end of the day, if we could acknowledge that we're all going to be different forever, then maybe we could find a little bit of like acceptance and others while understanding that. Because again, that idea that people can change is also what 
forces people to resent people because they think like you could be someone different, but like, can you be someone different? And how much different are you really? You know what I mean? Like how much different are you really, you know? <laughs> Peanut butter says, don't tell the right about John Verveke. Bro, John Verveke talked to Jordan Peterson. So there's some overlap, but see, they might not love Verveke as much as Jordan because Verveke is trying to give balance and Jordan's like full on anti the left. So areas which I've also experienced recently and uh, just kind of understanding the past mm -hmm. to get a better grip on the present. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. What, when you say you had like a you had bad childhood? Oh, yeah. So what my mom told me on the phone were actually a few things I didn't even remember myself. I guess I used to tell her that like I didn't want to live when I was mm -hmm. like nine or ten. Um, I don't remember having any actual suicidal thoughts like that's actually never been on the table for me I think literally uh -huh. mm. so I think that maybe I was communicating to her that like the way I'm living like being in this house isn't okay um what was going on in the house a lot a lot oh my god so you grew up in uh, northern California a small town very mm. small town Northern California. Brothers, sisters. I had a half brother. Uh huh. And uh, my mom and my dad. Blair looks great. I'm just gonna say it. She is looking mighty fine. Everything looks great. She looks great. Um, makeup looks great as usual. Dad and two dogs. So like super like normal nuclear family type deal. But you know I was definitely born into a lot of trauma from them. Like what they had from their lives before mm. me. Sure. And uh, I love the self-awareness, love the big T word, trauma. Lots of conservatives or right-wingers are afraid to use that word, so good for her. I definitely had no allies growing up, let's put it that way. Right. I was like one bitch against the world, huh. mm -hmm. one bitch army. So, and the, the step sibling was, came in, or they were? He's old, no, he was there actually before me. Okay. Um, and we have different dads. You have different dads. Yeah. Yeah. Can't even say which one I would rather have because both of them were kind of flops, both of our dads. But, uh, you know, just I've recently understood that I have so much of what my mom has in terms of like, you know, issues with trauma and her brain. And she passed so much of it down Great. to me. Ooh, ooh. Okay, good, good, good. I mean, last time we reviewed Blair, I think she, we reviewed that she was having like a good introspective moment on the Joe Rogan podcast. So this continues that good introspective journey, like good for her um, owning what her mother probably passed down to her. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's nice. Partly because she repeated a lot of patterns and like not raising me optimally, I guess, and not creating an environment that was healthy for me. But then also I feel like a lot of it was genetic too. Interesting. So, like, yeah. anxiety in particular, and um, nice. you have anxiety. Pretty bad. How does it manifest? Uh, well, it's recently started in the past few years, manifested as like panic attacks, which mm. I never oh. knew it was like a physical, physiological thing mm -hmm. until I actually experienced one. I always thought like, oh, someone's just really stressed out. Mm. And it's like an actual thing that happens where your brain is obviously telling you you're dying. And that's what happened? Like how, yeah, yeah. How, how is it when you have a panic attack? What actually? What is this set? I just gotta know what's happening here. Is this like a bedroom? Is this like for the orgy later? What is this? There's lots of pillows and lots of mattresses. For me, my brain simulates like stroke-like. Love that language. For me, my brain, love that. Symptoms, breathing issues. It'll make me feel like I'm having a heart attack. Like the first time it happened, um, I was with my fiance and it was the first time I ever experienced like any. See, she has a fiance. They're still not married. Feeling with my heart. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, I have to go to the hospital because it started feeling like it was failing. Mm. Um, Looking back, it was just me being super overworked and stressed and, you know. Overworked and stressed. Yeah, and just having anxiety and... Is there anxiety. any meaning that you, you've you made of it or just over stress? Um, definitely there's a, that there's a lot to understand about what got me here, which is uh -huh. like, honestly, such a beautiful life. As much as I can harp on like the negative things I went through as a kid, like I love my life now. I've really become the exact person that like childhood me needed nice like in many ways that's great um i've actually corrected a lot of patterns i was born into from my parents mm. and my family and uh that's part of the reason why i'm kind of a loner in that sense of f family but 
I really do like my life now. Did you feel alone in your family? Super. And alone in your town, I guess? I mean, you're obviously were, you're different from a, a yeah. very young age. Yeah, and everyone saw it, even before me, actually. Everyone saw it? Yeah. That must have been, how was that? It was twofold. It was painful because I endured a lot of bullying, but also I wouldn't take it back for the world because I learned so much from it. And I know that people can feel a certain way about hearing that. Um, I'm not saying kids should be bullied, especially not necessarily the way I was, which was yeah. like relentless, mm -hmm. you know, getting called the f in preschool, Ooh. which I didn't know the word f You know what I mean? It just yeah. happened. I was like, what is that? So, you know. Because you were effeminate at a- Yeah, yeah. Right out of the gate. Oh yeah, it was, I was there. You were there. Basically out the womb. That's what my parents said. said. That's amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. And how, nice. how did your parents respond to that? Um, I'm not crying, by the way. I have allergies. Okay. Uh, like, See, I have the worst allergies. My eyes are watering, oh, of course. Yeah, Austin's bad for that. Yeah. <clears throat> how did your parents deal with you? What, 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 how did you intuit that they dealt with you? Did they just accept you? Did they love you? Did they try to correct it? Was there um, a judgment? Well, it was bizarre. Like, my mom was totally fine with it uh, and understood that in some you know, scenarios she would have to defend me because of the world and how it would interact with me. So she was the closest thing I ever had to like someone, like a defender, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was a lot of inconsistencies. She was my defender, but then also I felt like she was just like a ghost, like gone and like observing actual bad things happening and not there. Oh. So there was that. And then my dad, I, listen, I don't want to necessarily say everything that he was, because I haven't been open about that with anyone mm -hmm. on camera or mm -hmm. even in real life yet. But uh, he was, you know, a really bad person, mm -hmm. you know, a really dark, damaged person that passed a lot of his darkness into me. So, was, was that just in, in his energy or was he acting actions, out on that? Actions. Was he, he was abusive mm -hmm. physically? She just said she didn't want to talk about it, bro. She just said she didn't want to talk about it. Yeah, I don't want to necessarily say exactly what form of abuse, but like, you know, the kind that will give you trauma. Right. For sure. And maybe come up in repressed memories when you're 30, which wow. I learned is actually very common. Okay, okay. Lots of good therapy talk. Even though I don't know that this guy's a real therapist, I know that Blair must be going to a real therapist because that's, not, that's some good therapy talk. Okay. Repressed memories. Mm, well, that it can happen that late. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I never sure. knew that, you know. I had like a narrative once I escaped my hometown and my family. Escaped, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a narrative that once I escaped, I was good. I didn't have any problems, you know. I'm the first entrepreneur in my family. I'm the first self-made person. I'm the first person to um, move out of my hometown, really, or mm -hmm. that whole area, at least. Uh, and to break a lot of the curses that they had, like in patterns. Yeah. So I had this narrative in my head that I'm good. I'm the yeah. only good one in my family. Right. And in some ways I am, but yeah. there's a lot of damage that I'm realizing is there. So now I'm fixing it. Interesting. So, <clears throat> I mean, let me kind of frame what I've heard so far and you can, you can tell me if it feels accurate. And you can stop me anytime. I like run my mouth a lot. No, you're, it's great. Run okay. your mouth. <laughs> I'm good at that. Does anyone know if Blair's a Taurus? What is Blair? What's, what's her astrology? When's her birthday, y'all? Figure it out. <laughs> um, so you grew up, you knew right away, or maybe you didn't know, but you were different. Mm -hmm. And your mom supported you, and your mom also wasn't always there for you. She was a ghost, you yeah. said. And your dad was abusive and dark. So when I hear that, it sounds scary. Yeah, yeah, and that's only about a third of it. You know, That's like, a third of it? He was also involved in gangs, so there was a lot of like scary oh like people coming in and out of the house as a kid. And wow. you know, you you gotta remember, I'm also not just any kid. I'm also like, I was always very small, very. You know what's interesting, and I think this is always going to be the conundrum for a lot of people to accept, is like the people who take the more independent route will identify with whatever group prom promotes and accepts that personality into their bubble. So if the conservatives have this idea that they're more independent and they're less focused on community and, you know, they rely on themselves, then like naturally a person with this story who has the narrative in their head, that they did it all on their own. They're going to follow into that bubble, right? 
Same with the reverse, which is somebody who's like always wanted a community, somebody who never had a community and they felt like they couldn't do it alone and they needed one is probably going to end up in a bubble that is forming around that type of community. Okay, so she's a Virgo. You guys are saying September 14th, 1993. Thank you, Discord. Um, if you're feeling anything, it might be because she's a fellow Earth sign. Let's go. I don't know much about astrology, but from what I'm learning briefly in terms of categorization, I'm wondering what the overlap is between people who are like independently minded and then people who aren't. And by independent, I don't mean to insult people because I know a lot of people are very, you know, um, uh, I think offended when I don't identify them as like very independent, but I don't mean to argue that like that's a bad thing. Lots of people, some people are dependent and some people are independent. And I, I mean that in categorization, totally neutral. I'm not memorializing it. Blair has this like independent energy. It makes sense to me that she would then end up in like a conservative bubble more than a progressive one because there is like a different kind of pressure in each bubble. And of course I ended up in neither Though obviously more progressive, just like politically speaking, I think both are just toxic little cesspools of bubbles for true introspection. I think true introspection does not happen in either progressive political bubbles or conservative ones, but enough introspection can occur to give you a sense of community, whether it's an independent sense of community or community sense of community. So, you know, there's something to this that I think is interesting. If I'm going to have very much like a you know, weaker energy mm -hmm. growing up, mm -hmm. which is interesting because over the course of Ooh, CJ, great point. Like some people who are entrepreneurs and other prefer to work for others. And even in entrepreneur bubbles, some people who are entrepreneurial like to work in groups and other people like to work on their own. You know? SB says, what exactly do you mean when someone is dependent then, like community-based? Um, just within this context, like dependent and independent could mean different things within different contexts. But yes, in this particular uh, conversation, I mean to identify the sort of like independent person who could rock solo if they had to, like a team player versus not a team player. I don't think Blair is much of a team player, but I know she gets along with people, but she seems like, like sort of similar to me. I get along with lots of people, like most people I meet get along with me, but I don't want to be on your team. Like, I don't want to be in your clique, but a lot of people want a clique. They want a clique very badly. And so, like, I don't want a clique. And I think to them, they find that very strange, but they have to remember, like, lots of people make it in the world by not having a true clique, by just being, you know, but that doesn't mean I don't have friends. That doesn't mean I don't have loved ones. That doesn't mean I don't have people I love to collab with or work with. I just don't want to be a part of your clique. You know how there's, like, cliques on the internet? I don't want to be a part of your clique. I just want to come in and say hi, but I don't want to be like, like if I watch certain YouTubers and I love watching YouTubers with clicks there, you're like, you have to be there. Like you, ha you are obligated to those people. And I just want to be able to quit my job tomorrow. I'm like very, I just want to be able to do whatever I want tomorrow. And you can't do that when you're part of a click guys. So that's what I mean. Like some people, they want to do what they want to do tomorrow and other people, they want to, they want to have to think about their community first. I don't want to think about my community first. You know, so. so in my life, it's just expanded and expanded. And now I look at how much actual power I have in the world in terms of, you know, millions of people watching me every month and, you know, an audience that is so loyal and, you know, just so much I've been able to accomplish. I'm like, that power just expanded somehow. Yeah. You know? but how, yeah. how is that to the, be uh, famous, to, to have all the, these viewers and, and all this power and influence and, and to have He's an actor. He was on Gilmore Girls, though I don't know if he was ever famous. I have people looking at you and asking you questions and wanting to talk to you. And your words carry a lot of weight and meaning. And you're engaged in all of these big cultural controversies. Mm -hmm. how, how is the experience of that for you? I mean, it's the honor of my life. I love that it happened. It was accidental. I'm not one of these people that set out with that as like my goal. Mm -hmm. You know, I just put up a random video that I expected seven people to watch and hmm. start my Wait, wait, wait. So if you said identity versus tribe, I feel like, okay, yes, I agree with that. I think in context, it reminds me that like I have my own tribe. So I have an inner circle. But we're so independent, even as an inner circle, like we all just want to do our own things. That's the kind of tribe that I have. I have like, I always say it's like a one piece tribe where one piece, everybody is very independent, even though they're together. They're not 
dependent on one another so far in the series. I'm like, I don't know what episode I'm on, but like almost 600, I think. I don't know. But they don't see, no spoilers, please, in the chat. But they they don't really like they're not dependent versus like some other animes. A lot of the characters are very dependent and they always hang out with each other and they never allow the other person to like do their own thing because it's almost like a threat to the group. I don't want to be a threat to the group because I spend time away from the group. You know, ooh, click might be a good word. Like, I guess, like, yeah. Again, I love having my besties. I love my friends and family. But at the same time, like, if any of my friends and family get in the fucking way of me making a decision, I'm going to get fucking pissed. Like, do not cock block my joy in my one lifetime. Thank you. And I think sometimes when you're part of a clique or a tribe or whatever you want to call it, you do have to think about that. That's why it's so difficult and exhausting. But also some people thrive in it. Some people prefer it. Like, I know so many people who try to, like, buy houses in the same neighborhood as their besties. But eventually those besties like move on or do other things or wanted like a different climate or maybe health, you know, and some people feel a way about that. I see those little like tiny home villages and people are like, Brittany, you would love living there. No, I would not. They're like, well, you can all live in tiny home like neighborhoods and all be. I don't want to be a part of your little clique. I don't want to be part of your gang. I don't want to join a gang. I don't want to join a gang. I just want to be a good community member, but I don't want to join a gang, you know? So it's interesting. Like, it's just interesting to know what category you're in. Or maybe you're like, again, I love to bubble hop. I love to visit my communities. I just don't want to be a part of it. You know, I used to want to try, but obviously it didn't, it made me miserable. So I'm not moralizing it either. If it doesn't make you miserable, then you're exactly the person to do it, right? Life just, oh my God. One I, video, is that how it happened? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. See, this is so interesting on YouTube. One video and then that's it for some people. But for some people, it doesn't work that way. It's not one video. It's like you have to make a lot of videos. I wonder which video it was for her. And then you have to stick to a, sh a script, which I think Blair does really, really well. Like, you know what to expect when you watch a Blair White video. So I think that's probably comforting to the audience. You know what I mean? My form of being a public figure is incredibly unique in the sense of like, there's not exactly a bunch of right-wing trans people running around. In fact, there are almost none. Uh, hi, Caitlin. But, you know, Caitlin is like 70 and was yeah. different, way different than me. Yeah. Um, so it's been really interesting to navigate, too, because there's no blueprint. Like, I'm not a podcaster TM that has like a, oh, this is the career trajectory of a podcaster. I'm like, mm. really, there's no blueprint. I'm finding out as I go. But, I mean... It's been amazing, but it also parallels my childhood. I was very, very polarizing as a kid. Mm. Really? Oh yeah, every single person in my school, in my hometown, had a very strong opinion about me. There was almost no neutrality. Mm, I wonder if there's a correlation there between content creators and people who have strong opinions about you. Again, I feel very lucky because even though everyone has strong opinions about me, most people like me and most people have always liked me. Um, but then if you hate me, you really hate me. So I get it. But I, I really have like probably an okay sense of self because I feel like 80% of the people that I interact with really, really like me and 90% like me good enough, you know, on the other 10 or whatever. And then like 10% maybe don't like me or don't understand me in general, like from childhood till now, I felt like I never had problems having friends or doing things. I was always socially awkward, but so many, so was everyone else. And I didn't need to be popular with the popular kids because I was kind of like well liked by everyone in my groups. I don't know. I felt like I had moments like I've definitely been bullied. I mean, who hasn't? I've definitely like dealt with stuff. But generally speaking, I feel like I never really had many problems in terms of feeling like people liked me. But I didn't always feel like people understood me, which you guys know. I don't always, I don't know. I'm not always convinced people understand me. But I think they understand enough, so it's good enough, I guess. SB says, don't you think it works out the same in romantic relationships? You have someone you always have to think about in decisions? No. Only because I'm doing life with my romantic partner. I'm not doing life with my friends. Some people do life with their friends. I don't. So I do life with my partner. I don't do life with my friends. So that's the big difference is I don't do life with my family. I'm not one of those people. My family isn't one of those people. My parents don't want that for their kids. My parents want us to do whatever we want with our lives. So that's the only key difference to me is like when I say I don't want to have to depend on that like tribe version versus being independent is like my partner and I, it's us against the world, us against everyone. And that's how my mom and dad say that their marriage was successful almost 40 years together is that it's always them against everybody else.
even their kids. And I think there's something really valuable about that mindset because your kids should grow up and leave the nest. So you you really learn that when shit hits the fan, you're it's like you are one person and you come together, but you also love and you're compassionate and you're understanding. So I would say that's the huge difference. So when you have a community, sometimes the community expects you to live and build your life around them, which a lot of people do. And I think that's fine as well, right? Like that's an okay decision to make. Lots of people thrive doing it. I just don't think it fits everyone's personality. You know what I mean? So think about it. Like the person who's like, oh, they're going to volunteer every Sunday at this community event. That's beautiful, dude. It's not me. But some people love that shit. And I fucking love that for them. I'm just not that person. You know what I mean? Miles says Blair White made a female privilege vid back in 2015. Is that the video that made her popular? Oh, interesting. That's the video. Hmm. Fishy says, oh, you put the community thing into words I hadn't thought about before. I just like the idea of community most of the time because I feel a weird level of obligation and pressure I don't want. I, I think there is an obligation and pressure. Like I love being obligated to my partner because it feels really good and self-fulfilling. But being obligated to anyone else is absolutely not something I'm interested in doing. I'm happy to have conversations about it. I love talking about it, but I don't actually want to do it. You know what I mean? Um, Miss Fishy says so many quote communities I've been in are super low key controlling to me the way they the way I think or speak or live. Oh, totally. Yeah, that that was always my problem in the communities. I tried, guys. I volunteered. I was an activist. I was working in communities. I wanted to die because it was it was just not what I wanted. It felt horrible from everything I wore to how I speak to how I moved to who I dated. It was just so much pressure. And I'm like, what are you, my mom? Like, no. And same, like I love my parents, but I'm still going to do whatever I want at the end of the day. Like I love my family. I'm still going to do whatever I want at the end of the day. And I know that a lot of people can't do that. I, like I said, there's this Indian guy we're going to watch later on TikTok, probably next week. And he talks about how he lives for his parents. And I think that's fine. I meet a lot of people that are willing to do that. Like they're willing up, they're willing to like give up the love of their life for their family. They're willing to do things. You can do that, but bitch, I'm not about to do it just because you're doing it. And then sometimes those people will like moralize it or be like, you don't love your family because you're not doing it for them. Um, You don't love yourself. So who's, who's really fucking up here? You know, who's really fucking up here? Um, Discord says clicks feel so much like masking to me so much the so much in behavior. Yes. To keep up with it's exhausting. Yes. I like the value. Uh, I like the value of personal agency and my close friends. If we all have that, then we can make our other differences work. And I will say even with like close friends and family, you know, some of my friends or family, I should say, are conservative. So my family doesn't watch my content. And if my family ever does and they're like, that's offensive to me. So do you think I'm going to take down my content because it's offensive to you? Yes. Some people do. Some people do think you're going to take it down because it's offensive to your parents or some shit. And I think that's beautiful, bro. You do that. But I'm not about to do that. You know what I mean? And Blair is not going to do it either. You think Blair would take down her content if somebody in her life was progressive and was like, that really offended me, Blair. Could you take it down? No. 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 <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Like I would have teachers engaging in like the bullying the kids were doing or I would have, you know, parents writing to the school that they don't want the gay kid around their Mormon kids or something like it was very like one of the things I understood very early was that everyone has such an opinion on me and I'm just existing. So I think that all that was for a reason because it mirrors what's happening now, you know, right. I'm very like you love me or hate me. I've had people break down in the mall crying like you're my hero type stuff. Yeah. And then I have people that log on their phone and say Blair White's a Nazi and I want her fucking dead. So mm -hmm. It's wild. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of trans, <laughs> a lot of projection and transference oh, onto yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I remember discovering you and just thinking how smart you were and, and concise with your language and just you see things very clearly and you name them very simply. Things that seem obvious, <laughs> but it was a relief to hear somebody and somebody like you specifically say those things. Um, and you obviously have a gift for it. I was going through your Twitter last night, it's just like every tweet is just a dart, uh, perfectly articulated. Were you always like that when you said yeah. you were, as a kid, you just saw the bullshit? Well, I was always forced to see through it because. I So far he's had Andrew Tate on and Blair and mostly conservatives. I wonder if he'd had a similar conversation with me. 
I wonder if I told my story about how I saw bullshit in the conservative like bubble, if he would say like, oh, when did you start noticing bullshit? Do you know what I'm saying? I wonder if he'd be able to have that same energy with me, you know? Even though I didn't know exactly what was the cause of really bad behavior in my house, I always knew it was bad. You know, I had a really strong sense of right and wrong from a very early age. Yeah. Um, and I still don't really know why, because by all accounts on paper, I should have been a piece of shit. You mm. know, I should have followed in the footsteps of people in my family. I should have repeated patterns. But I remember like being, you know, super young, maybe six or seven, telling my mom, you know, that was wrong to do. You know, Interesting. lecturing. I was the parent a lot for like my mom. You know what? I had a very similar predisposition. I don't know what it is in terms of personality, but even I as a child, like my parents didn't know I was doing this. But like at 14, 15, 16 years old, I was on like dating websites and like Yahoo chat forums, like lecturing married people about cheating on their spouses. And I'd be like, I'm 15 years old and I literally know better than you. What are you doing with your life? And they'd be like, oh, and I've been doing this since I was younger. So like, FYI for all those people that are like, Brittany hates cheating because she was cheated on. No, I've been lecturing cheaters since I was literally in high school. Because I was just, that's just my person. Ever since I was a young kid, my mom says like, I would go up to adults and ask them like, why did you do that? Why did you do that? Like, why are you this way? And my mom would be like, you, you can't just ask people those questions. But also my parents secretly thought it was so funny. And they kind of liked it, honestly. I think they thought it was like very independent of me. <laughs> mom wow and then i was a little kid giving like my teenage brother advice on how to stay out of gangs and do the right thing and all of it was very concise very valid advice yeah no i've been like that see blair and i i'm telling you we fall into similar categories because no matter how old i've been i've always had older people asking me for advice um my whole life like whether i was a teenager whether i was 19 whether i was like people just like wanted to know what i thought about something or they knew, again, they knew I wouldn't judge them so they could ask me. And I think I do, like, hold that very sacred to my personality type. Because as judgmental as I come off, I won't judge you, bro. Even if you're fucking cheating, I'll tell you, like, girl, this ain't it, girl. But I know, I know that good people do shitty things. So let's talk about it, you know? So, again, I, I think this is interesting that we have this overlap. I love that. Right, right. So I had always a tendency to be like, where's the fog and how do I see through it? And I really don't know how to stop until I see through it. I just tunnel. Right. I, w I wonder if that's, um, I mean, it's obviously part of your essence, but I wonder if it's also a kind of an adaptive strategy. Because if you're in an environment where there's no safety, yeah, there's no one there to protect you. And you're Zero. actually quite vulnerable because you're, you're different. Um, that like a way you use the skills you have, like we all do to sort of keep ourselves safe. And so if you see things and are sharp and you're able to name them, it's a way that you can kind of regain s some sense of power, yeah. I guess. I had to be my own advocate from the start. So I feel like it is probably like very adaptive. And, you know, I also recently discovered that I'm a little bit autistic. Mom. So what did she say? What does she say? <laughs> our neurodivergent trans queen, our neurodivergent queen, Blair White. Well, that like real precise language thing I've learned is kind of an autistic trait. <laughs> right. So, you know, oh my God, Ingrid just said, I wonder if Blair White is neurodivergent. <laughs> but all of it has benefited me. That's what's so crazy. Sure. Is when I talk about, you know, trauma or different things I went through or like the hell that my childhood was. I don't do it in like a woe is me way. I do it in like a, look what I survived. Like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. And just understanding that like, even though I survived it, no human leaves it unscathed, that type of environment. Yeah. So I'm telling you to be a content creator, you kind of got to be a little divergent. Like you got to be a certain type of content creator, a certain type of content creator. You know, there's still things I have to like heal and fix, and right. you know, mm. it's an ongoing process. Well, the the survival strategy becomes like imprinted on the psyche, and it feels like who we are. But th there, it's there's a defense in that, and and usually what happens right around this would happen for me right around your age, where you start to realize, wait, there's there's other things going on in my mm -hmm. psyche that I'm not entirely aware of, 
that are motivating that are me or that are driving me. And I'm not totally in control here. Oh yeah. Do you feel that? Well, it's twofold. I feel like I'm not in control in the sense of, you know, I've identified different ways that my brain operates in ways that I don't like. So I'm working to change that, uh -huh. but also like, I don't know, this is going to sound loony, but I also have always since a really young age had an inherent understanding that like nothing's really real, like as in the world. And it's not to say nothing's without or anything's without consequence, but like there's some sort of orchestration that I don't even need to beat myself up to like understand happening. Mm -hmm. And there is like a version of me that's not necessarily right here that is pulling the strings and not even in a manipulative way, but like a I got you away. Like I've always. Is that God? Maybe. What I do, mean, do you have a relationship with with God or or some higher? You know, I'm a DM Blair. Let me DM Blair. Maybe we should talk, bro. That's really interesting. Power? Do you? Well, God's a funny word, and I have yeah. a lot of you know more, you know, conservative audience who feel very strongly about God and specifically what that means, which mm -hmm. is you know to most of them it's going to be Jesus and the Holy Spirit and right. Christianity or Catholicism. For me, you know, I'm really not at like believing in God in a religious sense, yeah. but I just, I just know there's something else. Like I can just feel it. Where'd that come from? Where, where is that just an intuition? Yeah. Yeah. Ever since young. And I only sort of now recognize it as somewhat of a spiritual intuition. Like, but I remember having these thoughts on a more basic level as a kid. Like I remember telling myself, this isn't even real. Like all these people are operating in ways like there's something else pulling the strings for how everyone's off. Discord pointed out that there are some studies showing a link between uh, autism and being trans. And I do actually, yeah, I've, I've heard of those things and I am curious about that. And I wouldn't be surprised. Oh my gosh, I was watching. I think this content, yeah, it was a commenter on one of my videos. I like clicked on their YouTube channel because it had like some sort of I'm a content creator adjacent name and I clicked on it to see what their content was about and I like looked at this human and I was like whoa like this is the most like neurodivergent like autistic person I've ever seen and as I'm like watching their videos and listening to them their sense of justice bro is so clear and that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like sometimes I will look at a person. I'm like, obviously you have autism or obviously you have neurodivergent, but it's not because we're guessing someone's identification because you can't know that through a screen. What I'm trying to say is like, I see myself in you or I see something that relates to me or it's the same way I feel when I see a person I'm like you're gay, right? You're queer. I'm saying like that feels familiar to me. Not that I'm saying I have autism or that I'm autistic, but I mean, there's something about it where I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that. So again, like I know in other videos, people are like, that's a, that's a person with autism or not autism. And they're trying to like diagnose you. We're not trying to diagnose people. We're trying to see parts of ourselves in people. Like, and not that, again, I don't want to like sit here and say like, Brittany's autistic. I'm saying Brittany understands and relates to him. Like, oh yeah, that's relatable. And what does that mean? Right? It's probably just like general, ne general neurodivergency. <laughs> Make it up terms left or right here. So anyways, I think it's interesting though what direction we go into how she went more right-winged and I went more neutral because like everything is sort of made up or there's like this thing pulling you could be biology so she's talking about genetics or she's talking about God or she's talking you know what I mean Ingrid says that's why I thought Blair was autistic her strong sense of justice I mean I wonder that I wonder that was shoe on head as well I wonder that about like people who who stick to the script as well for their shtick, like contrapoints. I wonder if Natalie's autistic or like obviously neurodivergent. But yeah, like I do look at all these people and I'm like, you, what is it? What do you have? Tell me. What is it? What's your brain like? How are you processing information? Tell me. Because there's just a certain thing, you know, there's like a certain thing. <laughs> Cam Cam says, no, Brittany is autistic. Wait, okay. You know, Cam Cam, we don't need to name names, but you know, Cam Cam, you know how we were in VC the other day and there was a person and we're all like, so when did you get diagnosed with autism, bro? Like you obviously have autism. And then it's like, I've never been diagnosed. And I'm like, do you look at me like that? And you're like, obviously, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Cause I will look at a certain people. I'm like, what do you got, bro? What is it? It is that, you know, like, is that the same? Cause when I swear I look at people and I'm like, you got that neurodivergent riz, right? <laughs> you got that neurodivergent riz, you know? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 
operating. Interesting. And something uh, something's going on underneath or mm -hmm. above. Yeah. Um, that is making all this happen, and you you intuited that. Yeah, yeah, and I always kind of knew that like the pressure that you know everyone puts on you to understand what it is and find it in terms of Jesus or uh -huh. Christianity or religion. Um, I've always known that was just like dumb, like no <laughs> offense, but like, I just, I don't feel like I've never felt the wait. Cam Cam says, yes, Brit, it is. No. See for real, for real. I <laughs> Grace, <laughs> Gracie says, I thought you were already diagnosed. <laughs> Guys, I will, I will literally get callers that are like, I have autism too. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not diagnosed. Like, and you know what I mean? Like, again, I, I probably, right. But also maybe not, but also maybe, I don't know. But it's like, yeah, I'm, fuck, I'm dying. Whoo, I'm dying. <laughs> Urge to like, I need to nail it to this religion. It's always like. Whatever's up there is so beyond my comprehension that there's no way I need to beat myself up understanding mm. it. Just like mm. an ant wouldn't need to beat itself up understanding humans. Right, 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 right. But it's something to do with me and all of us, and there's some kind of some connection between all of us. Yeah, I just it just when you talk about all this stuff, and I think about you as a little boy in this town. Um, it just it must have been, I don't know, were you lonely like? isolated like what like yeah like i'm i'm different like you know that right oh, yeah. like you're different mm -hmm. and what how did you make sense of that like what did you do with that like what what did your mind did you beat yourself up about it there's something wrong with me i'm not okay i wish i wasn't this way did you no. ever have those thoughts i've never related to people who you know experience some of that same maybe like judgment about their sexuality or behavior or whatever. Uh -huh. I've never related to people who take that on and then beat themselves up or think they're the problem. Right. You know, the whole like. Uh, what's her, what's her astrology sign again? Does that match up? Somebody, somebody educate me. Shoot. She's a Virgo. Do, is that normal for Virgos? Like not to take it upon themselves? Is that a Virgo thing? The, the entire idea of like, I'm the problem here. How am I the problem? Like I knew I wasn't in control of the way I walked right. or that my voice didn't drop or right. that, you know, I knew whatever they were calling me, you know, fat before I knew what the fat yeah. word was. I was like, there's no way this has anything to do with me in terms of I'm not the reason you're this ugly right now. You know, <laughs> for real. I was like, this is such ugly, like animal behavior. I always looked at it like they're literally like animals, like they're operating on more like beast like vibes. <laughs> right, right. But nobody was there to, I mean, I guess your mom to a degree was there to support that for you um, to some degree. Like you had some support. Never like explicitly, like we never talked about, like I never came out. Did you feel loved oh. as a child? By her. By her. Are you angry at all about, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess your mom, maybe, maybe your mom, but your dad, uh, he was abusive and. Him, I don't have any grace for um, mm. I don't really know why just because of, um, because he abused her, but also I guess it's a good question. I don't much like his questioning style at this point in the interview PS, but I would love to hear Blair talk. So this is Blair is doing great. She's fantastic. The specific type of monster he was, you I don't, don't really forgive know him. No, yeah. no. And I also don't relate to the people who are like forgivings about you. It's like, is it? I mean. People say it, so maybe you really feel that way, but yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. You know, I'm more interested in healing whatever damage he did. Right. Which to me, that's making it about me. That's a that's prioritizing myself. Yeah. Mm. Okay. CJ th says, I think Vir Virgos are usually independent and have a strong sense of self, strong sense of justice, but they're seriously, uh, but they are serious and studious. Soph says Virgo stereotype is particular, heavily discerning, perfectionist, detail oriented, logical. Imagery of a virgin with her legs crossed, woman who belongs to herself is a good way to envision it. Oh, okay. We need Brittany's big three. We'll have an astrology day if I decide to share it. Abused by the father and he's not there for us, uh, creating safety. I mean, that's really the primary job of the father. Um, how did, did you, do you have any sense of like the meaning you made of that? No, because, well, 
again, it's kind of twofold the answer. Like he let you down. Oh, for sure. Worse than that, you know, Worse just like that. failure, flop, monster, evil. But, you know, a lot of it, a lot of the actions on his part were actually buried deep down in my psyche. So they didn't start coming up until about 29, 30. So in one way, I didn't make any sense of it. But then also what's really fascinating about that is like my body always knew that he was like a demon, uh -huh. like not in the literal Ooh. sense, but you know bad to, for me to be around dark, like I said, because I remember, you know, the only real memories I have of him are always hating him, but not knowing why. Mm, you always hated him. Yeah, he'd walk in the room and I would tell him like, you know, get the fuck away from me for no reason, completely unwarranted. And in fact, the last thing I ever said to him, this is gonna sound crazy, is I hope you get cancer and fucking die, you fucking cunt. I was like. Girl, she really got to let go of that girl. It's not good for her skin. Though, honestly, Blair's skin is fabulous. So maybe it is good for her skin. 17 or 18. And uh, it was triggered by him asking me to take the trash out. And I just said that from the top of the stairs. And he looked at me with basically a knowledge that he deserved it. Like he didn't even fight back, which was interesting. He knew. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I believe. And then this is actually the crazy part. Two weeks later, he got cancer and died. <laughs> oh damn oh damn wow. no way, full body cancer so wow. i don't know what that means but the i said that to say that i never had a logical concrete reason as a kid to hate him but i always knew i did well you know you had logical concrete reasons Whoa. to hate him did no you yeah not? but the repressed memories i uh, didn't actually growing up remember what he had done to me oh. specifically and it's a very right. specific thing he did so i just always still felt the so she was angry with her dad even though she couldn't even remember why she was angry with him but she knew and then he died and then she had like repressed memories come to the surface and then she had like that realization of like Okay, no wonder I fucking hated you. Interesting. And then he died of cancer. Damn. The energy of what that action was. And it made me hate him forever. And he was very deserving of it. So Interesting. You know, you know my whole thing on forgiveness, right? It's for yourself, not other people. Like people who will hold on to their anger for other people. It's interesting because then they're not accepting that like that was that person's journey. And yes, other people's journeys come into contact with yours. And it can be horrible or awful, but like they're on their journey. And like that's what's so difficult because it's not about justifying people's bad behaviors. It's about recognizing they exist because that is their journey. Whether you like it or not, it's one of my favorite things to watch is um, <clears throat> there's this clip from Bad Friends or whatever it's called. What's it called? Horrible Friends. What's it? Bobby Lee and um Ginger's podcast. I forget what it's called. Some societies like Koreans, I mean, they might have a God complex, but they don't have a history of oppression oppressing another group of people each other right are you fucking out of your yeah, mind what the fuck you, what do you mean you don't think asians had fucking they didn't oppress koreans koreans didn't have slaves we didn't fly did koreans fly. have slaves yeah google that I'm yeah because i think that's fucking wrong somebody built them pyramids it wasn't just somebody like you know we're gonna go yeah, korea, korea had the longest we were unbroken about chain. The, we were korea about had the, the longest <laughs> unbroken chain of slavery of any society <laughs> in history <laughs> spanning 1500 years fuck off <laughs> that's not what it says <laughs> zoom it in my eyes are blurry go zoom back it in. Go carlos back. i want to read it all right read it out loud you I wanna, uh, piece right, of shit it. get close all right korea had the longest <laughs> unbroken chain of slavery of any society in history. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! You guys are fucking oh scumbags. We're scumbags. Yeah. We're fuckos. Dude, that's insane. Insane. That's super insane. But who? Who did we enslave? Find out. Yeah, who did yeah. we enslave? Well, a caste system, first of all, you fucking enslaved your own fucking people. The no oh, that doesn't count. It's like this idea that, um, oh, my people are clean of sin or my I'm clean of sin or uh, any of us are clean. All of us have done something, whether as individuals or as communities. And so there's this idea that like, oh, like my people have never done anything. So that idea, right, that narrative in our heads, that's why I say like forgive. Because, like, they're just us on a different journey. Now, of course, you and I as individuals be like, we would never do that. Yes. 
Absolutely. But could you have not done it? Like I I had this discussion in the VC. I don't remember why we started it. It was about like whether or not you could stab a baby. Like I could never stab a baby. Like I understand how to stab a baby. I'm not an idiot. I know how to do it. But I couldn't do it. And like there are people on the planet that it's more within like it's absolutely within their ability to stab a baby. I think that's interesting because I could literally not. I think my body would like reject itself. I'm pretty sure like I would reject myself. You know what I mean? I'd probably stab myself first because like why would you ever need to stab a baby? But I think there are people on the planet that could kill a baby because there are people on the planet that are more than willing to a baby. And if you can a baby, you know what I'm saying? I could not do it. But I wonder if I escaped some sort of like genetic coding or I wonder if I escaped some sort of biological evolutionary like process. Like did I – was I just lucky? Was I just born one of those people who like couldn't do those things? You know what I'm saying? Am I just lucky and the other people are fucked because they were actually born with like an ability to do those things? I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. What yeah. I, you know, he, he did something to you that was dark and – scary and uh painful for sure and you now live with that and you're, you're becoming aware mm -hmm. that that's inside you the the impact of that and it's unresolved and it's having an impact on your life today is that fair yeah it's it's had a huge impact now that i have more clarity on the entirety of my life um mm. gaming says i believe everyone is capable of that type of thing just depends on the situation yeah, that's not my lived experience. How do you know that? Like, I can't believe that because I know from lived experience that it's not possible. Like, there are just things I cannot bring myself to do, though I've been given opportunities. And like, I just can't do it. Like, I just can't do it. I reject it. Like, my body physically rejects it. But I think not to not to stab somebody. I haven't been I haven't getting <laughs> I just meant like random situations. Like, you know, someone says like, oh, anybody would cheat if given the temptation. I don't think so. I just don't think it actually is the same for everybody. I just think we're having different lived experiences where some somebody that's true. Like for some people, if they're put in the right situation, they will cheat. But for other people, they just won't ever do it. I truly believe that because I, I have such a specific lived experience and I know I'm not special. So if I'm having this lived experience, that means other people are having the lived experience, right? I can't be the only one, you know? Um, but it was only once those memories came up again that I could kind of see that, oh, that's why I do that. That's why my brain works like that. That's well, why hold on. Gaming, we're not talking about the same thing. You said you've never been pushed to the limits of your humanity. I could stab an adult. That's easy. I'm not stabbing a baby. What part of your humanity needs to be pushed where you have to stab a baby? You've never been starving, I assume. I have been starving. But what does that mean in context of living in America? Like, what do you starve for? A couple of weeks, a couple of months? There's food everywhere in this country. You don't really starve, you know? Like, we're talking about stabbing a baby. I've I could absolutely stab an adult. But I'm not stabbing an adult in the same way I'm stabbing a baby. Like, how could a baby push you to the brinks of humanity? Yeah, are you eating babies? Like, I wouldn't eat a person. I think it'd make me gag. I don't care about living as well. I think that's what's so important is like, I don't believe in like, I don't care about living. <laughs> I care about my life, but I don't care about living. Like, I'm not going to eat a baby because I'm starving. You know what I mean? Like, why would I need to eat a baby? Like, I'll just, I'd rather die. Or like, I'd rather like make that baby survive somehow. Like, what the fuck do I need to live? I think people like value living so much that they'll lose their humanity to live. But like, what's the point of living if you have to live with the memories of what you've done? But also, I can understand in certain circumstances how it's more than reasonable, like that football team, um, soccer team that got in a plane crash in the mountains. And as their their part, as their like fellow teammates died, they would eat their bodies. I can see that. That's within reason. That's fine. But also, like, if you can live with yourself, you know, gaming says, I believe we are all capable of doing horrific things. I think we're all capable of doing horrific things, but they're not on the same level or the same things. So I agree, like, you can do things, but I don't think they're like, first of all, I don't think cannibalism is awful or horrible. I think it makes so much sense to eat your teammates who have died. Like, why wouldn't you do that? But also, like, I could understand not doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I could understand not doing it, but also, like, why wouldn't you do it? They're dead. But don't kill them so you can eat them. Like, that's crazy. So I wouldn't kill someone so I could eat them. 
But if they died, I would probably eat them. But also, why would I eat them unless I was willing to live with myself for eating them? I think everyone's capable of doing horrific things, but not everyone's capable of doing the same horrific things. And I think that's important. You know, Discourse says, why eat a baby when you can just die instead? I, literally. <laughs> You know what I mean? I just think like some people have a fantasy of like suffer porn where they're like, I would eat a person. I would stab a person. I would kill a baby. So it wouldn't have to live a horrible life. Like I would do those things. I think sometimes people have like this martyr bone they want to masturbate to, which is like, I could kill a person if I had to. Would you though, bitch? Sitting in your mom's basement playing video games, you think you can kill somebody? Like, do you know what killing people entails? It sends people into literally like, trauma loops ptsd cptsd our military soldiers are coming back with trauma and they were trained to kill people and you think some rando on the street can just kill somebody no like there are going to be consequences to it people are only capable of what they're capable of right i have this view of this thing that is whatever you know yeah um but it's interesting because i have a lot of sort of things that i tell myself over time that like they become my narrative even though I kind of know they're bullshit so like when I figured out the trans thing and by figured out I mean like looked within made the decision was comfortable with it when whoa gaming says trauma isn't from killing as far as the military uh huge generalization bro you're not talking to the same military soldiers I'm talking to S huge generalization lots of the soldiers that I've heard from are absolutely traumatized over having to kill people I like that's a huge generalization to say like trauma isn't from killing as far as the military. Like you're speaking, you speak so broadly over an individual experience. Like on, <clears throat> I was like, okay, well then there's nothing else wrong with me. That was the thing that was always wrong with right. me. Clearly. Cause that's such a big thing. No one even goes through that shit, especially back then. Now everyone wants to, but you know, when I transitioned, no one even, I didn't, I never knew anyone like that. Never right. really heard of it. So I was like, okay, then that's my big problem in life. You know, I'll move on now. Right. It's solved. Yeah. Now I see that, like, that was probably a trauma response. Me being trans Ooh. is probably a trauma response. That's interesting. Me being trans is probably a trauma response. Interesting. So is she making the argument that she's trans because of trauma? And it's not politically correct to say, don't care. Um, that's not, you know within the realm of what people think is acceptable to say. Uh -huh. And some of their reasoning for that, I understand. I don't think that that is the case for every person who is trans. I don't think that's the case for every LGBT. Okay, fair, 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 fair. I think it is possible that trauma could lead you to being trans, but I don't think it's the same experience. as like a person, like trauma can lead you to being a lesbian, but you're not really a lesbian. Like there are women who will not have sex with men because they're so traumatized by their grapes, which is so fair, but you're not really lesbians, right? Like, you're just not fucking men. So Blair might be a trans person who's pushed to be trans because of trauma. <clears throat> but then she's not discounting the people who don't have that lived experience. So, okay, I think that's a fair take. Because the nuance does show that some people, um, that's why I always say, like, are you gay gay or are you just acting gay? Because, like, people can have gay sex and not be gay. But some people think, like, gay sex means you're gay. But I think gay sex just means you're having gay sex. I don't even think it means you're gay. <clears throat> much like being straight you can have straight sex and not be gay i mean wait you can have straight sex and not be straight you know what i mean so so says i appreciate that she individualizes the experience me too i think that is very very fair of her so like major points to her person and it may not be the full explanation for why i'm trans in myself but to deny that it's part of the equation i just think is ignorant in my own case <gasps> Wait, whoa, Doozy says she can't really know that because you can't know who you'd be without the trauma. How do we feel about that, guys? That's not the work that I do in my therapy or in my life. Like, I would argue that that's the point of introspection. So Doozy says you can't, she can't really know that because you can't know who you'd be without the trauma. I don't think that's true. I don't agree with that. What do you guys think? I don't agree with that. I think you can know who you might have been without the trauma. In the same way that you can make like a pretty good guess of like where your life would have been if you didn't move to a certain place. You could have said like, oh, well, this probably like I will always say like, OK, if I had a baby in my early 20s, I know my how my life would have gone. Generally speaking, I would have moved back in with my parents. 
I would have raised that baby in that house. I would have done a lot of like figuring out my shit, probably the same path of YouTube because I was already on YouTube. I would have eventually moved out of my parents' house, but I absolutely would have lived back at home with them. So I think you could guess generally like why you'd end up a certain way. But I, especially if you're not like trans in a spiritual sense and you're trans like in a trauma sense, then if anything, you would, ex you would totally know you're trans in a trauma sense because the trauma doesn't like, um, you can have an introspective journey with the trauma. You know what I mean? Right. When did you come to that realization that it was, uh, at least some aspect of it was a trauma response? Um, like in the last year or so, like I started really thinking about it and I'm like, you know, really interesting how I escaped my hometown, escaped my family, moved away, changed my name, changed my physical interesting, appearance interesting. in just about every way I possibly could. I mean, I look nothing like I look. It's actually scary how different I look. Interesting. Well, I guess like in some ways we could argue Robert Sapolsky's work would say like, you know, everything is like bio biology anyways. You're always going to be what you were going to be. Nibla says, I disagree with you, Brittany. Butterfly effect. Interesting. Yeah, I don't uh, believe in the butterfly effect in that way. Um, so that's interesting. Interesting, interesting. So says this is a really interesting discussion. I don't, don't have an answer. I always wonder how much of your identity and personality are complexly, completely, sorry, completely intertwined with mental health experience. I think you're just everything. And then... I spend my time separating everything into categories for this reason, right? Like for my brain, I think that's why I like categorization because everything has a place and everything has a meaning and an association. So that's why I do it is to try to figure out like, did I do this because of trauma or did I do this because of genetics or did I do this because of this or did I do this because of this? And it takes a long time to figure it out, <clears throat> you know? Discord says you can, quote, not know who you would be without trauma because, duh, we can't really know. But people can make accurate or reasonable guesses about themselves in relation to different situations. That's what I mean. Like, realistically, we can't know much of anything. That's why I say we know very little and we believe most things. So I do agree in a sense that you wouldn't know, no, but you could make a really good guess. And I think that's good enough. But I think it's important to recognize, like, I guess this no is a subjective no. Okay. Good point, Discord. Good way to word it. You know what I mean? Um, mm, 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 mm. Juicy says, maybe you can, but you can't be sure. Maybe in 10 years you introspect yourself into a different conclusion. Very true. I'm open to that possibility. Absolutely. AZ says, I don't think I would have engaged with nearly as much introspection and self-reflection without my experience with trauma. It was a catalyst for growth in my case. I think it's a catalyst for a lot of people. I think that's why... Um, uh, we talk about neurodivergency and introspection because we talk about the need to know, like, why am I this way? Why am I different? And that alone will push you into introspection. Like Blair, like, why am I trans? Why do I feel this way? Why am I doing this with my life? It's like, it pushes you in that direction, you know? Um, Nibla says life is too complicated to know how life, how life would have been. I feel like life is very simple. I don't feel like life is very complicated. I think people make it complicated because they don't want to believe it's simple. I think life is so simple. I think it's complicated in a sense. You know what I mean? Um, but I really do think, I think for me at this stage in my life, I really think life is very simple, but humans think it's complicated because it makes them feel important because their ego tells them it can't be simple. But like I always say, you know, the saying is like, what is, in, what is life, uh, you know, what is, um, what is it, uh, before enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water and after enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. It was always going to be simple. Doozy says, I think a with a good therapist, you can know better, but she hasn't done therapy. I think she's done a little bit of therapy as a, as a kid, but not as an adult. <clears throat> yeah. says the way you've stayed the same person, even through all the bubble popping, I think it makes it quite likely you'd grow, you'd know who and where you'd be if things were different. Well, that's a good point too, is my personality is very foundation. Like it's very, um, consistent. So you know what I mean? I feel like I've known myself my whole life. I've just tried to figure, I've tried to like fill in the gaps and know myself more. And you're right. Like I've always been the same person since I was a kid. I've just changed belief systems and radically changed how I see the world. But my personality is the same. So there's only so many options or places my life would have taken me. 
So it's more of like a guess of elimination. I know I wouldn't have done this. I know I wouldn't have done this. I know I wouldn't have done this because it's not within my personality type or how I view myself or the consciousness that I am. My consciousness and my personality feel different to me, but my personality type also limits me to what I'm more likely to do. Kind of why astrology makes sense for categorization. I've been getting into astrology in a sense of categorization, not belief. So I don't believe in astrology, but I've been using astrology as a categorization system. How much did these astrologers actually figure out how to categorize human beings accurately? And it's actually pretty on point. And I actually am not ashamed to say that I fall into the Taurus category pretty chef's kiss, kiss perfectly. So it feels very cool that somebody who's never met me can also categorize me. But that also makes sense in terms of other people's work, like Robert's work that says like we're these biological entities, right? Because that could mean that if we don't have the free will in a, a radical sense, that means that we can predict sort of what category we'll be in. And then that can kind of predict our strengths and weaknesses. So yeah, I've been much more into astrology, looking at it from like a personality um categorization system more than anything else like a shapeshifter type stuff um and i don't think that's normal like and even less normal than like a regular abnormal th sense because like abnormal is like not good or bad it's just deviates from normal but for me i was like no there was like something unspoken about that that i'm not admitting to myself like was that a me running away from my past and i think in part for sure right right well also <clears throat> when our childhood is really, really scary, we don't want to be in our bodies. Like we don't want to be in our actual bodies because it's not safe to be in our bodies. And we have all kinds of ways that we, we leave. And so maybe there was something about you want, not wanting to be in your actual body or you wanted to change your body in some way. Does that track yeah. for you? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that it's the full explanation, sure. you know, Man, I could really get in the weeds here. You know, there's a lot of stuff in water now that feminizes people, yeah. you know? Oh my God, the birth control and water thing is so overblown. It is so overblown. It is such a conservative talking point, but it is so overblown. It is so overblown. Hey guys, I don't know how to tell you this. You need to stop worrying about birth control in your water and start thinking about all the bullshit in your fast foods and in your bags of chips. And it, hello, are you eating your vegetables? Are you actually eating fruit from the stores that have a bunch of pesticides on it and everything else? Birth control in your water is the least of your fucking problems. And you can kind of just not even need to look at studies for that. You can kind of just observe yeah. right, the world around. Why are we pretending like the world just all of a sudden became feminine? Do you, have you ever heard of the Roman Empire? Feminine as fuck, bro. Have you ever heard of the Greeks? Feminine as fuck, bro. Why is everyone pretending the Roman Empire wasn't feminine as fuck? Hello? Was there birth control in the water during the Roman Empire? Was that their problem too? TJ says, do you think the universe chose to have certain people born in certain months for a reason? No, I don't believe any of that. I don't think there's any universe that's in control of anything. I don't think there's a larger consciousness. I don't believe in any of that. I think we're literally as significant as the the butterfly or the bear. I just think we're like alive and we're living in the universe and the universe is also alive, but it's also not significant. I don't believe in any higher power, anyone doing anything for any purpose. I don't believe in any of that. Around you, I'm big on that. Like, I don't always need to study. I can see things. Yeah. Actually, the reason why I think people don't want to admit to themselves sometimes that maybe transition is partly a trauma response is because they don't want to put it out there that like somehow it makes it less valid or not really them or a costume of sort. Right. And for me, the way I've thought about it is like, look what my body did to allow me to survive. Like the trauma response is literally a survival mechanism. That's what they are. So my body did this crazy elaborate thing and I'm still here and I'm the only successful person in my family and I'm the, you know, only person who's even began to look at these toxic patterns they all have that I broke. Right. It's like to look at that and be like, that means I'm not actually Blair or something. I think this is also true is introspection is scary because you build your whole life off this identity. <clears throat> Which is why I think detransitioners, cis people, that's what a detransitioner is. They were never trans. They were cis. They were just thinking they were trans. But I think if you detransition, like I think that's a beautiful experience because it's like your journey. I think some people look at it like, oh my God, I can't believe you had to detransition. And I'm like, yeah, who cares, bro? It was the journey. You thought you were trans. You weren't. Oops. Like, what are you going to do about it? You thought you were Muslim. You're not. Oops. You spent 10 years not eating pork. Oh, well. 
suck it up, buttercup. That was your life's journey. Like, have fun with it. Embrace it. Say that was your journey. If Blair ever detransitions, cool. That was her journey. Like, it doesn't matter. But I think people go like, oh, my God, this is your one life on earth and you're going to spend it being a detransitioner. How about this? This is your one life on earth and you're going to spend it being Muslim? You're going to spend it being Catholic? You're going to spend it being a vegan? Hey, no judgment. You do you, girl. But for somebody else's, like, joy, it's somebody else's hell. So, again, like, that's just your journey. And I feel like people should go through that journey. I think there's a disappointment. I remember I read a comment from someone who was like disappointed I married a man. You know what I mean? And I was like, sucks. But like, that's not about me. You being disappointed that I married a man has nothing to do with me. Right? But kind of like that's them. They need to like figure out why they're upset that somebody they don't know married a man. Kind of fucking freaky, right? Kind of weird. But I think like there's something about that that needs to um, there's a conversation around that that needs to be happened with them, their introspection. Gaming says then there is no objective reality. Um, <clears throat> objective reality to me means outside of our perception. And unless you can present me with information that's outside of human perception, no. And that's why big T objective truth is so interesting and why I'm curious about it, because there's no real um, the evidence for it is really interesting. You know what I mean? So when people say like, that's the objective truth, that's objective. It's like, I don't know which ob objective you're talking about. <clears throat> when people say God is objective, there is a God and a billion or two billion or three billion people say, yeah, God is absolutely real. And they say it's objective. Like what objective are they talking about? They're probably talking about the one where it's like a lived experience and the majority is experiencing it. And so they know it's real or they're talking about the individual experience. And so they know it's real. But like, what does real mean at that point? You know, I'm all of it. I love that. I, I love how you just articulated that. I mean, you could make the argument that everything we're doing is a trauma response. Like what I'm doing in some way, uh, the, the skills that I've developed and my, the interests and, and the direction I've gone in my life uh, is a response to things that happened to me in my childhood. You know, mm -hmm. I, I definitely know that's why I became an actor originally. Mm. I became an actor because I didn't. I will say there are people who think like you react to react to react to react to react. And I think you can stop the momentum and stop reacting and do something else. I call it turning left. So I do think like there's that part of it. <clears throat> you know what I mean? That I think is like really important that you don't always have to keep reacting. You can like turn left and do something else. But in order to do that, you'd have to know the relationship you're having with yourself versus the relationship you're having with other people. So when you're being introspective, you can turn left. When you're being extrospective, you sometimes have a harder time turning left, like making your own decision. But often you can also make the decision easier because you're like, I can do this or I could not. But then you have to stop long enough to actually tell yourself, like, is this what you want to do? And then to even ask yourself that question is not what we're trained to do. We are often just trained to react, to react, to react, to react, to react. And feel seen as a child and I wanted to be seen. And I thought, oh, if I could become an actor and become famous, then people are going to see me. And mm. then, you know, you quickly realize they don't see you at all. It's actually the opposite. Yeah. Uh, you just, you're, you're seen less. And, and in some way I was doing it to please my mother and, and to win over her love. So I don't think there's an escape from living our lives uh, from from uh, in response to, to what we experienced. There's not an escape. There's not an escape. We're trapped. This is it. I just don't believe that. I don't have that lived experience personally. Like I don't have that lived experience. But and I can't be the only one. That's the only reason I'm saying what I'm saying. I cannot be the only one having a lived experience that is different than this. When they talk, I don't relate anymore. I think I used to relate, but I don't relate to this anymore. So like, what am I experiencing? Right. Cause I don't, I don't relate to this language. Children. I agree. Yeah. But what's really interesting about that is like, as you were kind of breaking down all the things you've realized about why you became an actor, I thought like, what a shame that the world puts this stop sign in front of people who begin to question, why am I really trans or why are trans people really trans? Yeah. That the amount of real conversations you can have about it in this world is How about God. How about religion? How about anything? The world doesn't want to have the conversation. Why do you really believe in God, dude? Nobody wants to have that fucking conversation because it's fucking uncomfortable. Blair is upset. We can't talk about why you're really trans. I want to talk about why you really believe in God. Why do you really believe in a God? And who do you think you are voting away people's civil rights because of something you believe? Why do you think that's okay? 
So I agree. I want to have the conversation about why are you really trans? Is it spiritual, physical, trauma-based? What is it? And I want to have the real conversation like, so why are you a religious person? What's that about? <laughs> Nobody wants to have those conversations. Trans people don't want to have them. Religious people don't want to have them. Nobody wants to have the actual conversation because it's easier just to pick the bubble and settle into it because at least you get a community, you get consistency, you get structure, the three things science has proved we need as human beings to feel fulfilled in life and to live longer, happier lives. You get all of the feedback loops you need, you get all of the positive reinforcement. And so again, like asking yourself, why do I actually believe in this? And why am I willing to die on this hill? Why am I willing to make a whole career off this belief system? Why am I willing, like nobody asks themselves those questions. So I'm with Blair here, here. But then I wonder, like, does she realize that's happening everywhere with every community? She might. She might. <clears throat> it's almost none. That's why I get so much hate from people, because the way I feel is like, how dare anyone tell me how to talk about my own experience, how I'm viewing this thing that I am, that I have, that is me, whatever. How dare you try to limit my talk of that because it's politically inconvenient and yeah. half the people that think it's politically inconvenient to talk about it aren't even trans themselves. Go away. I can talk how I want about my own shit. And if I come to false conclusions, then that's part of the journey. Well, the suspicion, of course, is when people are trying to stifle conversation that there's something they're hiding oh, yeah. or something they don't want to face. Yeah. And you pick up on that because you have a, a, a bullshit detector that's very acute yeah. and, uh, and you want to speak it. Yeah, Do Doozy says, I personally think it's a fear of rejection from society. That's why we stay away from these questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think like we're afraid of, again, it's the bubble thing. We're afraid of like, getting our bubble upset. We're afraid of being discounted by our bubble. We're afraid of not being a part of the community. We're afraid of being ostracized, right? Do you, I mean, it's just amazing to hear you say all these things. Cause I've, I've had these thoughts of course, but I, I don't want to say them out About because trans people. well, just, you know, gay trans yeah. that there's aspects of it that are a response to trauma. And because I've sat with people and I've talked to them and I've heard them say that, I wonder if I'm, actually gay because of what happened to me with my dad and you know like clients people just people have those real conversations in real life but in you know online and in public discourse people act as if these conversations don't happen and if they do they're completely invalid and i hate that because yeah. i'm like well it's just because you invalidate people while you're having the conversation but blair's doing really good at not doing that so blair props to her is not invalidating personal experiences while this is happening so that's really good like, I think that's really positive. <clears throat> but the reason we don't have these talks is because people invalidate your experience. I took down my podcast. I had a podcast about my assault, asking if it was real, even though I know it's real. I'm just trying to have the conversation to evoke some thought. I took it down because people did not understand the conversation I was trying to have from that. And people started to like discount my lived experience in a way that was like really triggering. So I was like, no, because I want to have nuanced conversations. But the conclusion isn't that it wasn't an assault. That wasn't the point of the podcast. So I realized when people like couldn't engage with the conversation, it was just too triggering for myself. I was like, I meant for something else to happen, but people's like, they just couldn't, you know, you know what I mean? So I think that's also the problem is like, you have this grand idea that you're going to share this really introspective or profound thought to yourself. It's like really profound to you. And then the people get a hold of it and they're just like, they just don't even understand what kind of conversation you're hoping to have. You know what I mean? And I think there's something about that, you know? There's a difference between saying things that are, you know, politically incorrect in terms of like, you're just trying to be cruel or an asshole or whatever. That's right. But if people are trying to have real conversations about their own bodies, yeah. how fucking dare anyone yeah. tell them not to, yeah. you know? Cause like, I look at so many people, particularly in the trans community and like, a lot of them are just so lost, you know? And then you count that now the trans community, in my opinion, isn't even really the trans community. And it's not a community at all. Like, people are thinking they're trans when they're not because people have broadened what it means to be this crazy thing, which also dilutes people's ability to understand what they are. Yeah. If I believed all the public narratives about trans, I would never come to really profound, valuable conclusions about my own life. And Everyone's on a different journey. Some people who are cis will think they're trans when they're not. Some people who are trans will think they're cis when they're not. That's just life, bros. So it says, is defaulting to blanket unbelief more rational than defaulting to a belief that feels real slash falls in line with one's experiences? I think like just having balance is kind of key. 
I think defaulting to openness is probably better. And then figuring out where you can build a foundation with your consciousness is probably best. About areas of my life that aren't even to do with trans. Yeah. Because it all bleeds into other things. Yeah. So it's like, I, f I see a lot of lost energy with people who are trans. And I think it's partly because they and society have like worked together to create this block from going any further beyond like a really superficial analysis of what it is. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know how to pretend like that. Has it been? So I don't know how to pretend like that. I think that's fair. I think it would be, I have gone so many times back and forth on the gender conversation. I think it's hard for me to pretend that a lot of gender isn't a construct, but I could definitely do it depending on the bubble I'm in. Like in the bubble I'm in, well, if I visit a different bubble, I obviously know what a man and a woman is. Like I don't have to play a game where I don't know. But then the truth is, is when I see certain people, it's the same with gaydar or the same with neurodivergent dar. Sometimes I see people and I'm like, you're not a man or a woman, are you? What are you? I'm getting, I'm getting something. So I think there's something about that as well, where you can look at certain people and you're like, I'm not really getting binary. And it's not about fashion. It's about energy, which is too woo woo. So I'm not going to use it as evidence. I'm just going to say like it's intuition and intuition is like an individual lived experience as I think is gender. I think gender is a lived experience and then gender is a social experience and then gender is so many other things. Just like what a, being a woman is or like who you are, like who you really, really are, like you really, really are, like the person you are at work is different than the person you are at home, right? So, okay, <clears throat> you know what I mean? The person, you know, those are different people and that's how I think about gender. The gender you are in public is different than the person, the gender you are internally. I just think those things are different. Other people don't get to decide what you are, right? Like that's not how that works. Assuming you're like reasonable and rational, like other people can't tell you who you are. They can only guess who you are by judging a book by its cover, which I as a child was taught not to do. And yet here we are. You know, which makes sense. I'm not discounting it. I'm just saying it's kind of ironic. Uh, painful for you to be demonized in the way that you've been demonized and judged and hated? At certain times, but... Um, That's a lot to hold. Like, you hold a yeah. lot of negative transference. It's a, it's a lot of projection that's put on you. And you're, you're just a person, you know, mm -hmm. relatively uh, young. And, and you started when you were very young. And... All of this energy is coming at you, and that, that must have been a lot to, to handle. Yeah. Also, you know, I just turned 30, and I've been doing this since nice. I was 20. 30 is a big year, especially in a woman's life. So, like, the difference between 23 and 30 is, like, <laughs> wow. And right. then, you know, that's about as close to, like, you know, the way that child stars grow up in front of people as you can get without being an actual child star. I mean, 23 is a child, you yeah. know, looking back, and especially, you know, now seeing my life for really what it is. I mean, I was just like alone in Los Angeles in an apartment, you know, with my fiance obviously as well too, but like no real family. Wow, she's been with him for so long. And we no real guidance. No one ever showed me what's right and what's wrong. So I've made a lot of fucking mistakes, but like publicly, you know? And yeah. So at certain times it's been hard and like a dent to your ego to like be like, why is this bothering me that people are saying this? But it's a lot less now. Like, it's almost never now. I've really come to understand that any public figure, but especially someone who represents so many intense things like I do to people, mm -hmm. we are just mirrors to people. Like, they see what they want to see. Yeah. They see, you know, what they expect to see. They will use the persona of you, the identity of you that they have, or they perceive mm -hmm. however they want. And it really has almost nothing to do with you. That's right. Uh, re uno reverso. Spider-Man meme. <clears throat> we do this to everyone. We do this to everybody in our lives, and we have to work really hard not to do it. We do it to progressive leftists. We do it to conservatives. We look at people, and we form an idea of who they are because we judge a book by its cover. That's right. Um, so... If people now get mad over shit that I say, I know that everything I say is how I truly see things. Mm -hmm. And I also know I'm not some asshole who holds, holds on to things forever and makes it my identity. My beliefs are not necessarily my identity. Mm -hmm. You know, My beliefs are necessarily my identity. Okay. Interesting. Like, I can change. I can change. My beliefs aren't necessarily my identity. Okay. Well, the, I love the fluidity. I've changed a lot, literally, physically, mentally, yeah, everything. Like, yeah. a lot of changes. Yeah. Who protects you? Um, Do you need protection? 
In some ways, but in other ways, you know, maybe- Do you want protection? No. No? No, I've actually come to understand part of what I was talking about earlier, like that orchestration that is there that I'm not necessarily fully like cognizant of, but I know it's there. Yeah. Um, I know that I have me in some other plane or some other thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And maybe that's just my own fucked up way of like processing that I've always felt unsafe and never had real protectors like that. Yeah. But I also believe that there is a higher self and I believe that you can tap into how that higher self is actually guiding you. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to guide you in directions that are positive. Mm -hmm. If you ask. Okay, Miss Spiritual Blair White, let's go. Actually listen to that voice. Yeah. Introspective Blair White. Separate it from all the other voices. And someone like me has a lot of fucking voices. Mm. Like, not in my own head, but I mean like people around me, the world, you. you know, public figure stuff. So learning how to tune into that voice me up there yep. that only knows the right things to do. That's been really good. So, that's amazing. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's mm-hmm. been, like I said, a really strong parallel to my childhood in the sense of I've always been treated this way. My earliest memories in life are like understanding that like everyone is either going to love me or hate me. And it is what it is. I But you know, mm-hmm. it's when you're talking, I have this impulse mm-hmm. to like, like hold you like i want don't touch her bro you leave her alone she doesn't want your hugs i want to like hug you like like some protect i feel like blair does not do hugs actor comes up in me uh because i see that that little boy and i see oh he's gonna trigger me bro i don't like him i fucking don't like him i don't know he gives me weird fucking vibes all of this energy coming out i'm sure he's a good person but like I do not feel that from Blair. Like, I don't feel a need to protect her. I feel like she needs to learn how to forgive and let go of some of that anger she's holding on to. But, like, don't touch her. And I know you can handle it. Like, I know you're strong. And there's this other part of me, you know, talking about your dad or your mom not there. I just, like, my heart opens up to you in that place, you know, because it's it's it just must have been so scary. And and the feeling of just being alone, because in in some way you are there's nobody like you. Yeah, there's no. Yeah. Miss Fishy says he doesn't see her at all. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. (laughs) Raven. (laughs) She's literally like, "Mm," like, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Nobody out there who's trans, who's saying the things that you're saying. And I know you have a lot of allies and you have a lot of people that love you. Yeah. Right? But no blueprint. But there's nobody like you. Yeah. And that- Okay, like no one's an anomaly. That's the problem. Nobody's an anomaly. You're not special. Blair is not special. There are a lot of people like Blair in the world. You're just not paying attention to them. Like, but there are lots of people like Blair in the world. There are lots of people like us in the world. This narrative that we're special is so destructive because it's so unnecessarily like you're like making her feel so alone for no reason. You're not alone in the world, dude. You just aren't running into those people because they're busy doing their own version of your life. Like you're not an anomaly. You're not special. That's that's. I mean, and I can see that, um, you know, you hold that. And there's only no blueprint because you haven't talked to 8 billion people on the planet. Listen to this narcissism that content creators forget. You know, you're not talking to 8 billion people on the planet, right, guys? Right? Like, we know that. So when you say there's no one like me in the world, you're making an argument that you've, what, talked to 8 billion people? Oh, there's no one like me in the world? Like, um, hello? You haven't met them yet. You don't even leave your bubble of LA. You don't even go out into the right areas to even meet people. You don't You don't have time. You've been working all the time. You know what I mean? Like we got to stop telling ourselves like no one's doing life like me. You haven't met everybody. You don't know that. It's better to assume and more likely to assume that people are more like us than not like us, right? <clears throat> Mikey with the super chat. Let's go. I think Blair's experience with DMT really changed her and started her on this introspective journey. It doesn't reflect much in her content, but it does in her interactions with others in different spaces. I agree with that. She did this DMT trip and talked to Joe Rogan about it. And this was a while ago, right? Mikey was like a few years ago. I reviewed it. I talked about it. 
And I remember thinking like, oh, Blair is different. You know, like I said, Blair was always very, like she's been very nice to me in the past when we've worked. You know, we've only done like an event or two together. I remember one event. And she was really, really nice to me. So I have nothing bad to say about her as a person. I don't love her work. But <clears throat> you know what I mean? Um, yes, CJ says, I feel like we're unique and not very unique at the same time. I feel like we're all one of a kind, but no one is special. Like I am a Britney and there's no other Britneys, but I don't think that makes me special just because there's no one who's Britney. I just feel like uh, my life is very like I could map my life onto somebody else. But that's why, you know, sometimes you guys will call me or we'll talk in chat. and I'm like, oh, my God, this sounds just like me. And it's because, yes, our lived experiences are similar enough. But then the uniqueness, I guess, comes from our consciousness being unique, like our soul or whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, like, is our life really that different from other people who are in our categories? Probably not. It's just the nuances is what makes us us. And I think that's very, very unique and special. I just don't, I think you're one of a kind. I just don't think you're very special. I don't know. Maybe it's hard because I just, I know I'm not special. I know I cannot be special. There's no fucking way I am like the most special snowflake. It just doesn't map onto any like numbers I've seen, data I've seen, people I've met. It just doesn't make sense. Even though people tell me that no one's like you. Brittany's always the different one. Why is Brittany always the different one? Well, I'm just the different one in these bubbles. You know, same with Blair. Like Blair is only different because she's in the bubble she's in. That's why her content also works for her because she's the different trans person. That That's why some people say she's a grifter because if she wasn't conservative would Blair be as popular maybe maybe not who knows and so that's the question is like is she only special because she's the one trans republican who's like very popular like that's why like there's tokenism in groups even in progressive circles like you might be the one who stands out because you're like a little different you're not the stereotype or maybe you you know what I'm saying it's just like well, and, and this is your journey and this is your karma and, and who knows why. And you're living out your mission. That feels very clear to me. Like mm -hmm. you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Thank God yeah. you're here, right? Yeah. We need you. And that's a lot. It is a lot. So I've learned to give myself grace and like pace myself. Like, you know, I don't beat myself up over, you know, things that maybe my lower self would perceive as like a failure or I didn't nice. accomplish that or accomplish that because nice. sometimes I'll just like think it. Blair is reading a book. She's watching a YouTube channel. Who's she, she watching me? Like she is, she's talking about higher, lower selves, therapy talk. She's talking about like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I'll remember and sort of reminisce over just the past eight years, which is how long I've been doing this. And I'm like, how many insane experiences can I fit in eight years? I mean, I went from watching like Joe Rogan on Fear Factor as a kid, one of my escape, you know, f mechanisms, by the way. Yeah. I remember watching Fear Factor, Joe Rogan, when yeah. I was a kid. And then all of a sudden I'm in his studio and all of a sudden he's in my phone and we, and then, you know, it's like I'm at Roseanne's house getting drunk and I'm making her laugh. Like, what is that? Mm -hmm. You know, this person is... I think that's the conundrum is like I could fuck with a lot of people, but I don't want to condone your behavior. And I think that's the problem is like I just feel like a lot of us aren't going to say out loud like we don't vibe, but also like love you. But like we don't vibe like I hate Blair's content, but I like Blair as a consciousness. I love Joe Rogan, but some of his content is so brain dead. I don't love Roseanne and I don't like her content, but I could hang out with Roseanne. I just don't like like I'm not going to. Like, I don't want to vibe with her. I feel like we wouldn't get along. But, like, I like Blair, but I hate her content. I just think it's so, like, so catering to the audience. But that's fine. Like, if you're a YouTuber who caters to your audience, that's fine. I don't want to judge that as a business move because it's such a reasonable business move. I just obviously am not that kind of content creator. Like, no offense, guys. I love you so much. But the day I start catering to you is the day that I've, like, sold my soul. Okay? Like, I've just sold my soul at that point. And I think there's something about that that's, you know... It's fine. Like, I'm so – I don't want to moralize it because I think it so makes sense for business, you know? Um, but, yeah. Miri says she looks like she got a lot more work done, and it's sad. I think Blair looks beautiful. I think she looks so good. I think she looks so good. I don't know. I think she literally looks so beautiful. I don't know. She doesn't look bad. Her, I mean, she likes the L.A. look, so that makes sense if you don't like it. But I don't think it's sad. I think she looks good. I think some surgery can be, like – 
kind of a sign of like mental mental unaware like unwellness but i feel like blair has a good level of it like she likes the la look so it kind of makes sense to me but like she looks really good it doesn't look like too much to me breaking down and crying in public that they love me so much and i've helped them what is that Mm -hmm. you know because that's also the polar opposite of how i grew up which was like faggot and now it's like just a reminder because izzy says i would hate this guy if he were my own therapist this guy is not a therapist as far as i know he's accredited by being a crying because i'm i'm sorry what was the word guys uh guys what is what is the word for him solistic solis he like he has a kind of like a is a woo woo is a spiritualism He's not a therapist as far as I know. I don't know if he's accredited. I don't think he has a licensing board. I don't think he has a license. Like, I don't think he's that kind of therapist. I think he does, like, alternative therapy. So radical aliveness, yeah. Okay, so, like, FYI, like, as far as I know, he's not a licensed therapist. He's one of those, like, alternative therapists. So just not that we're afraid of it. Not that we're, like, <clears throat> not that we're, like, anti it. It's just, you know, just keep it in mind. The best faggots of them, I guess. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Somatic practitioner. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I get that, like, I'm not a superhuman here. Like, I do need to feel safe at certain times. Uh, but I also can't deny that, like, I really thrive when I'm not. Oh, my God, I thrive when I'm not safe. I figure it out. Like, I, I go for We all get that, huh? Everybody in this audience, we get it. We get it, Blair. Where everything expands. I feel like I just always go in the right direction. But do you do you know what it is to feel safe? Like, take a minute with that. Because, yeah. because it, I, I can imagine you may not even know what that feels like. If you didn't grow up with yeah. it. Probably not perfect safety. Right. But I feel like one of the reasons why I've had repressed memories come up I think sometimes when you grow up with a lot of trauma, you feel uncomfortable in safety or eaten even a healthy relationship. Like I tell you guys, like after I started like getting healthy and I got into a healthy marriage, people were asking me like, are you afraid your marriage will be dull because it's healthy? I'm like, go to therapy. If you ask yourself that question, if you feel in any way you're afraid of being in a healthy relationship because it might be boring, go to therapy. Go to therapy. Is because I'm feeling safer now. Yeah. Right. So I'm realizing that now that I'm, you know, 30 and I've really sat on a lot of stuff I went through, like thinking about it now, uh, I probably don't know perfect safety, but I'm pretty damn safe in the sense of I escaped poverty. Yeah. You know, my family, no money. I, you know, have found love. I've found, you know, sober people. Mm -hmm. I've found people with morals. Mm -hmm. And I've accomplished so much because, so that I think that that's why I have stuff popping up now because I am safe. But that perfect safety, probably not. Right, right. Yeah. Do you trust? Do you have a, like, what's your relationship like with trust? I don't know, in the abstraction. Mm -hmm. Like, do you trust mm -hmm. life? Do you trust people? Like, when you enter into a situation, like, what's your, how do you orient? I really don't trust people. You don't trust people? A few people. Well, why would you, given your experience? Right. It's like for me, I'm always about like, okay, what's the data? I trust people to be themselves. I trust people to be themselves. I think that's the, the thing that I've learned because I didn't trust people before. Because I think when we say like, do I trust someone? We're saying, do you trust them to always have your best interest in mind? And no, I don't trust that in people. I trust people to have their best interest in mind. And I trust people to be themselves. And that's why I say, like, I love my family and friends, but I can't always trust them to have my best interest in mind because their bias and prejudice is too strong, which makes sense because it's strong in all of us. So even with my work, I will tell, like, um, people, like, I will give you advice on this, but here's where my bias and prejudice is. So I might be giving you bad advice, but here's what I'm thinking because I know how easy it is to think that you don't have bias and prejudice. So I will say that I, I think trust for me is now that I, tr I trust people to be themselves. That's what I try to do is like let people be themselves instead of trusting them not to, like I don't trust people to do what I would do in a situation because like they're not me. And I think that's what people mean when they say trust. Like I trust my inner circle, but not with everything. Like I trust a lot of them with a lot of stuff, but not with everything because they wouldn't, like I can only trust them to be themselves. You know what I mean? Like to say that I would trust my inner circle 
to do anything the way that I would do it is like so not true. So I don't. I don't trust my inner circle like I trust myself. I trust my inner circle to be themselves. So if I give somebody a responsibility, I trust them. I trust my judgment of choosing them to do it. So like I don't trust all my siblings with money, but I trust the siblings I do trust with money with money. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like sometimes when we think about trust, we're saying I trust someone to act like I would, but like, mm -mm. Kay says, when people say I trust, I think they commonly mean I trust you to keep in line with the model of you and my perception. I don't. I don't. The backlash I get back from people when that's how I use trust is insane. I have, in my past, I had to learn this lesson really hard. When people would say I trust you, they meant I trust you to act the way I would act because I had to learn that the hard way. Maybe it's just my bubble, but in my bubble, I got punished for assuming people would, because like people don't see me. So when they say like, Brittany, I can't believe you did something. They're saying, I can't believe you didn't do what I would do. And I'm like, why do you think I would do that? So I don't think so. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think in my lived experience, that's what people mean. I think they mean that I expect you to act like I would act. But I love that that's your experience. You know what I mean? Hannah says, people think trusting someone is trusting that they will fulfill your expectations. That's my lived experience. So my lived experience is that people say, I, I want you to fulfill my expectation of you, which has nothing to do with the real me. So, you know, Kenny says, I wonder if Brittany would date another borderline if she wasn't currently married. Um, sure. Why not? Yeah, I've never had a problem dating somebody with borderline if as long as they've gone to therapy and they're working on it. Like, I don't care. Um, so if this is true, the amount of time someone has taken it upon themselves to represent me, ugh, it can be totally incongruent with what I've what I'd want is well more than I'd like. Oh, my God, bro. So frustrating. That's my biggest pet peeve is when people think like, oh, I know people that know Britney, so I must know Britney. No, if you asked my mom if I'm gay and she says no. Do you really know Britney? No. If you ask my bestie, oh, this is, do you, is this true about Britney? How would they know? They only know the version of me in their head, right? The only person who can really answer that is me or your relationship with me directly. It's so frustrating because I think people think like, oh, if you know someone's friends, like their friends know them, but like their friends only know the parts of them they can see and understand, which might be very limited. Like I have a bestie who like never watches my YouTube channel. She has no fucking clue what I'm doing on the internet. She doesn't care. She doesn't check in with it. Like I talk to her about my work, but it's like so beyond, like so far from her reality. If you asked her about anything that happened to me on the internet, she would literally not know. And it's just because like we don't talk about it. It's not, it's a work. It's like work. So when she talks to me about her job, same thing. Like I know it, I get it. But like, I'm not at her work. Like, I don't really know. So it's the same. Like, when we talk about our jobs, it's so far from reality for us that like, we're not thinking about it like real. Like, if I mentioned drama on the internet, she just was like, had no concept of it. But if you ask somebody else, like one of my siblings, they're like, oh yeah, like one of my brothers messaged me. He goes, yo, I just saw you on an Abba and Preach video, bro. Crazy. Because like, he watches Abba and Preach. And I was like, yeah. And like, it's not like I call my brothers and I'm like, I'm on Abba and Preach. Like, they just see me there. Or like they'll see me on the internet or like I remember like when Sneeko and I talked and my brother called me or my brother came into the room and he was like, he was like, hey, I'm watching this video. I was like, oh, yeah, that's Sneeko. I'm, I'm talking to him. And he's like, you know, Sneeko. And it's like my brothers don't know. It's not like people know. So, again, I think this idea of like trust is so difficult because they're saying what part of you do. You tr I trust you to do what you do. That's what I trust. And that's, you know, that's something because like, again, my friends are very different from me. They're very different from me. You know what I mean? Um, let me see. Okay. Is it okay not to have an inner circle support system? Sure. It's all about your joy. You don't have to follow a specific model. If you don't have an inner circle support system, like maybe you need it in a different capacity. Ask yourself if you need it. I think it's always okay to have what you need. Mantis. Hey, Mantis says, I think when people ask the question, they mean trust that they'll have your back, which I think or won't betray you. I think that's also a misconception. Because what does that mean? I think that's a, I don't have this misconception. So I know my family will always have my back and my friends will always have my back, but I don't expect them to always validate my actions because we have different morals. 
So they can't validate my actions and adhere to their morals. And I think that that's something very special about my friend group for the most part is like we know that. But I don't think other people work that way. Like I have my friends backs, but if they do something against my own morals, I'll be like, they fucked up, bro. But you have to ask them if it's against their morals. Like I would call the cops on my inner circle. Like, I have your back, but not if you mass murder someone, bro. I have your back, but not if you grape somebody. And also, I'll visit you in prison. But, like, what does that even mean? I trust you to have my back means so many different things. I think it's so subjective. I just think it's really, really subjective, you know? Um, Kenny says, I'll admit, Brittany, I'm shocked. Why? Amazing answer, though. Wait, why would I not date somebody with borderline? I don't get it. I don't get it. I know so many great people who have borderline. I would have married them in a second if I didn't fall in love with somebody else. But also we're not, you know. Yeah, why not? I know so many great people who have borderline. Um, cases in my experience, many times their perception of you is heavily distorted by their own projections and assumptions of you versus actually seeing you. So yes, based on that way they act or view of the world. Okay, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Livy says, that's why I take guilt by association with a grain of salt. Sure, who someone associates with can... Say some things, however, people are more complex and associate with bad crowds for more than one reason. I agree with this. So I will say, generally speaking, my core group is very diverse in terms of morals and outlooks, but we are all very similarly organized or categorized. So I will say, like, I don't hang out with anyone who, like, has problems with the law or, like, I don't really hang out with anyone who's, like, in gang life or I don't hang out with anyone who, like, um... Uh, like, uh, I'm trying to think of like a good example. Like they're very far from my reality. Like I hang out with generally nerds who have very strong, like social justice convictions or people who have like a strong sense of justice, whether they're conservative or liberal. And I hang out with people who usually like know exactly and are very passionate about what they believe in. And so they tend to be very well read or well versed or well knowledgeable, but they tend to be very opinionated. But it also like allows me to predict their behavior for the most part because they're very strong in their convictions. So I don't have a lot of people in my life that are like wishy-washy. I have a lot of strong and opinionated and passionate people, which means like our opinions are very diversified, but they're very clear about what they believe it, you know, something like that. Like I'm trying to think like, but they don't, they don't make, they don't have a lot of problems. They have a lot of complexities, but they don't have a lot of problems in that sense. I don't know how to explain it. Um, so I think in that way, like sort of like similar, but yeah, I don't want guilty by association because like no offense, I love my friends, but I do not want to be associated with them. Does that make sense? Like some of my friends do things that I would never do and I don't want you to think because my friends do it, I would do it. But at the same time, like we're totally different people. So if you're going to judge me on what my friends do, I think that's kind of fucked up. But yeah, some of my friends are very like, like sometimes when they do things, I'm like, I cannot believe you decided to do that and tell me that with no shame. Oh, holy fuck. Ingrid says, so autists? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Here, am I irrational for having trust issues or am I just going off of data that the world has very specifically and kindly packaged up and handed to me since I was four or five years old? I think it's probably a little bit of both. And also like a lot of people don't see me as like a human you know, when you're a public figure, yeah. you're objectified in that kind of way. Yeah. And then being trans, it's also a fetish for a lot of people. So yeah. a lot of men objectify me. Ooh, true. Also, I think uh, objectification has also happened. Um, even, even if you're not a public figure, I think it happens in our world a lot more. Like that whole don't judge a book by its cover. I don't think we do that anymore. I think we judge books by its covers explicit, like Im like implicitly, but explicitly, like we do it all the time now. So I wonder if that's what's changed as well. Huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are a fan of me, you're objectifying me. If yeah. you hate me, you're objectifying me. If you meet me organically, perhaps, and we become friends, you start to objectify me somewhat when you learn that I am a public figure. It's just a very, there's no one that doesn't do it to some extent. So objectify you. Yeah, I, I have I've actually had one panic attack where I got back from a big um, like social function and I started feeling like, oh, my God, no one even sees me as a person. Yeah. You know, and it was a social function with people who 
liked me. Mm. It was people who were open to me being there and it was a work social hybrid thing. And I was like, my God, the way everyone interacts with me, I can just see it in their eyes because I'm also a little autistic. So I pick up on every little, you know, micro facial gesture. Is she literally saying she has autism or she's just using that as like a, you know what I mean? It's like, they're not really looking at me. Like men have like a specific look at me that's not quite there. Women do too. It's just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not wording that so correctly. No, no, that's very clear. You you feel objectified by the world, by everybody on some level. Yeah, I just have a very clear understanding that when people are talking to me, there's a lot going on simultaneously in their head, whether it's I've never met a trans person before and yeah. now I am, which is big here in Texas. That's I'm a lot of people's like first interaction with trans people, yeah. which is great, love it. <laughs> um, you know, like I'm always just, seeing it, that they're not fully taking me in mm -hmm. or fully. And how is that experience? So you're, you're this, the, this is your world. The, the world yeah. that you live in is you walk out into the world and you meet all of the. Ripley says, I thought autism caused an image individual not to be able to pick up on facial uh, faces. She's confused. Well, honestly, that's the conundrum. So they say that people or autistic people don't pick up on facial expressions or social cues. But I would argue, depend on, depending on the autistic individual, I would say people are like autistic people are more, are better at picking up on social cues. Like I think people with autism notice things more than the regular person, but they say it out loud, which is what people make, which is why people go, oh my God, you're so autistic. Does that make sense? Like sometimes they can't pick up on the social. So here's what it is. Autistic people don't pick up on the social metagame that's being played by people. They actually are just operating on like what is. So I feel like autistic people literally say like, you look upset. But the metagame of Normieville is you're not supposed to point out that they're upset. So I would argue that neurodivergent people or trauma people or people, autistic people, they're actually very good at picking it up, but they don't know they're not supposed to say the thing out loud because the metagame that normies are playing is we pretend that the obvious isn't obvious and we don't say it. The game is you're not supposed to actually say the thing out loud, but it is happening. So then when you say it out loud, they're like, oh my God, you're so autistic. But but the autist is picking it up. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like the autist is, they're absolutely picking it up. So I would argue that the normies are the ones who play the lie games and the normies are the ones who want people to lie about things and not say things out loud because there's like a thing they're doing, you know, so. These people and nobody actually sees you. Yeah. How is that? <laughs> Well, it was the source of a panic attack. So that, right. that was about a, a year ago or so, I think, or actually no, under a year. Um, but one thing I'm really big on is once I experience, you know, panic over something or an emotion, I start to immediately, once I'm like in a calmer state, unpack it. And I try to take it down to the lowest common denominator. By the way, the fact that she mentioned autism like three times, I would just be like, so are you autistic? Did you get diagnosed? You know, yeah. why it made me feel that way. Yeah. And uh, for the being objectified thing, I think that it just plays into, you know, as a child, I never really felt, you know, seen for what I really was, mm -hmm. you know, because I realized I've always been objectified. Yeah. The people who are just seeing a faggot, who are just seeing, you know, the smaller kid, who are just seeing the, you know, inconsequential part of the family that we can do anything to and we can behave any way around and who cares if it scars him, not even thinking about it. You know, that's a form of objectification. Mm -hmm. Like you're like a wall, like we can just, it never takes any damage because who cares? Mm -hmm. So, and then, you know. To be fair, Blair falls into the same trope that I do in this regard or other people do where they're really, really strong. They have this ex like this internal drive. They're very self-motivated, very independent. So people do discount them as needing help or being um, fragile, or they think like, well, you're so tough, you can handle it, right? Or you think you're better than everyone, so we're gonna like knock you down a peg. And I think like that's like a pretty common issue with people like Blair. You know what I mean? Oh, just. Go ahead. Just, um, 
also like the sexual thing is like a big thing for me, like in terms of men has been really weird for me because it's like a lot more common once I tap into like seeing it than I realize sometimes thinking about it. And I will think I'm in friendships that are not friendships. That they're attracted to you. Yeah, and it's like a lot of people. So wow. it's kind of, you know, weird because also I'm not a very sexual person. So uh -huh. it's hard for me to pick up on stuff like that. Right. And Asexual demisexual queen. So it's just another source of it. Wow. Yeah. And I actually, it's funny, you kind of find people, you find your people in life, right? So I feel like I navigate towards friendships that they're very similar to me in whatever way they can be similar. Like I'm very different and unique, obviously, but like my best friend is one of them is a little person. So like he understands <laughs> being right. a freak, yeah. being seen as different, yeah. the fetishization, the objectification, like they have that as well. Yeah. And you can imagine what kind of really dark people fetishize smaller looking people who look uh -huh. like children sometimes. Uh -huh. So he was going through a lot. So we've mm -hmm. had really deep talks about it. Um, so it helps, I think, that I naturally gravitate towards people with somewhat shared experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In in the so you you had this experience of really seeing that you were being objectified by everybody, men and women, and even the people that that love you, and mm -hmm. then that led to a panic attack. Yeah. Um, so something powerful was activated, you know, from your history that caused all of this emotion to come up. What, what do you think you needed there? Like, what do you need in the place where you get, if we can say that a panic attack is some expression of fear, is that fair to say? Yeah. Like terror almost? Yeah. Even if it's childhood fear, you don't really know is there. Right. That's what it is in yeah. my opinion. Um, so I think that what I did, cause I'm a lot better from that now, that stuff doesn't panic me anymore. I've really accepted this is just part of mm -hmm. my life that like, that's how a lot of people view me. Most people. Yeah. Um, we crying I, huh? in the panic attack. Are you crying? How's it? Um, I was, it, I start having difficulty breathing, breathing. Yeah. And I, I think I cried as well, actually. And I, I, I remember okay. saying things like, um, there's just so many hands all over me all the time, not physically, but you know, feeling like everyone's trying to like get a specific interaction out of me at all times, like trying to mold my presence into what they want sort of thing. And, yeah. you know, and kind of just up in my shit, frankly, I mean, just up in my business. Right. And uh, that can be hard when you isolate, which is, I do that a lot. And what do you want in those interactions? Like you're not getting what you want and it's causing you to have a panic attack. Like what, what, what in the perfect scenario, how do you want to be seen? And what are people not seeing that you'd like them to see or understand? Well, I like to believe, even though I know it's almost never the case that like my interactions with people, they are actually hearing me and not just playing a video of mine in their head that they've watched or, you know. You know what's so strange? And I'm <clears throat> realizing it while I listen to Blair, but also just like, Relating it to the space in general, it's so interesting how deeply we want to be like seen and understood. But then the content we make is about not seeing people and not understanding them. I can't watch Blair's content. It's just so dehumanizing. And I just feel like every time she makes content, she's not seeing people for who they are. And if she really did see them, she wouldn't be able to make content, which is like the irony. Because when you see people, you can make content, but you make more nuanced content, which does well, does less well in terms of business. So it's funny, like how deeply like people want to be humanized. That's why I say like when I see a conservative, they're just like you and me, bro. When you see a progressive, they're just like you and me, bro. And because I know that, I can't help but say, okay, what bubble are you in? What do you need? Because I listen to Blair talk, she's saying the same thing we all say, which is like, yeah, I'd love for you to know me, the consciousness, and not a video of mine you saw. I would like you to know me, the consciousness, and not just a video of me you reacted to on the internet. But also, do we want that? At work, I want that less, to be honest, as an individual myself. But she reviews a lot of people that she purposely takes out of context so she can like make make a video about it.
people hear things said about me, obviously. I always That's always running in the back of their head. I know that. So what I need in that moment, I guess, would be, or what I want, would be, and it's not, it's not realistic, is to kind of transform back into, like, private Blair or, like, not, like, spectacle Blair. Yes. Or not, like, you know, physically this way Blair. Like, almost to not even be there. I don't know how to word it. But you're it. so funny on YouTube. Yeah. That's the yeah. problem. Like, yeah. you're so good at it. Yeah. And I want that. Yeah. Like, I want that part of you. I want to be with the part of you that... I think Blair needs to stop wanting other people to see her, though. I think one of the best things you can do is stop wanting people to see you um, to some extent because, like, maybe they were never meant to. I think I see it more of an honor when people can see a part of me because I'm like, cool. But having that expectation, I think, is, like, a mistake. You know what I mean? So I think that's a big part of it is, like, people can only see what they can see what they can see. And expecting them to see a part of you, like, when you can't even do it for other people, I think is the mistake. That's what I'm saying. Like, I am you and you are me. We are all Blair. Blair is all of us. Blair can't see parts of other people in the same way other people can't see parts of her. So that's a, it. Like at the end of the day, that's the reality. You cannot ask people to do things that you can't do yourself. It is, it is so unfair. But it is a thing that humans do anyways, right? Cool says, is it not kind of scary? Also scary for people to see who you are. Well, I think again, I don't think anyone ever sees fully who you are except very specific kinds of people. Like for me, my husband is the only person on this whole planet I've ever met that can see all of me. Everyone else, no matter how hard I have tried, can only see parts of me. Even my siblings, I've tried to explain myself over and over again. There are just parts of me they cannot fucking see. They cannot regurgitate it back to me. They can't understand it. So instead of like thinking, oh my God, why can't you understand me? I'm thinking, okay, cool. So this is where we deviate, right? Right? Like why hold, why like try to force them to be somebody they're not? And that's the thing. Like if you can't see that part of me, that's okay. Cool. This idea that like they'll see a part of you if you just try hard enough, maybe. It hasn't been my lived experience, but you know. Why is he telling her he prefers a part of her? I think he, I just don't like the way this man interviews personally, but you know, whatever. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, so again, we ask, we if you can't humanize Blair, it's the same reason he, she can't humanize you. Like Blair, it's just literally, that's all that all of life is. So all of life is a bunch of us on a planet. And no matter how smart we are, thoughtful we are, there's always going to be a person on the planet like we cannot understand. And we're just going to like throw them out with the bathwater because we don't understand them. And I think that's just something we have to accept about ourselves. It's so funny and clever on YouTube. Like... Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, it's interesting, but I really have come to terms with it because I've realized that the solution to that is just, you know, working harder to foster like a few very meaningful friendships, yeah. you know, they say, keep your circle small. It sounds superficial, but like in my case, like my God, I have to, because people are just crazy. Yeah. As yeah. Th very true. Alice is the contrast between Blair as a person and how she talks about herself in a more chill context. And her content is a little jarring, bro. So jarring. I'm telling you totally different person, right? It's like, that's what I'm saying. Like I couldn't be this kind of YouTuber. I made a decision a long time ago, not to be this kind of YouTuber because I can't keep it up. But the fact that she can is like, she has to learn to live with that as well. Right. Mantis says, I think he comes across a little disingenuous, but I'm not sure why. I think that too, and a part of it could be the way that he was taught by his program, his spiritual therapy thing, or a part of it is that he's an actor, a part of it could be that, I don't know, you know what's weird is he had, he, on this very channel, he has like 28,000 subscribers, he's done a collab with Andrew Tate, he has like 4 million views, but like no subscribers, that is the irony of YouTube, so many of my videos in the past got millions and millions of views, but I've never gone up in subscribers, I don't think people are here for him, they're here for his guests, and so a part of that is probably going into his interview style. Like, I'm not sure that he's making himself the content enough for people to, like, get to know him. So maybe the disingenuousness is, like, something to do with that, maybe. You know? Versus are you a level five because you're Britney or are you Britney because you're a level five? No. 
Fucked up as I think I am, and I know that I am, I look at the world sometimes and I'm like, people are crazy. Right. People, people are, are so crazy. scary. Right. Do you objectify yourself? Uh, you know I what I mean? I would say I kind of have to by turning myself into a product, right? Yeah. Because that's what we really do as public figures. Yeah. Buy me. Buy the Blair White experience. Watch my videos. Click on my pictures. Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying, you know? So in a sense, for sure, but... Yeah, you have to objectify yourself. Even at work, even regular people. Livy says, I think humanizing means understanding everyone is a person on a journey, but that doesn't mean I can't be put off by your journey or or even judgmental in extreme cases, like with bigoted, extremely bigoted people. Yeah, I think that's a part of it, is that I think we have to hold two of those contradictory beliefs. One... I don't want to be judgmental and condemn you because I want you to understand me and don't want you to do that to me. But also because of my values, I might come to a point where I have to condemn you. And so like those two beliefs are very real, which is like, I don't want to judge you, bro. But also like I might come to a point where I have to. And that point is going to look different for everybody. Um, I also am very invested in understanding my own humanity mm-hmm. and how my brain works. So in that sense, I think that I do what I wish other people would do, which was make a bigger attempt to understand me. So I just do it, you know? Who, who gets, who gets all of you? Ooh, good question. No one. (laughs) Rip to her partner, bro. No No one? Not one person. No. No. How's that feel? I don't like that. I'm not going to lie to you. I hate that. So this is my bubble. I just feel like if you're doing life with somebody, they they should probably get all of you and vice versa. And if they can't, how are you going to maintain that relationship? Because for my personality type, like I will pick myself over everybody. The only reason I can do life with my partner is because picking him is picking myself because he can see me and I can see him. So when we pick each other, we're picking ourselves, but everyone else comes second to Brittany. You know what I'm saying? Like, So I don't know. I don't know. I don't love this. Like, I don't love this. Like, nobody gets me. And it's like, you know, she's not in a relationship anymore. She keeps mentioning her fiance. (gasps) Do not tell me they broke up. I will be so sad. I loved them together. She keeps mentioning her fiance. Don't say she's single. Nah, isn't she wearing a ring in this video? No, she's not. She's, She's still, don't say that. Don't say that. Doom says, Brittany, how do you know if you're conscious or not? I only know what I can perceive. That's all I know. Does she see herself? Great question, Bryson. Marcy says, I'm not convinced he can empathize with her. No, he's obviously, I don't know that he's vibing with her. Yeah. No, nobody gets all of me. Just feel that. Just feel the that place where nobody gets all of me. I'm not going to show anybody all of me. Reveal, let anybody in fully. Hmm. How's that feel? It's definitely, you know, a lonely feeling. Yeah. I'm definitely someone who has a lot of loneliness. Yeah. That thrives in my loneliness too, but also, you know, it's there. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that. It's okay, though, because I'm such a working... um, Can I stop you? Yeah. Don't... That's a trick. I know that it's okay, but it's it's like, if I want want to... What would happen if you just stayed with the feeling that you're lonely without rationalizing, without taking it somewhere else? If you just let... I hate him. I literally don't like him. It's not a vibe. It's not a vibe. Faye says, I remember they announced a breakup. I don't know if they're back together, but not all her Instagram doesn't have him. <laughs> I hate breakups. Oh, I'm so bummed. No. Oh, they were so cute together. That makes me so sad. I wonder what happened. Well, maybe they didn't see each other fully. That's really a deal breaker. For somebody like me, total deal breaker. And I didn't realize it until I, well, I basically turned 30. And Blair just turned 30. It's a big deal for a woman to turn 30. But yeah, I wonder. mm, I wonder if she like got to that point where she's like, I'm not fully seen. That's really hard. But then she has to fully see herself to know how to let someone else fully see her. 
So I wonder if like she's just learning so much about herself um, that it ended up or it ended her friendship. They're still together. They just try to keep their relationship off the Internet as possible. Oh, Discord says they are still together. OK, I hope they're still together because they were very nice when I met them and he was especially very nice to me. And so I hope they're still together. But either way, it's very hard when you can't see yourself. So you can't give your partner that vulnerability. OK, so some people are saying they're definitely still together. OK, 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 OK. They're just trying to be private. I love that. CJ says, do you think she understands the meaning of thriving? I mean, does anybody? Right. Does anybody? You know what I mean? Let yourself land and be with hmm. this place where it's like you're lonely. You, you don't trust. You don't want to let anyone in. You feel objectified. Like, just let yourself. Is she zoning out or is she meditating? Exist there and see what happens. I really don't want to sound like I'm excusing it because it's not a healthy emotion to feel, but the words that just keep coming into my head are like, it's just part of the plan. Like, it's just part of. It's part of how I get there. Uh huh. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense. How, I understand. It's how I get there. You accept it. It's how everything beautiful has come out of my life. Everything beautiful has been born out of that feeling. Yeah. So. Is she just going through that comedian uh, dilemma? Like, who would I be if I'm not healthy? And that's the truth. What do I always say? If you become introspective to such a degree that you find healing and peace, you might end up getting rid of all the things you've ever built because it's all kind of meaningless in a way. So. Do I like feeling it when I feel it? No. But I also understand that like everything positive I have was born out of it. And I also know that, you know, I swear people think this is probably like loony talk, but like this is just how it's supposed to be. And it's because. He wants her to cry. I definitely think he's trying to get her to be clickbaity. And the host is definitely trying to get her to be more vulnerable for a good uh, a good episode, which I think is fucked up. I have a destiny that is so much bigger. And, yes. And, and, yes. And me getting there entails every bit of what I'm experiencing. So I try to let myself experience things, you know. I try to. Ah, Rock says this is a lot of som somatic stuff, sitting in your emotions and exploring how they feel and how they feel in your body unpack it and, and, and live with it in the sense of like, let's see what I can create from this. Let's see where I can go from this. Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. I've gone to some like crazy places from it. Yeah. Like my life is <clears throat> unrecognizable. Mm. That's the biggest thing no one will ever understand about me is how unrecognizable I am now, not just physically. That's one thing. That's the most superficial, but right. My life was before it's, that's part of why I'm like, nothing's even real. Cause there's no way that I'm living this life when that was my life. That's mm. right. Yeah. She had a huge bubble pop. It sounds like, and the bubble pop made her more aware of like, nothing's even real. Cause like you can always bubble pop again, which is pretty true. Right. I really think like, that's funny that she knows that about herself, but not about how other people experience gender or experience life. Like nothing is real except we all put, our foot down. So when people ask me like, Brittany, what do you think about this? I'm always asking, do you mean me, the consciousness, or do you mean me, the citizen? Because me, the community member has a different opinion about things than me, the consciousness. And I think people don't understand that because for them, it's the same thing. But for me, they're totally two different things. Like they're just so different. So I think maybe Blair is having that kind of, maybe that relationship, because a lot of people in the bubble I grew up in, those are the, the same thing. Maybe she's realizing, like, you know what I'm – something happened. Something happened. She had a bubble pop. Something happened. Do you think it's possible for you to – because you have this belief. It's, this is part of the plan. This is just what my life is, and there's something bigger operating, and, and mm -hmm. that's your intuition, and, and I, which I believe. That feels, that feels very real. And, like, is there a part of you that feels it's impossible for me to ever get – what I want in that way, like emotionally, to be seen, to be understood, to be felt, to be known. I think so. You think it's impossible? Mm -hmm. So just go to therapy, go to therapy. Breathe and just feel this, like it's not impossible. Go to real therapy.
Like let, your, let yourself believe for a second that it's not impossible and just see what happens. I understand okay. why you'd believe it's impossible based on your history yeah. and based on the experiences you're having now. But I, I guess I, I want to, without any demand, but just to, to play with the idea of sure. what if it wasn't okay. impossible? And how does that feel? You, don't you love that everyone does everything except go to therapy? They'll go on a podcast. They'll make a YouTube video. They'll talk to their friends. And they just won't go to fucking therapy. It's so annoying. It's really annoying to me. I'm like, there's a whole tool. It's like, oh, I have a broken knee. Let me do everything except go to the doctor. Let me do. I have a broken knee. Let me put it on YouTube. Let me make a TikTok. Hmm. What won't I do? Go to therapy. It's like, go to therapy. Get a good therapist. This is so fucking existential dread therapy and also follow it with philosophy so you have a foundation of values to rely on. Girl, Manja says, Brittany, can you explain why and how they're different Britneys? Okay, so like, okay, again, or different Britney. So if you ask me like, Brittany, what do you think about people who cheat? It's like, or cheaters in general. It's like, well, as a community member, like I don't care. I don't think it should be illegal. I don't think they should be arrested. I don't think they should be fired. I don't think we should ostracize them from society. As a Britney, uh, it depends on the cheater and it depends on how they do it. But I think they're, I think it's a horrible decision to make. I think it's a consent violation. I think it's usually disrespectful. I definitely will judge you and I'll look at you a little different. You know, I'm not fully different, but I'm going to like look at you a little sussy baka. Uh, I also like, you know, I might, there might be a conversation we have to have around it. You know what I mean? Um, you're definitely going to hear me tell you about it and how I feel about it. But like, I don't think like the community should have an issue with it. Like if somebody was like, they should get fired from their job. They cheated. I'd be like, no, obviously not. Even though personally, I would love to do that. I would love to fire people for because they cheated. Like Dave Ramsey does. Dave Ramsey fires people if they cheat on their wives. <laughs> and I think that's great. As a Britney, I think that's great. As a community, I think it's probably not a good idea because I think you can be a bad husband but really good at your job. But I think that that's the problem is like I think those things are separate. So that's what I mean. You know what I mean? Like I don't think we should like as a society ostracize te te cheaters. But I think as individuals, we have the right to be like, hey, this isn't OK. And what you've done is like really bad. And this is a detriment to your kids and your family. And we should be talking about that. You know what I mean? So I think we should be talking about that. But that's Britney's values. So Britney's values are not society's values. I live in Croatia. They're anti-gay and anti-weed. I'm happy to be a good community member here. I won't sit here and like ruffle feathers. But like my own personal life, of course, I'm pro-gay and pro-weed. But like I'm not going to come here and make a mess of it. You know what I mean? So, you know, Alex says they used to stone cheaters. Exactly. Livy says, so citizen is what it means for the community and consciousness means just for yourself. Yes, my consciousness, my my ego, my my perception of self is me. And then there's the community member part of me that's like, I. it's not just about me, right? Like, they're just not about me. Raheem says, why can't both your thoughts be congruent, overlapping each other because they're both correct perspectives for different circumstances, morals versus laws? Because personal morals shouldn't reflect laws. People do pretend that society's ethics should ref like, ref like reflect the law. And I think sort of, but not really. Like the collective is often incorrect. So, you know, like everyone has a different relationship with these things. But again, for myself, like I, I don't care what most people do. Like I remember my brother got into it with me over like, should trans people be in schools? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck as a person or as a societal member. But they feel like you have to give a fuck. You know what I mean? Or like drag queens at schools. Like, I don't know. I'm indifferent. Maybe it could be wrong. Maybe it could be right. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't really give a fuck. You know what I mean? But like, what does that mean? You know, or abortion. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of abortion, but I don't care if people have abortions. Or war. I'm not a big fan of war, but I know people are going to go to war. So it's just like whatever people, you know what I mean? Like people just decide what society they want. Or like I'll pay taxes, but I think taxes are like criminal the way they use them. Or like I'm happy to be a good community member. Like I don't always want to wear my seatbelt, but like 
at the same time, I make people wear their seatbelts because it's the law. You know what I mean? Also, it's good for safety, but like I don't always wear a seatbelt. Like I always take off my seatbelt as I'm approaching my house, even though that, you know what I mean? But like, I don't know. Like I just, I just think this idea that your, your community always reflects you is just like a privilege take. It's just like you, that means you've been a part of the majority for so long. As a minority, like how could the majority, how could the world ever reflect your values? So of course it's different. You know what I mean? Dooms, I'm not sure what you're asking. How is your perception of you, you? I'm not sure what you're, are you asking an introspe like introspection would be my answer, but I'm not sure what you mean by that. You know what I mean? Um, Livy says, do you think people's trauma can bleed into their consciousness or core selves? Or is their trauma purely a reaction from our animal brain trying not to be hurt? Um, do you think people's trauma can bleed into their consciousness? Obviously, or core selves. I think I see trauma as like something that like sludges over your core self and then you like wipe off the sludge and that's the trauma. So the trauma, the illnesses, the processing stuff, I feel like it's mud over the consciousness and you just got to wipe the mud off and maybe collect it in a jar and put it on a shelf or wash it away completely. Because sometimes if you can't get rid of the trauma, you just like put it in a jar and put it where it belongs. So that's how I see it. So I, I think like your trauma blocks the view of your consciousness from seeing things in the most clear way, um, in the most whole way, even yourself, especially yourself. So, so we, we're acting within reason, but that's only because like it's a perception issue. Like before I knew I had borderline, I thought I had anxiety and depression and that was it. My perception completely changed the moment, moment I was diagnosed with borderline. I was like, oh, okay. Now I, now I understand there's mud on my windshield and I've got to clean it off. No wonder I've been struggling to drive. Like, no wonder I've had a hard time. No wonder I keep getting into car accidents. Damn. I've had mud on my windshield this whole time. I just thought that's how the car came. You know? Doom says, I don't really, I don't even believe in introspection anymore because we literally don't exist. If everything is just happening, then so are we. I'm not my brain because I'm aware of every, everything that produces it. Yeah, I think that's like, I don't believe you because you're in the comment section asking questions about introspection. So you don't believe that. But if you're just happening, then like, I'm glad you've decided to just happen in my comment section. It doesn't feel positive. Why? Because we like to stay in our trauma, because it feels comfortable, because it's what we know. I guess, you know, or not I guess, I know. I know that, again, I, I, I really don't want to sound like a broken record here, but like so much beauty comes out of it that, and I... It's the same trouble addicts get into. Without my addiction, how can I make good music? Without my trauma, how can I make good music? Trauma, destruction... And unnecessary suffering is not what makes life beautiful. It's what you do regardless of it happening. Life itself is suffering. Suffering with wisdom, suffering well is wisdom. You want wisdom? Learn to suffer well. Life itself is suffering. You don't need to add to it, girl. So even if she heals herself in some capacity, life itself will still be suffering. So she can get rid of it. She's holding on to the trauma and to the destruction because she thinks it's what makes life beautiful. She is what makes life beautiful, regardless of how ugly it was. She is the thing that's beautiful. She has the tool, not the trauma. Fight so hard because of it mm -hmm. that I don't ever want to stop fighting. And it's not, I don't think it's like necessarily unhealthy fighting because I know that what I fight for is always the right thing. And I know that I'm always on the right path as long as I let that intuition lead. 100%, yeah. So I feel like when you stop fighting, you die. When you stop fighting, you die. I think that's a really common survival, uh, survivor perspective. Like Blair's a survivor, you know? Like she's a victim of, you know, she's had to survive. Mayo says, hey, Britt, have you ever heard of Frank Yang? He's the most interesting person on YouTube when it comes to introspection. I think Frank Yang is crazy. I've been sent his videos so much all the time. And every time I watch him, I'm just not talking about the same stuff. Like introspection should not make you lose your mind. I think you can end up losing your mind trying to be introspective because there's a lot there, but I just, yeah, no thanks.
Any opinions on Tony Robbins and his methods? Um, money hungry, clout chasing, fame seeking, two A. Yeah. Doom says, isn't trauma not real because it exists in the past and technically in the past, the past and the future don't exist is because time is not real, but genetics are real and biology is real through our perception. We know it's real. So genetics actually like genetics pass down trauma. So when we say like we don't exist, Dooms, we mean in a philosophy way. We don't mean in a literal sense. We do exist. It's in a philosophy sense we don't exist. Like the blade of grass doesn't exist, but it does exist. You do exist, bro. I hate to tell you this. You do exist. And you are a brain and you are genetics and you do have biology. And from what we know about ourselves as an animal, trauma does carry on generationally. You know what I'm saying? And it does. It absolutely is a real thing because you're like a car that's been dented. You're a car that's been dented. So just FYI, like just FYI, okay? Like you are what you are. You are a combination of so much. You are as valuable and interesting as a rock that has been living here for millions of years. You're just as interesting and full of story as that rock. That rock has seen a lot. I look at Arizona. Arizona rocks are are carved by water that used to be in Arizona. You know, mass floods around the whole world, right? And I look at those rocks and I think, how many lifetimes have you seen? How many lifetimes has this rock seen? This rock is living a life that if only I had eyes, bro. You know what I mean? So we all exist, you know. Doom says, I know I exist, but you can't be something that you're aware of. Well, you can't be something you are aware of or you're not aware of. You can't be something you're aware of. I'm not sure what you mean by that. You want to give me some, some input into that? Ooh, the rock scene on everything, everywhere, all at once. Love it. That's, that's, that's an image for sure. I mean, I understand that, but that could also be a trauma response. For sure. Like just, if we take, if we take that sentence out and just look at, I'm never going to stop fighting. It sounds psychotic. Well, I mean, it sounds saying. like, it sounds like I'm in a fight club, like really bitch, like calm down. But like, I don't know. I look at the average person and this is not from a nihilistic place because mm -hmm. I actually really believe in people overall, even though it can be so doom and gloom in the world. Mm -hmm. I believe in like, maybe not people, I believe in like humanity. Mm -hmm. And I believe in like the higher versions of all of them that are there, but they can't mm -hmm. get to you or don't try to get to you. Mm -hmm. But I, so I look at how most- Interesting that she speaks about the higher self, but won't let go of her lower self. Interesting that she speaks about higher self, but won't let go of her lower self. Interesting. Interesting. Most people operate and I'm like, to me, most of them stopped fighting. Like they don't strive for more on a, you know, not even on like a superficial, like capitalist level. Like they're not working hard uh -huh. or whatever. I'm talking about like, they're not fighting to understand themselves. They're not fighting to grow. They're not fighting to see how far they can take this like human experience. Right. Like I want to see how far I can take it. Right. And so to me, when I see them, I'm like, oh, they're dead. Unless they choose to fight again. Right. Well, that's, that's, that's. Oh my God, her lower self is paying the bills. True, seriously, truly, truly. You know what I saw earlier today? And I was like, what is this? It was Trisha Paytas making a video on like eating on a budget, $34 a day. And I don't know why my brain was like, I reject watching Trisha Paytas spend money because I know Trisha Paytas is infamously like horrible at spending money. But I will, and she's like a millionaire, right? But I will watch Graham Stephan show us how to spend less money because he's literally frugal and always has been. But I thought that was funny, like Trisha trying to tell people like how to spend money, less money in a day when this woman spends more money on wigs and purses than the average American will ever make in all the years they work. And I was just like, that's such an interesting, like, why is she making this kind of content? And then I realized like, that's just Trisha. She makes whatever she wants, which I love. Right. But I was like, yeah, that's like an interesting, interesting. Huh. Now, to be fair, Trisha isn't as. Trisha is definitely operating in like a mid self because her lowest self is like crying on a kitchen floor talking about being a chicken nugget. And we haven't seen that in years. So that's good. But it's definitely she's not her higher self yet. Blair knows about the higher self, but I don't know what that means for everyone. You know what I mean? So it, it, is, it, it is interesting, but I think she's going through the same conundrum comedians go through. They're afraid to lose their edge 
They're like trauma because that's where their work stems from, which is true. Healing often affects your bag, bro. That's, I understand that perspective and I, I relate and respect that perspective. But there's, a, there's some awareness that you've hit some limitation or, or, or some blockage where you're realizing that there's things that happened in your childhood that are going to need be, to be reconciled in some way in order for you to, I guess, get to the next level to keep, to keep growing. That's literally how I understand it. You yeah. Know, I felt like I hit like around four or five months ago, like mm. this weird wall. And I was like, this is weird. Suddenly, you know, this, you know, constant trajectory that I've been on mentally since escaping my childhood, mm -hmm. suddenly it's not going any further, mm -hmm. but I knew it could. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's no way that like now is when I just fall apart. Any thoughts on therapy? Does, why doesn't anyone think about therapy? It's doctor for your brain, guys. Think about it as like medical professional for your brain. Jordan Peterson is a therapist. Why don't, why doesn't Jordan Peterson encourage more people to go to therapy? Cause he thinks it's all been taken over. Wait, wrong accent. What are we going to do without the men? Go to therapy. Wait, don't go to therapy. It's a liberal mob. Okay, got it. <laughs> But like Jordan, Ther Jordan Peterson is a therapist. Like go to a, a person who specializes in the brain in terms of trauma in your past, bros. Like so interesting, right? They'll literally make YouTube videos. Like, and then to be fair though, therapy without philosophy is useless. So you need therapy to handle the trauma and then you need philosophy to like help you with a foundation for your values. Why do you do what you do? What do you believe in? What brought you here? So when you get healed, you have somewhere to land. So And healed is a process. I don't mean it as an ending point. I'm still in healing. Everyone's still in healing. There's no like end point. Like I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean healed. Like now you have nothing to worry about, you know. Mm -hmm. I started assessing what really happened to me. Yeah. And what is really the story of like my life. And I also made a conscious effort to refuse to separate Blair and Robert as somehow different people or different nice. lives or different entities. I'm like, that's so ignorant, you know? I'm, I'm all oh. of it. I'm both of them. True. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's all me and it all makes up who I am. Like Robert had everything to do with Blair. Blair has everything to do with Robert. True. Yeah. And even saying it sounds like I'm differentiating it, but it's not. Well, they are the same person, but also Robert never knew this Blair and Blair never knew, this Blair never knew Robert. In a big way, like my past self, like my husband, you guys have known a part of me that my husband has never known because by the time I met him, I transformed into another Britney. So like I'm not my past Britney's, but I'm all of my past Britney's into this Britney. But obviously like you change. It's like with any good anime protagonist, like Goku season one is not Goku super. Like, okay, like super Dragon Ball Z super is not Goku like season one with Raditz. Like, okay, like these are different Gokus. Like it's the same Goku, but it's different. Okay, Gohan beating Cell is not Gohan who has his like daughter and is like living his life as like a little nerd. Okay, like they're different versions of ourselves, but they're still like us, but they're different versions. If I could blend the word into one word, then I would, but mm -hmm. you know. And if you allowed yourself to like intuit, what's, where's the place to go? Like, what's the work you have to do? What's the thing? No, Raheem, we are not talking about personality disorders. We're talking about the different versions of ourselves. You are multifaceted, bro. I hope you're not. Well, maybe you're not, actually. We're not talking about multiple personalities. It's a very rare condition. We're talking about the different versions of yourself, like the person you are at work, the person you were at 25, the person you are now. Obviously, I'm not 12-year-old Brittany, bro. Where's the place to start in terms of looking at your childhood? Like, what... What if you just intuit into it or, or trust whatever comes up when I ask that question? Like, like if we were to, where should we go? What what should we unpack? Um, definitely the long term effects of abuse when you're really young. Uh huh. So that includes. You know How could you talk about being abused and traumatized and not think I should go to a therapist? Again, I really love that Blair is aware. It's same with Trisha. Trisha goes, oh, I'm binge eating food and I don't know what to do. Go to an eating disorder specialist. 
go to a specialist who specializes in eating disorders. What do you mean? What do you do? And a part of me is like, man, I really just want to give people tools. You know that thing you need help with? There's a job that is dedicated to solving those problems. There's a literal job that people created to solve that literal problem. And again, buying, going to a therapist is like finding a good MD. It takes a while. Like you have to find the right therapist who's doing the right special practice to help you. Yes, it takes a second. But there's literally a whole group of people who've dedicated their life to solving your problem. But again, people think they're special and they think there's no way anyone could solve my problem. Girl, all the answers are in the universe, girl. There is nothing. Everything is out there, girl. Oh my God. Like, I am just so shocked. Here we are. Trauma, childhood trauma, abuse. Wow. If only there was a specialist that engaged in this type of work. Hmm. Hmm. Girl. Girl. <laughs> you know, how has it affected my body? How has it affected, you know, my mental health? Mm -hmm. You know, what character traits did it create that are not necessarily on that list of like, these are my positive traits, you know? And, but you know, even when I say that, even like my poorer traits, my more negative traits. Which are what? Uh, I can definitely be too anxious mm -hmm. and that can block me sometimes. <laughs> Wait, Dooms, you said, how are you still identifying with the past you when that was a person in the moment back then? How do you not see that time only exists in the brain? Yeah, those things don't contradict one another. They sound like contradictions, but both things are the same. So we know through what we've understood about biology and cells and like science that we are almost, we're on, we are, we're, we step on top of, we're like Legos. It's not like, it, we're not a thing that gets like erased. Things live in us. We are genetic codes. Like we are living past, present, future. Like the past is in our genetics. Like we are the past, present, and future. So when you say like it only exists in the brain, yes, everything exists in the brain. It stores stuff. Like everything lives in us. So time is an illusion because it's a perception. But, but everything, like everything you know about everything is only through that perception in that brain. So like we build off of things. We are building on top of old us. We're not creating new us's every second. Like this self that's talking right now is building off the Britney I was five seconds ago, building off the Britney I was 10 minutes ago, building off the Britney I was 20 years ago. I couldn't be this Britney without first having been that Britney. This Britney can't exist without that Britney. But we are not the brain. I mean, maybe. I believe we're more than the brain, but we don't know that, right? So... We don't know that, right? You're saying that quite definitively with your big capital letters. So again, we some people think we are just the brain. Some people think we're a brain and a soul. Some people think we're like a consciousness and a brain. Some people think the consciousness is the brain. Some people think there's a lot of things you could think. The question is, which one is it? And then we will spend our lifetime trying to figure it out. And then we probably won't know by the time we die. When I start getting in that like freak out, you know, overwhelm zone. Mm-hmm. And I can behave in ways that are not nice. Like I can fly off the handle at people I love, not in a crazy way, but in a, I might say something I regret way. Right. Or, right. you know, I might react disproportionately to something that doesn't deserve this level of my like freak out. Right. Um, and so I can look at that as a bad thing because it is in a lot of scenarios, but also if I wasn't a little anxious, I wouldn't have fought so hard to survive. And right, I wouldn't of have course, survived. Of you know? course. So of everything course. Is, is... Well, I guess that's that's the fear, and a lot of people uh, fear that, right? Like, um, I had these things happen to me. It made me the way I am. And because of that, I, I'm now extremely successful, and I have all these things, and I like myself, and I like my life. And so if I start to heal these things and, and give up this edge, give up this anxiety... Uh, stop being motivated by my pain. Give up this anger that's, you know, whatever it may be that's that's fueling me. Then I'm going to lose my edge and I'm yeah. no longer, I'm not one of my, I don't even know who I am without any of that. Who am I? Yeah. Without all. Okay. So he's calling out the obvious, which I think is really, really good. Of that stuff. And then what's, how am I going to operate in the world? Because, 
You're asking me to uh, take on a whole new way of seeing things, a whole new way of operating the world. I don't know that that's going to work, exactly. but I know that this fucking works. Mm -hmm. You know, 100%. that's where I have the data is that those yeah. traits get me somewhere. Because that's why it's so scary. That's why I say like introspection is scary because you learn how much you don't know. So it's easier to stay in the world you do know because then you just, you know what works. But if you go into a world you don't know, then you have to redo it and redo it, redo it, redo it. Bryson says, reminds me of how you said some richer people are, are a certain level of traumatized. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because it's true, but I think... This is the same guy that interviewed Andrew Tate. It is the same guy. It's about accepting every part of yourself. Like, yeah. I work really hard on accepting all of it. And accepting it is not being, you know, super happy about it, mm -hmm. but it is understanding where it hurts and benefits you yeah. and being able to mitigate it in the areas that it hurts you. Right. And if you got to run with it in the ways that it builds you into your larger destiny, then fucking run with it. Yeah. So it just about being smart and self-aware enough to know what's happening and why, Yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm big on the why. Like I actually don't relate to, um, hmm people who are not on sort of a perpetual journey of understanding themselves. Yes. Interesting. It's funny. She says like all the right words. I, yeah, I, I really love this journey for her, right? I love the why. It's my favorite question. How autistic of her. I love the why question. It's so great. Um, okay. Like I really love this part. This is good. I do relate to a lot of people who do stay stagnant. I don't give a fuck. You know, like your journey is your journey, bro. I've like really accepted that. But I appreciate her desire to be around people that are asking themselves why. Um, interesting. You know, like I, I, for me to be your friend or to have you in my life, like there needs to be some sort of like, I don't need to see exponential growth in a short amount of time. I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. But if you're not kind of on a journey to. Yeah, I don't care. I fully accept it. People are just going to be where they are, bro. They're going to be where they are, bro. To learn about yourself and about the world around you. Yeah. I don't really understand yeah. what you're doing. I guess you're dead. Ah, that's the next step, start of the journey. Realizing that people are on their own journeys and some of them look like that. See, she's like, I don't get how you could do that because she's only thinking about it through her lens. She's only thinking about it through her lens. She's not yet practicing understanding how they got there, which is why she's still... Which is why she can't understand the progressives she doesn't like yet, but wants to be like humanized because she's like, I'm a real person. I'm like, so are they. I know. Right. To me, that's dead. Yeah. So I, I wonder if you want to try something. I know I, I talked a little bit about um, the work that I do and, and you know, the, the, the tools that we use. And I guess the thing that I'm most interested in uh, is this place where you have a hard time trusting, where there's a kind of uh, defense out against the world that you don't feel seen and uh, understood, and that that's uh, painful. I mean, it led. I don't know what he's going to make her do, but I don't like it already. Before we jump into it, guys, I got to take a little bit of a pee break, a little bit of snack break. I'll be right back. Bryson says she should entertain some philosophy more. Politics probably isn't the best place to have. Uh, to have fun with the word why. Absolute agree. Politics is a game of winning and losing. It is not interested in the why. It is not interested in knowing the self better. If you know the self better, you might vote differently. And if you vote differently, you might be on the losing team after all. It's very different. It's very difficult. To a, a panic attack and you really become aware of it. And I wonder, I wonder like if there's some strong feeling there, like some energy that says, stay the fuck away from me. Like, keep your fucking distance. Yeah, but it's twofold. I feel like that's going to be in the comments, like, why did you keep saying it's twofold? Because it is. <laughs> because I have that, like, get the fuck away from me thing. Uh huh. That's, like, almost my favorite sentence now that I think about it. Interesting. But I also have, like, a pretty deep you know, desire for a real connection. That's why mm -hmm. sometimes it is painful that I'm objectified so much because I don't need, you know, necessarily like a, I know that I'm like solo in this life. Let's put it that way. I know that I'm so. Girl, she had better not be in a relationship while she's talking. 
She, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, you're solo in this life for real, for real. Mm, unless you do life with someone. Oh, she maybe me. She means as a consciousness. Hold on. In the end. Okay, that's true. In the end, we are all solo. That is true. I do think she's looking for peace with her consciousness. So this is where like, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I should hit Blair up. I should hit her up. I should hit her up. Because um, this is like where I think my work helps with people is that I do think you need a relationship with your consciousness. You need to have a relationship with your parts. You need to have a relationship with who you are. So you are okay alone. So you don't feel lonely. So you only feel like good being alone. Not that loneliness is necessarily like negative. It's just that you, when I don't, let me just say like this. I haven't experienced loneliness since I had a better relationship with my, like my relationship with myself. You know what I mean? Like loneliness was when I felt like I didn't even know like my purpose, my place. But mostly I didn't know myself, right? Because purpose and place, that all has to do with yourself. So I feel like you do do life alone. But you do life not alone. That's the wrong word. This isn't Dr. House. You do life through your perspective and in a relationship with your consciousness. And so ultimately, <clears throat> even when you're with people, it's you're with someone, you. So there's a by myselfness to it. But you're not by yourself always. Just at the root of it, of course, you're only ever yourself. I can't be somebody else. And I can't pretend that even when I'm doing life, my husband could die tomorrow. And I would, you know what I mean? But I think this is about knowing the self. I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like that. But I, I don't like that. Okay. Okay. I don't, I don't know. No. Yeah. Individually. Thank you, Vert. We're individuals. We're doing it individually and sometimes with other people. We don't have to be lonely, but you, you, like, I'm alone at my job. My husband is not at my job with me. I'm alone at my job, but I'm not lonely and I'm fulfilled. I'm obviously with you guys, but like no one came to work with me today. So, you know, you do life alone, but you also do life with people. Like I know my husband's waiting for me to get off work so we can spend the evening together. But I also know that even when I'm with him, you know, like, yeah, <clears throat> I'm still an individual. You know? Oh, why? No. Why are you? No, you don't have to be solo in this life. Why? That's a belief. I don't I don't believe that for you. I don't, I don't want to believe that for anybody. But I think Blair means it in the toxic way because no one's ever known her or seen her. And she's really learning herself now. She feels like we all die alone. Like Dr. Cal House, who's like this two nihilist, who's like, we all die alone in the end. It's like you die a singular, like individually, but like surrounded by people. Or you die individually but like you don't have to die alone like so I think Blair has the toxic relationship with her right now but that's part of the journey so she needs to like have this journey and then once she has a better relationship with herself she'll realize like it's not a matter of it is you're an individual but like it doesn't mean you have to like do life alone but also if I wasn't partnered I would be doing life alone in a sense like I'd be with probably a sibling like renting an apartment but I wouldn't be I don't want my siblings to do life with me I want to do life alone in that sense, but not life without community. Does that make sense? Like, I think Blair is somewhere there where like she's, there's something there for Blair. I mean, maybe I'm having such a strong reaction because I've had that belief myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't, I don't want to believe that, but. Well, I'll put it this way. Uh huh. I know I will always be surrounded by a lot of people if I choose to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, I'll never be necessarily physically alone. I know that I'll have people that are close to me forever because mm -hmm. I'm a very open person. And when I do let someone in, people tend to go really far in. Like they, we become good friends. Yeah. Like I only have deep friendships. Yeah. But I just have to say, I mean, I, I know that reaching that full destiny is a me thing. And, I agree with that. You know, of, of course, yes, of course. In the end, we're all alone. Like we're we we're born alone and die alone. But, but I know it's that it's that lack of understanding people have of me that will bring me there. Does that make sense? Like I. Uh, I mm, yes. Ooh. Yes. As long as she has the understanding. Uh, I know that that's the. But there's also a deep desire in all of us to be known. To be known. Yes, but fuck other people knowing you. Okay. I'm so sorry. 
fuck other people knowing you. Peace and love. Like, peace and love. Truly, truly, truly knowing you. That is a very profound thing. And I think people pretend to know people. That's my theory. My theory is people pretend to profoundly know you, which is why it feels so hurtful when it's not true. But I think in my live experience, my anecdotal, my bias, prejudice, whatever, is like literally I mean it. My husband is the only person that I feel has profoundly been able to know me. Um, so similarly to how I know myself. But other people pretend to because it hurts their ego to think they don't and I'm saying don't let it hurt your ego radically accept that you couldn't right <clears throat> that's what it's about so I think for Blair she knows because she hasn't had that experience which makes me wonder about her relationship a little bit but also wonders how much of it is um she's unable to give people herself because or her husband her or her partner herself because she doesn't know that part of herself yet so there's something, there's something in it. Went all the way through, like to really yeah. be known and understood. And you said two things. You said it's twofold, but I would, I would say it a little bit differently, that you have a bind. Stay oh, wow. the fuck away from me, and I want deep connection. Yeah, It's True. a bind. And the Common, very common, especially in hyper-independent people. Defense says stay the fuck away from me. Well, why is the defense saying stay the fuck away from me? Because you've been hurt. Yeah, you I get, have You've been bad. really hurt. Yeah. Right. And it's and, it, and and in the place where you got hurt, it would it makes sense that it would be scary to let people close. Right. And mm -hmm. so there's some way which is like and, and I would imagine also and I know I, I, I have been like this and that you're probably hyper vigilant on some level like. Oh, you yeah. Know? Well, she's literally a survivor. So, yeah. Yeah. And then there's other part of you that like I want deep connection. Yeah. And Just, that will mm -hmm. sometimes ignore you know, things that I'm being hypervigilant about, so I'm seeing it, mm -hmm. but I will lie to myself that it's not really there, and I end up, you know, I'm working on right. it now, and I made yeah. a lot of progress on it, but yeah. just letting the wrong people in. You it know. happens. But this is a lived, learn experience. I've done this. I will continue to do it. I will continue to let people in, and I will learn over time whether or not um, we could build a relationship, whether we're different or not. Because, look, I never think I'm going to let a person in and I'm going to, they're going to be like this most amazing person. I just try to accept people for who they are. I let them in and then I see what happens and whatever it is, it is like, I try not to, when I make new friends, I try not to like dream of what the friendship will be because in my past as a younger person, when I did that, it was so difficult to accept them for who they were or to actually see them or to even allow things to move naturally. So it hurt more when the friendship broke up, but now I'm just like, it is what it is, what it is, girl. I love that we have this moment in time together. May it last a lifetime or may it last three months or may it last six months. I just want to love it for what it is and not put too much emphasis on it. That's why when people try to be like, oh my God, Brittany, like I trust you so much. Like, is it symbiotic? Like, why do you, why are you putting that trust in me? Have we built up a rapport? Is this necessary? Does this make sense? But people want to live in the fantasy of like, I know this person, right? You know the version of them in your head, but like until you can regurgitate back to them who they are. Like I have so many friends, love my friends. I have hundreds of like good people in my life, but sometimes they'll be like, I know you so well. Here's a Britney idea. And I'm like, that's not a Britney idea. That's your thought process of a Britney idea. That's not my idea. That's not my lived experience. And they're like, yes, it is. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. And so again, what they're like, People only know you so well because of the tools they have to even perceive you. So it's like, that's not it, girl. But like, okay, love you anyways. It's like, they're not even bad people. They're just like operating with limited tools. And I think this fantasy of like, all your best friends will know every part of you is just stupid. But it's so reasonable because it's like the dream we sell each other. But it's like not true. Your friends will know what they can know and what they can see. And then everything else is like, oh, tell me more about that. I don't know much about that. And then we move forward with, you know, oh, okay. You know, Fishy says, what do you do if you can't be in the moment of the relationship and connection? Well, I would want to know why you can't be in the moment. What's going on, you know? What do you do if you can't be in the moment of the relationship? It probably needs a break. Probably just need a break. Sometimes it happens. I take breaks with my friends. Sometimes we take breaks. Sometimes we don't talk for a bit. Sometimes things get hot and the tension is there. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you just got to take a break from people. 
And then sometimes you got to end the friendship, but or the the connection, I should say, because who knows what kind of friendship it is. But sometimes you just need a break. You know, it depends on the situation. But I feel like I'm the best I've been with that so far. I've really come to a place of like, I'm very comfortable, heavily vetting influences around me. Yeah. Because also it rubs off on you, you mm, know? Of course. Like, I really... Like, look, I would love a reality where Blair and I could be friends, but the realist, like the, the real, the real story is like, we'll never be close friends. One, because we've already worked together and had that opportunity and didn't connect. And even though we got along really, really well, we don't, like, there's, we probably don't see a lot of each other. And then two, we would have a different desire for friendship. I'm also, to be fair, my inner circle is really full, so I could have a close friend, but not a very close friend. And... That's like, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But what's, what's, what we've been taught is like, you should connect with every person you meet, but no, realistically, like you should allow the connection to be what it is. So like, I really like Blair. I hope she finds a way to like, be okay with seeing herself and not too worried about other people seeing every part of her. And I hope she finds a relationship with the parts of herself that other people can see so they can have a symbiotic relationship in that way. But I do like, I, I see her and I'm like, okay, I already see some overlap. Like we could de definitely talk about philosophy and we could talk about like therapy and stuff. That'd be so fun. But everything else, like I'm good. Like I know I make YouTube friends all the time and I'm like, I don't want to talk about my marriage. I don't want to talk about my life with you. I don't want to talk about my family with you. Like I just want to talk about work and that goes pretty well. But some people are like, oh, I was kind of hoping to know about you. And I was like, I don't want to talk about me. I already have all the friends in my life that I need to talk about me with. You know, like I'm already good. I don't need more friends to talk about me, like about me. You know, I'm happy to talk about work. I'm happy to talk about ideas, but I'm not looking for friends to like share more of myself with. Like I, you know, and that take that came first and foremost from realizing the relationship I have with myself is first the best relationship ever, then my husband, then my cat, then my family and friends. So I'm good. But Blair, Blair is living. She wants to be her higher self, but she needs her lower self because it pays the bills. And it's what's made her successful so far. Hmm. Do you believe that part of the reason I had to escape, you know, my family, my hometown? Sorry. Yes, Stephanie. If it wasn't, if it was actually easy to see people, there wouldn't be so much war. Amen. My house and all that stuff was partly because like it was in the walls, like it was in the air, you know, yep. that negativity. Environment is so real. Mm -hmm. The darkness within them, it wasn't just only in them. It was a, almost a physical thing. I was like, I just got to go. Yeah. So, you know. Is it in you? Do you think, do you think yeah. there's some, it's in you, mm -hmm. that darkness? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's part of. Does it scare you? No. No? Because I. Do you know it? Mm -hmm. You sure? Mm -hmm. I, I hate him. I'm so sorry. I'm sure he's a lovely person. I just like the way he talks. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> he's, I'm sure a lovely person. I just like, she's doing so good with him, but he's so combative and like a way that's like not fun. Maybe not fully. <laughs> right. Cause I'm always right. learning. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but I know that, you know, I like everyone is capable of good and evil. Right. And, you know, it's even on a biological level, so much of the darkness my mom passed into me. Like, mm -hmm. we have the exact same anxiety. And what's crazy is we have, like, very similar, like, childhood trauma, like, experiences mm -hmm. on the literal level, like, things that may have happened. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it happened to me because it happened to her in a way because she wasn't the parent that needed to be in the way of that happening to me. Yeah. Because it happened to her. Yeah. And it happened to her mom. Oof. Yeah. So generational trauma, it, it definitely is there, but for whatever reason, and I'm so thankful I've always had this in me, I've always been able to identify what I need to shed. Like Livy says, why is he trying to lead her into an answer the way he wants? That's what's pissing me off. He's, he's, he's like not getting to know Blair. He's like boxing her into like expectation which i'm doing to an extent but i also know it's a journey and i could be wrong but like he's doing it in a way that's like pissing me off versus like i hope i'm doing it in a way that's like fun and exploratory like let the girl live her life but also like he's doing it in a way that's like leading her i'd be like tell me about that oh my god i'm so interested so relatable tell me about that he's just like you know what i mean i don't know like mm -hmm. like oh the the pain that 
has blocked her from seeing this clearly. I'm going to see it clearly. I don't care. I'm going to see right through it. I'm going to do anything I can to see through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. It's in me, but you know, like anything. Well, it's you, in all of us. Yeah. But that specific stuff that was transferred to me, it's like, you just learn how to hone it and use it for good. I'm, I feel like you either heal it or you spread it. Mm -hmm. You heal it mm -hmm. or you lash out at the world. Right. And I've lashed out at the world at certain times. Right. You know, one of the criticisms, criticisms of me, and it's correct, used to be a lot more, but it's still sometimes correct, is that I get a little angry. You know, online, like my tone of voice sometimes will be very right. <laughs> relatable. Roller Spice says, I want to have good faith and think that's just how he's processing it. I do too. But it feels a little too YouTube-y to me. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, I think that's why I'm annoyed with him. But maybe, maybe he's just like, that's how he processes information. Right. Angry, which is passion and which is fire, but also is anger. Is it, is it, it's anger and it's, is it, is there times where it's like cruel, like you're being mean? In the past. In the past. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not to say that I won't, you know, slip up and catch myself being that way again. But right. I really have like made a conscious effort to really elevate the way I yeah. talk. That's good. That's good. About yeah. things now and people now. Yeah. Um, and I also know that I have a really healthy gauge on who I'm actually aiming it at. So mm. like I do a lot of videos on predators. Yeah. If there's any group of people to <laughs> spread some hate towards, right. I mean, I'm not right. going to necessarily feel bad about that. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, it just makes me think of your father and, and the last thing you said to him, what, what, you know, I hope you die of cancer, you cunt. As I hope you fucking get cancer and die, yeah. you fucking cunt. Right. Which is crazy. It's a curse. But then I always think about like, how crazy is it that he really got cancer and died two weeks later? Maybe three, but it was within the month. Is there some place inside you where, yeah, I mean, maybe it's irrational where you feel like you killed him? Whoa. Like you're responsible for Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I found old gifts of Blair. And I didn't realize how much she's changed. Um, she looks great. I'm not going to lie. Like, she looks great, bro. She's, like, prettier with every year, bro. And also, um, no, she didn't kill him. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? See, that's go to therapy. You can't literally think you killed a man who had head-to-toe cancer. You know what I mean? Like, go to therapy. Like, that's a therapy thing. That's trauma, bro. I think it goes back to, like, the... Unless she thinks she's a witch. A Tumblr witch? Power that you either learn how to hone it and use it for good. Because if I could somehow energetically do that, let's just say I did. Uh-huh. That means I can do a lot of energetic good as well. What the fuck? When did conservatives get so Tumblr witchy? Are they literally all Tumblr witches now? Is that the new meta? Is that the new change? Oh my God, are conservatives witches now? What's going on? Oh, that's right. Like I can heal people. But that, 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 but how do you feel about the idea? I hear you. The that idea. like, well, just if, if I said this thing and then my father got cancer and died and you could very easily see how the mind would say that I, you know, somehow I created that or oh, I yeah, put a I've curse on that. Yeah. And so on some level, like, what? In that framework, it's like you killed your father. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel if we stay in that framework? How do you feel about the fact that you killed your father? Be honest. Yeah, I don't feel guilt. You don't feel guilt. Maybe I don't know he if deserved. I feel good, maybe he deserved but... to die. Right. Maybe he needed to die so you could be safe. Or just that was his justice. That was his karma. Right. That was what you right. know. Maybe. You know, for me to. Wait, Colleen says, yes, some of the conservatives have become new age witches. I love that for this bubble. I love that so much. Yeah, this is all trauma, by the way, guys. I hate to like you want to know what people do in therapy. They go over this stuff and they actually start to tackle it. It's not just an interview for YouTube views. They actually start to tackle it. That's what good therapy will do. If you write, find the right therapist who can talk to you about trauma. She probably has CPTSD, something long term, something that happened consistently over time. You know what I mean? But like that's what therapy does. They don't just ask you how you're feeling about something. They literally get down to how it impacts you long term. 
you know, there's totally different kinds of therapy, medications, you know what I mean? So again, like this is what therapy does, but this isn't therapy. This is a YouTube interview from Views. This isn't where you go to actually tackle years and years and years of trauma. Raheem says, what did Blair wife's, Blair wife's Blair's father do to her for so much am, animosity? We don't actually know the specifics. She doesn't want to share, but let's just assume it was really bad. Expand into everything that I needed to be. His job was done, even if his job right. was to cause the trauma that did it, right? Like, Yes. See, Bryson says, I see what you guys mean now on the whole trying to make her cry. I swear he's trying to get her to react for the views. I swear. That was his path in life was to lay the framework for his child to become everything that I've become and I'm going to become. Do you miss him? Mm, no, no. Sometimes, you know, it's funny, like right after someone dies, I feel like people have a tendency to sort of like rewrite history and suddenly like they're a great person, even if they, they kind of weren't. Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, I fell into that, you know, right after he died for a couple of years sure. where I would hone in on, in my mind, like a few good memories. Cause yeah. there were a few good memories. Yeah. And I sort of use those very few things to sort of paint the entire picture of his presence in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was false, you know? Yeah. So yeah. now that I've gotten older, it's like, no, no. What would it be like to let your darkness like come out and be seen and expressed like here now? Like if I were to, what do you mean? Like, like feel like, like express. I mean, I, 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 first of all, I want to say like, I have n like no agenda. I don't want to put any yeah. pressure on you. You sure about that? Everything is just an invitation that yeah. either feels good or doesn't feel good. Yeah. You know, and I know it's complicated by the fact that we're doing this on camera. Yeah. I feel right? safe. I just yeah. don't understand the question necessarily. Yeah. I understand. Um, I, I talk a lot in abstractions, so, I do um, <laughs> uh, like we could create a space in here, right. Uh, and set up a scenario where you could express some of these darker feelings, um, maybe just towards me as sort of stand in towards your, as, as your father or any Anybody else? Uh uh. Nah, bitch. Boundaries. Blair, put down some boundaries. Don't let this white man pull. No. Nah. -uh. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Blair? <laughs> that you're angry at. And I guess the thing that if we go, this is the place that I'm really uh, want to support you in. And let me explain why. Um, going back to this bind where it's like you, you want connection. I heard that very clearly. I want to be more connected to people. And I heard very clearly, like, you know, one of my favorite sayings or is like, stay the fuck away from me. So that bind, I, I would imagine creates an energetic, uh, conflict within you that may actually be the cause of some of these panic attacks. Like there's an impulse for connection and the defense says, stay mm -hmm. down. Yeah. And it's like, these two go to war. And sometimes, it, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. this is why somatic therapy is annoying sometimes. I just think it's inappropriate to do it on camera. Like, I think it's inappropriate. Like, she's not your client. She's not paying for this session, probably. This is on camera. Like, why are we doing this? Like, why are we doing this? You know what I mean? Like, I get it for the views, for the views, for the views. But I do think it's like really weird. Like, I'm going to assume this, like, I can't tell, like, is this there? Like, is this his version of therapy? You know what I mean? I don't like it. You know, and so stuff true. starts to happen. And, you know, and so the way that I work is um, we give voice to the defense. So the defense has all this energy. The defense is very powerful. I mean, it feels really good, like, stay the fuck away from me, right? Because I'm safe. And it's like... And you can predict the outcome. Yeah, I can predict the outcome, right? And it feels great. And um, and it comes at a heavy cost because we're cut off from the connection that you're longing for. The problem is you've been so hurt in connection. 
you didn't get the connection you wanted and needed from your mother and from your father. Yeah. Like, you know, I understand your father was a bad man, as you said, but you were still a little boy. And I don't care who the fuck you are or who your father is, little boys want and love their daddy. Um, okay. Well, Blair's doing a great job. So true, Discord. Blair is doing a great job. She's handling this very well. I don't like this guy. He apparently is certified. He apparently is, like, taught by this, like, spiritual coaching program. He's apparently one of their people. He's, like, certified. He used to be an actor on Gilmore Girls. I don't love this. I... I know Blair is deadpan right now. I feel like she's like screaming in her head. I could be wrong. Um, let's see what happens. Sage says, I think that's how Blair refers to herself. It's not that. It's, I mean, I know Blair is going with it. And like she recognizes that her past self is also her future self. It's the fact that he brings it up every time and never navigates like other parts of her consciousness. And then the whole like daddy thing is just like not a vibe for me personally. I'm icking out because it's my ick. Maybe Blair likes it. Let's see if Blair likes it. Maybe maybe this speaks to Blair. But I don't like, I would not want to be talked to this way personally. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you didn't get that. And you had to cut yourself off, I would imagine, from that place inside you that wanted and loved his father. And I would imagine that that's fucking painful. Yeah, yeah. I, I struggled with, you know, even before I had the repressed memories come up about what he did and what he was, I would always feel like I was crazy for hating him. Because if you literally had the memories blocked out of what makes him that super bad person, because mm -hmm. it was like day and night. I mean, only I would have experienced the things mm -hmm. that made him the bad person. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would feel like, why do I feel this way? And I would feel like, a bad person myself, like all this hatred I have for him that I can't even pinpoint why. Now I can. Yeah. Um, but that was also born out of pain, obviously. That was yeah. me trying to figure out like why the energy between mm -hmm. us was like that. Mm -hmm. And it sucked, yeah. especially considering, you know, the way I grew up in school was like no allies there. And then you go home, no allies at home. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, how the fuck do I figure out yeah. safety yeah yeah uh Impa says and isn't he trying to get her to take her anger out on her yeah um as like the father figure yeah so like that's the part that i'm like is he trying to piss her off because he's pissing me off i don't know you big d said y'all are making this weird we're just like this is how we would feel if somebody used this technique on us that's all we're expressing is like i would not i don't feel this would not be i would be annoyed i'd be like hey you're pissing me off because like you're making it weird. Like, you're being weird, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I figured it out in, like, the craziest, most elaborate way, which still blows my mind. I mean, it's just crazy to think about, like, how different in every fathomable way my life is from back then. I figured out almost everything mm -hmm. other than a few character traits and brain problems mm -hmm. that I'm now unpacking. Mm -hmm. But, you know... I know I have abandonment issues for sure. Sure. That's a big one. And that's one of the patterns that I am working on fixing is, you know, I was born into abandonment issues. I have them. So I leave everyone. You leave everyone. I shut. Big D says if he said father instead of with that of daddy, would that be better? No. I feel like he's trying to piss her off. Like, I feel like he's trying to get a reaction of Blair and it's pissing me off. I don't think that's appropriate to ask a person you're interviewing. Like, again, 
I don't know what this is. As a viewer, I don't know what I'm watching. I personally do not watch a lot of people get very vulnerable on the internet because it's uncomfortable to me. You know, if it's real shit, if it's real shit, I don't put it on the internet, right? So like real shit, like, you know, sometimes you're desperate and you put real shit on the internet, but like, okay, is this like a session or is this an interviewer? Is he interviewing her? Then why is he asking her? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like he keeps saying like, you don't have to do it. But also, like, that's also appealing to Blair's desire not to be weak and so not to back down. So I kind of feel like he's doing it for views. It doesn't feel authentic or safe to me, but, like, that's just me. Everyone has an opinion. Like, I like Dr. K's work, but I don't really watch his interviews with a lot of people. I only watch his interviews with certain people because sometimes, like, I don't like the whole, like, I don't know. I don't like the way he did his old interviews, but his new stuff is really good. So um, it's not that he said daddy or whatever. It's like a combination of everything he's been for the last hour. I just don't love his interview presence. You know what I mean? Hannah says, I think it's supposed to be a therapy session, but it feels like manipulation. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it is like because Andrew Tate, it was supposed to be therapy. So maybe that's his shtick is that he does a session with them on stream, which I don't love or like in an interview. Yeah, Blair White gets vulnerable. It's like, OK, I don't I don't know. I don't love it. Yeah, I don't really love this video, but I don't love him. I love Blair. Blair's doing great. That everyone. Don't go. Yeah, I'm don't trying go. not to. Yeah. Ugh. Just. Into abandonment issues, I have them. So I leave everyone. You leave everyone? I shed everyone. Don't go. Yeah. I can't. This is not my vibe. I, 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 I don't know him as a consciousness, so I don't give a like. I'm not judging his consciousness, but like the person he presents as creeps me out. I'm getting the worst vibes. Like I genuinely could not work with this human. He makes my skin crawl, and that's no judgment of him, bro. Like, okay, I'm glad you're also getting that vibe because, like, I can't. Like, is it just us? Are we the problem? Like, he just gives me the weirdest fucking vibes. He makes me want to, like, hide. He makes me, like, so grossed out. Like, are you a predator, bro? No, I take that back. That's, I'm on my, I'm just kidding. I'm taking that back. But it feels like that. It feels like, mm, no, he feels entitled. I think I hate entitlement. He does feel a little entitled, I think. I don't know. I don't like it. Okay, I'm glad you all hate it as well. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm trying go. not to. Yeah. I'm really trying not to. Just feel that. Just feel that. Don't go. Stay. Just see what happens inside you. If you really stay present with me and you just feel that, what happens inside you, just say whatever happens inside you. I don't want you to go. Stay with me. Just it sounds feel. like begging to me, I'm which begging. is pretty fucked up. I know. Yeah. yeah. Why is his tone creepy? Why does it creep me out? Is it me? His question style is so attacking. Is that what it is? Like, what is it? Is it us? Are we the problem? Are we... <laughs> Somatic work is so awkward when it's a public forum. I'm so uncomfortable. Bro, I don't like this vibe. Kay, Kay says, I'd like to know how so many whys to be able to recontextualize this more positively. Well, I just want to know, like, like, yeah, what is it that, like, we hate about it? But, like, some people must like this. I mean, he, I think he seems like a ton of therapists. My therapist was not like this. My therapist was so grounded. She was so, like, real. <laughs> you know what I mean? This reminds me of Mr. Girl trying to be deep with someone. Yeah, that's it feels so performative to me. Ew, Sage says it gives me please don't do this to yourself, baby girl vibes. Same. I hate it. Maiden says he's inappropriately intimate with her and it comes off as not genuine. Ding, ding, ding. That's what it feels like. I don't like it. Yes, Roller Spice says he's making it sound like it's coming from him instead of an objective place. Yes, okay. Yes. I think that's what it is. It feels like he's it's about him and he's not like, you know what? Why is he playing a role? I think he wants to play like her father figure or something. I don't know. It just got too weird. CJ says, I see it more as too friendly, too early, like over familiar. I, yep. I see that too. Mm hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. I know. I just, I just want to be with you. See, what is he? What is he? Bro? What is he? Blair's like, do something, Blair. You don't have to do anything. And if you want to go, that's okay, but I want, you, I want you to stay. Just feel. I've just, like, heard that a lot, I guess. Mm. 
like a but what happens inside you? yes Kay says he feels like a caricature of a therapist versus a real person that's a therapist maybe i'm really so glad this was not my therapist experience like i'm so glad yeah what's the feeling just um, notice what what's the reaction immediately i look at them as a burden oh. and like they're weak which sucks i don't want to feel that way because there must be a part of you that wants to say that that wanted to say that when your mom oh, yeah. when your mom was a ghost and your dad was it's like you you like don't go yeah and I'm I, terrified of feeling that again I need you yeah I need you <laughs> I absolutely hate this how's that I love Blair I love her face her stoic face she's just like giving him nothing give him nothing Blair give him nothing. See, he's the enemy now. I've turned it on him. He's the bad guy. He's... <laughs> I have a... I feel like she's not trying to stop the interview, but I also feel like she's like... what? What's this? A lot of fear about ever reaching the point in any of my friendships or relationships where they become the person who abandons me. So I have a really bad problem with cutting them off. You know, like... I, You're going to cut them off before they cut you off? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like my body like expects it. Mm -hmm. So a really <laughs> interesting fact, and I, whenever I say this, I'm the only person that has this experience. Everyone kind of has the opposite at some point, is I've never been broken up with by anyone. Interesting. Always <laughs> Same. <laughs> he's broken up with everyone. Yeah. And I'm great at leaving, let me tell you. Everyone's always, I'm not trying to sound big myself up here, but they've like begged wow. for me to stay, like in a really, I, I view it as pathetic way. She probably is borderline, bro. Welcome. She probably is borderline. I'm going to be real with you. Relatable. But I know it's all trauma based. It's just because like when you're hyper independent and like me, you have, so this is me, hyper independent and I have borderline. I don't fucking need you, bro. I don't need anything. I don't need your money. I don't need your house. I don't need anything from you, bro. Get the fuck out of my life if you're going to make my life harder. If you're going to make my life harder, get the fuck out. And, like, that's the problem is, like, when you're already in pain and you've already survived for so long and on top of it, somebody is, like, in your life and making it worse, get the fuck out. Like, at the same time, though, that's a really hard person to be with. That's why therapy helps because you realize, like, okay, you can't, like, just knock people out. You got to also stop dating people. And everyone I've ever dated, they had to, like, pursue me pretty hard for me to say yes um because i was like i don't feel like we're compatible and then i did it anyways girl Oof, my 20s were rough so yeah she probably just has like a borderline issue she has abandonment issues she already said it girl go get assessed for dbt go get assessed by a therapist right but for borderline i mean go to dbt but i don't i don't want to feel that way you know and i'm not saying i was supposed to stay with those people because they weren't right for you me you want to feel what way i don't want to look at it when someone is coming to me for connection and have some sort of sense or feeling that it's weak or pathetic. Or well, I guess you, you probably judge it in them or, or see it as pathetic. Well, if they're like worshiping you, if they're putting you on a pedestal, if they're like making it sound like it's not even about you, uh, like, you know, one thing I don't like in people is when they treat me like they are in awe of me. I'm like so annoyed. I'm like, why are you doing that? Again, I don't want to feel special. I want to be, I want to be seen for exactly what I am. So when people are like, um, they act like, uh, like getting my attention is like, oh, when people seek my validation, I'm so turned off. Do not seek my validation. See, trust yourself. Seek my advice. I'll give you advice. You give me advice. Don't seek my validation. Don't do that. I, I don't like that in people. And so I wonder if it's that with Blair, maybe something similar where it's like, because it does feel like weird, like. It also turns into like mommying. I notice the people that seek a lot of validation also want you to like do a lot of emotional labor for them. And I don't want to do it. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Raheem says, so you prefer to be put in your place than a pedestal? No, not put in my place. I have already put myself in a place. I want to be seen for who I am, but I don't pedestal anyone. I don't, pedest I don't think anyone should be pedestaled. Not mentors, not politicians, not kings, not queens. If I met somebody who's like a politician is like, hey, what's up, bro? I would treat you exactly the same way as anybody else. Nobody should be pedestaled. Everyone should be treated like a person. But we don't treat people like a person. So no, I don't want to be put in my place. Okay. 
I'm already in my place. I put myself there. No pedestals, you know? You know? Pathetic and weak because maybe you see that part of you as pathetic and weak. Yeah. That your, your need, your, your desire for connection, like, makes you weak and pathetic. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is something that I always feel insecure about expressing. What? Uh, that desire for to be liked, to be loved, to be stayed with. Like, you know, I've been told by every boyfriend that I'm very cold. Oh. Like. Mm, borderline. I'm going to call it now, sis. Go get some, uh, go get an assessment for borderline. Yep. Mm-hmm. I recommend it. Not in every way. Like I, you know, communicate love in a lot of other ways that are sometimes yeah. disproportionate. So uh -huh. I, have, I have difficulty gauging what's a proportionate way to show love versus not. And Interesting. So do you uh, want to move beyond that? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's one of the patterns I haven't broken yet. Okay. Well, I, I mean, just feel, uh, Blair, like we can do something. No. Like to, to sort of. Ew, why is this on camera, bro? She should get assessed for borderline though. Go so it'll, it'll take you somewhere, and and uh, it's a risk, and you don't know what's going to happen. But the intention is to um, make more conscious some of these feelings and get them out of the head, out of the abstraction. Like you understand. I mean, you're very smart. You understand these things, but there's a difference between understanding it cognitively and actually having the embodied experience of letting these feelings come through us. It changes something. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I wonder if you. Is this guy a therapist? Leo, great question. He's like a spiritual therapist. I don't think he's certified. He says he's like licensed by like core energetics. But I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know if that's like. Is that like a accredited? Is that like a licensing board? I don't know how it works. Is he a license? Like, is he a therapist? Like Dr. Kirkonda is a therapist or Dr. K is a therapist? I don't think so. I think he's a spiritual therapist. Um, from my understanding, but I don't know. You want to try something just to see what happens. Sure. Would it be like the physical activity yeah. or, okay. Yeah. What does it entail? <laughs> What's I the data it. on this first? Well, well, so. I just <laughs> don't want to like, I don't want to like embarrass myself either, you know? Well, let me, let me say a couple of things. Okay. I'm not going to let you embarrass yourself. Okay. Right. Fire. And if there's something that happens that you don't like, like I'm not like you can say no to that. Yeah. Right. Like my intention here is just to, um, help you reclaim parts of yourself that got lost, Okay. you know, and whether we were, the cameras are rolling or not, this is a fucking risk. <clears throat> I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. You leave Blair alone, bro. This is so annoying. I hate watching this shit. Why are you risking? Oh, okay. <laughs> Cosplaying a therapist, bro. Blair needs so much love and support in real, real therapy. And I'm so annoyed she's not getting it. I'm so annoyed she's not getting it. I'm so annoyed. I hope this doesn't make her not seek out real therapy. That's what's so annoying about these alternative therapy bullshit spiritual stuff. No offense. Is like, okay, I love that for you guys. But she has like classic trauma symptoms. She needs classic therapy. You know what I mean? Oh, Colleen says Blair has a video coming out about this in 30 minutes. The title is clickbait. Stop. It's scary. It's scary as fuck to get up and hit that. I'm going to ask you to hit that block. Like come down and hit the block and say all of these things that you hold back. But to really feel this place where it's like, stay the fuck away from me. Like I or I will fucking kill you. Like I hate you, Dad. Like stay the fuck away and really feel so that you can feel how strong that is. And the reason why we do this is because if we allow that defense to come all the way through, that energy, we allow it to express it, 
Right? Well, you can imagine what happens. Here's the defense, right? It's holding down, it's holding down. But when we express it and it come out and we surrender to it, let it go, it creates space for the feelings underneath to come through, right? That place where we actually are longing for connection. And so I'm not gonna lie to you, like it, it you know, it, it may not happen today, but it'll, hap it'll happen eventually if you keep allowing the, it's yourself to express that defense. And there's part of it that's dark, there's part of it that's mean, there's part of it that's cruel. How could it not be? Yeah. Right? Of course, of course. It's like, stay the fuck away from me or else, or else what? Or I'll fucking kill you. That's what. That's in all of us, right? But underneath that is this deep longing for, for, for love and connection, which is who you are. This place where you're cold, you're not cold. That's just your defense. Yeah. That's just your defense. Yeah. And I bet everybody who in is in relation with you, they know that. And they're trying to get to your heart and you won't let them. And I understand why. And I know this inside me. I got a dragon over my heart. I say it to my girl all the time. My dragon heart's out. Like, just give me a minute, you know, because I got so fucking annihilated. And so sometimes it takes me a minute to like <sighs> let people in. Yeah, that's what it is, Yaya. When I start to get deep, too deep into things like this, and I really don't want to, my therapist would never push it. He's just pushing and pushing. I can't. That's the only thing is like, I don't think you can work these things out by rushing them. I think it takes time and your body has to get into it and you have to move through it, you know. And yeah, maybe she needs to hit something. Maybe she needs meditation. Like maybe she needs less violence in her life. Maybe she needs, like she could need a lot of things, but I feel like to get to know, like, I don't know if they did sessions before this. I don't know if he really knows her. I don't know if this is their first time talking. There's so many things that I don't know. But yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of how he does his practice. Like, if this was a therapist I was working with, I probably wouldn't have stayed the whole session. Or I maybe would have stayed, but then, like, bailed. I don't know. I also, to be fair, I don't know how working with men is helpful. If her trauma was from a man, she might need to go to a woman for a therapy. So I'm not sure. You know, and I'm again, he's like a spiritual therapist. So from my understanding, he's not like licensed by a, like a traditional therapist would. He's got a license. He's certified, but he's certified from a different kind of organization. I don't know. I'm, I don't want to misspeak or like ruin his credentials, but it's not from my understanding. He's not like a therapist like Dr. K is a therapist. Right. So I'm like, I'm not the biggest fan. I know these tools can work for other people. So I don't mean to diminish that. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I feel like she needs traditional therapy. I th feel like she needs like some DBT, some CBT, just like, you know, you know, I hope this doesn't dissuade her from getting real therapy. Yeah, so I know this place. That can't be the real me because it's twofold. People also say that like, you know, I'm the most loving person they've ever met. And people also... You know, one of the really weird things is like, and this has happened like a freakish amount of times lately, and I'm down to do the exercise by the way, but um, people lately have been coming up to me like friends and in social settings and just dumping their trauma on me. Like uh -huh, literally coming out that they have been victims of certain things or like things that you don't tell someone on the first time meeting them. I think I've had like four or five people in the past few weeks do it like really dark, deep stuff that I'm like, we just met. And I, I've i been questioning like, do I just like look like I'm fucked up or something? Or do I look like I would understand or like? No, I think it's like you look like you can handle it. Cause people do that to me all the time. Like strangers at grocery stores will do it. And I'm like, what's happening? And I realize I think I just look like someone that they can talk to. And maybe that's like some spiritual bubble will say like, oh, that's like the something, something, something. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I think it's like when you look like you can handle shit, people want to give you shit to handle. Is it the objectifying thing they thought talking to a wall or something? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I would like to think, and maybe it comes from a place of ego and not reality, is that what they actually see is someone who's like survived fucked up things? Yeah. I would hope that that's the energy they yeah. see and that's what makes them feel like, yeah. let me figure out how to do that. Yeah. But, I've seen you change. I mean, since I, I don't know when I discovered you, probably five or six years ago. and. Um, and as I've followed you, I've seen, I've seen you change. I've seen you soften. I've seen you, you know, grow. Mm -hmm. And so something, yeah, something's happening for yeah. you. You know, you're, you're more available. And I think you want to be even more mm. available. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the problem, right? Here's the bind. 
Like to get to the other side, you have to give something up. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You have to give something up. And that thing that you have to give up is the thing that kept you safe your entire life. And, and, and what we have to understand, and the mind, the mind won't go there, right? You can't, you can't like rationalize your way through this. You don't need that anymore. You can keep yourself safe in other ways. You're not a little boy with a scary daddy and an absent mom. Like you're an adult and you can actually like keep yourself safe in different ways. Now you don't know yeah. how to do that yet. You're gonna have to learn how to do that but there's no way to get where you're going without giving up that thing. And it doesn't happen in a day, you know? I mean, and it's not that the defense goes away forever. Like it's always there, but we're not free. Otherwise we're trapped in, in some old paradigm that we don't even understand. We're really being run and ruled by the things that happened to us when we were, when we were young. And so really what we're fighting for in this moment is freedom. And you're so right. Like what you said about like, the trajectory you've observed that I become more available, mm -hmm. that is what I want. Like that's been like, I feel like my ultimate destiny is to be the most available for people. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of my like public presence in the world, like I want to heal everything I'm interested in fixing. I want to fix everything. I want to be there for everyone, which is also that weird dichotomy that like stay away from me, but I want to be there for all of you. So you're right, it is a block and it's the only, not the only, but it's one of the only things I still have to really shed yeah. to keep fucking going. You're so right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got it. We've got, that's, yeah, <laughs> like we can the end right there. One we can the end things. right there, right? So we've got the interview. So just know that, right? Oh, like okay. we've got a great interview that's I think your fans are gonna love and it. it you know, okay, so it was an interview. Super weird interview, bro. Really weird interview. We opened up and we could take it to the next level and we can choose to use that or not. You I'm know, whatever. To try and let's film it. And yeah, let's film it and see what happens. Because that's but also we, me being available for them, is, is seeing whatever yeah, happens from that. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanna you wanna say before we do that? Is there anything you need? No. Just well, I guess overall there's a lot of things I need, but in this moment. <laughs> Um, I'm just thankful we even talked about this because it will all of the things we talked about because, you know, one of the, okay, wait, first of all, Raheem says he's a good therapist. I don't even know if he is a therapist. You guys are kind of super wrong, but I forgive you all for your mistake. He might not be a therapist. Like, that's what I'm saying. I don't think he's legally a therapist. Like, but no matter how you have a relationship with people, this might be a tool for you. It would absolutely not be a tool for me. Like, I do not like his presence at all. But he might be good for some people. So we're not saying he's bad for all people. But that's the thing is like, is this a vibe for you? It would absolutely not be a vibe for me. But also, I do not think he's a real therapist. I think he is a, like, I'm not sure. I'm very confused on his credentials. I tried to read up on it. I tried to understand it. But all of it is like a special school that was created. But it, like, I don't know that any of it is like traditional therapy. So I'm not even sure if he's allowed to call himself a therapist. I'm not sure if that's legally allowed. I don't know. I don't know like the rules around his practice. I don't get it. One of the issues I have with being in, you know, politics and doing political commentary is that the conversations are never super deep. Mm -hmm. Like it's always like an assessment of shallow issues and never anything behind it. And uh, that's why I was so ready to do this because I was like a deep conversation please like please so I'm just glad we did it and I hope people learn from it um and this is probably a good self-defense mechanism but just putting it out there it's like none of this was like a woe is me it's all it's all about empowerment for me of course it's just growing and expanding and you see she's doing the thing which is totally fair like she doesn't want to be vulnerable but that's the problem in order to heal you have to be vulnerable and then it can be empowering you have to be you have to strip all your like defenses away, become the least empowered and then become the most empowered. And that's the problem with introspection and healing. But like, okay, you know what I mean? Using that fucked up shit. Yeah. I, I really, well, one, I appreciate you doing this. I think it's incredibly courageous and vulnerable to sit and, and, uh, and to answer these questions and, and be willing to go there and, um, I don't know. It's like it's it, it, to me. It's just another testament 
uh, of your courage. I mean, you're a courageous person and uh, you just keep demonstrating it over and over again. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for, for facilitating it. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's, let's play. Okay. I really, I hate everything about his, let's play. I hate everything about his language. I don't know what it is. Like everything about him, like, no. Like I'm, nah. God, my therapist was so good. I had a real therapist. She was amazing. She was so good. She was just like the best. Oh, she was so good. <laughs> do you want to? You don't have to. No, I do. Yeah, I do. We'll have the experience. We'll film it and then we'll see. Yeah. Blair is so high femme, bro. That's what I'm saying. What kind of girl has a brush with her? Blair. She's like so high femme. I could never be this feminine, but I love that for her. She's so pretty. I love that. How they fit okay? Mm, perfect. Just because when, when you hit, um, you can get blisters. And so I'll, I'll just oh. show you. Um, okay. You just kind of bring your feet together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you just hit samurai style, like right over your head, and then just come down. Oh, shit. Right? Okay. And um, the intention of it is, is really just to help us express held back energy, emotions. Right? It doesn't have to look a particular kind of way. And what happens is when we start hitting, right, and we hold a lot of energy, you know, in here, especially like anger back here. Yeah, I'm all right here, my child. Right, and so this will kind of start to release it, and then feelings will come up. The 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 thing to remember is just try to keep yourself as grounded as you can. Okay. And well, we'll we'll do it a couple a couple rounds just so you can get the feel for it. Okay. But the first time, just just hit, and you want to let out some sound. That's the important part of it because okay. it's you can see the difference between like like I'm holding through here and uh, when I make a sound more energy comes through. Okay. And it's I understand it's really vulnerable. It, it definitely is. <laughs> but that's what we're here for. Yeah, so. just see what happens. Just okay. see what happens. Okay. If yeah, just try it out. You'll get the feel for it. Okay. Should I be thinking of anything specific when I do this? Well, or? I think the thing to do, well, I'll help you, um, but like first just hit and just see what it feels like and okay. let out a sound. And, and if things start to come up, just notice, just notice what comes up. Okay. If anything. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm already feeling something. What are you I'm not feeling? Kidding. It just feels really good. Oh, good. Let it feel good. The way he's leaving her his hands there, give her room. There's something else there too. I don't know. It just feels good. But um, okay. Whatever let you can let whatever, whatever is inside of you come out. Don't judge it. Don't worry about what it means. It's if it's there, it's there for a reason. And it wants to be expressed. Just trust that. Okay. Ah! <laughs> I'm just trying to make any noise. Starting with any noise, I guess. Yeah, just let out a sound. Don't stop. Just keep hitting. Uh huh. Okay. What yeah. happens when you stop? I'm just trying to um, control it. Really, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't control Actually. it. This though, it, here's, and I get it. We want to control. Yeah, it's just like it that it's on camera. I don't like. Okay, when we're talking about real trauma, here, let me get really serious. When we're talking about real trauma, when we're actually talking about trauma, I am fine having a discussion about it, but anything that's made to heal or tackle the trauma, I think should be done in private. Truthfully, this is like her first session or her first conversation, and he took her right to physical like play, as he says. It just feels very inappropriate and a very dismissive of like what if he triggers her and then she still has to go home is he aware that this could trigger her he even said it could fuck you up so like he's aware it could trigger her so now he's aware like he's putting her in this vulnerable situation does he have a uh, 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 like plan b's for this and i'm not saying it has to be perfect i just feel like if he's coming from a place of authority you know what i mean like why isn't he organizing this a little bit better so like okay no judgment i love blair she's doing great but like i don't love there's just so many things that I feel like could go wrong. And we still have 20 minutes, guys. 
on the timer, about 15 minutes on the timer left. So I kind of feel like, is this impromptu? Was she even warned this is a possibility? Did he plan for it? What about like, you know, sometimes you need aftercare after therapy, not in a BDSM sense, but in like, um, you know, like you need, you know, a lot of reassurance after therapy. Is he going to trigger something in her? And like, you know what I mean? Like, is there just like, I just feel like there's a lot I'm confused about as an audience member. Like what's happening? You know what I mean? Control, right? And part of what the reason we do this is to let ourselves go out of control. Right, because it's only when we let ourselves go out of control that those feelings can come through. All these feelings that we're controlling our entire life, right? And so, of course, it's scary. It's scary as hell to do this. I remember the first time someone presented this to me. I said, no fucking way I'm doing this. And they said, why not? I said, because I don't know what the hell's going to come out of me. And he said, yeah, but that's the point. Fuck, I guess that's why it is scary, right? Okay. Um... <clears throat> Also, my therapy was DBT, so it was very, like, thinking and, and, and talking. It wasn't obviously – I never did anything like this in my therapy. Um, I didn't have to. My hobby was BDSM, so. Do you want me to give you some words to help? He did say he's known her for five years. I thought he said he's been watching her for five years. I thought he said they he'd been watching her for five years. Did he say they knew each other for five years? They could have a, a relationship, but I heard he watched her for five years. Oh, yeah. Look at all these people out there that, that, that want something from you, that don't see you, you know, whatever. And just say, stay the fuck away from me. Just feel I that. Can say that. Okay, but like she, see, this is my only issue is like, I think you should learn the lesson that you're allowed to be private. So this is my bias. I think people don't owe, like, you don't owe people shit. You don't owe people your vulnerabilities, especially strangers on the fucking internet. And he's, like, forcing her to give them to strangers. Like, right now, we are forcing Blair to give her vulnerabilities to strangers who don't even see her. And that's why it feels inappropriate. Like, she's not obligated to give her vulnerabilities, in my opinion, to the public. Like, I'm not obligated to give you guys shit, okay? Like, I like boundaries. I'm open with boundaries. I'm happy to share some vulnerabilities. But realistically, like, you don't know me. It's inappropriate. Like, I love you all so much. But at the same time, like, I don't know you. And so it feels very weird. And then to ask somebody like Blair to be like, hey, give this audience that doesn't care about you, like, your feelings feels so weird. Like, why are we, why are we giving the same audience that bullied her vulnerabilities? It's like, what are we, what are we doing here? What's going on? I feel like the lesson she should learn is that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's also okay to pick and choose who you're vulnerable, vulnerable with. And it absolutely does not have to be on the internet. That just, one. yeah, just, just, and just like really that. see them. Stay the fuck away. Leave me alone. Stay the fuck away from me. Yeah. But like, we can't stay the fuck away from you. You're putting your vulnerabilities on the internet. See, now he's like making her content for her haters. I don't like it. Good. Keep going. Don't fucking touch me. Mm hmm. Yeah, that one felt really good. Keep going, though. Like, really? Like, stay the fuck away from me. Like, don't stop. Stay the fuck away from me. <sighs> Keep going. Keep trying. I'm trying to, I'm trying to control it. You're trying to like... control it. Yeah, like, it's okay. Okay. You're doing great. Okay. <clears throat> you want to give me more keywords? <laughs> just stay with that. Okay. Or just no. Fuck off. Fuck you. No. No, no, no. Keep going. Absolutely fucking not. Get the fuck away from me. Don't fucking touch me. You don't know fucking shit about me. Fuck you. Fuck you. <sighs> Good. Yeah, it just it goes on autopilot. Yeah. It well, starts but, autopilot. But no, yes, and feelings are there. I can see your body yeah. shaking a little bit, like yeah. something wants to come through. Yeah. It's just scary. Yeah. Just look at me for a sec. <laughs> I'm going to get triggered. I'm not literally going to get triggered. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Just, just be here. Because you go away. Mm -hmm. Right? So see what it's like to just like hit 
how, how do you feel with me? Do you feel safe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just hit and look at me and just say, like, stay the fuck away from me. Like, look right at me. Just let me be the stand-in for everybody. And but do it right to me. See how that feels. Stay the fuck away from me. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. Blair is doing great. You're doing great, Blair. Stronger. Fuck you. Yeah. Fucker. Fuck you. Hope you fucking die, fucker. Yeah. I feel that. Ugh. Just breathe. Mm. Who are you talking to? Who is that? Hi, Dad. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hope you yeah. die, fucker. Yeah. Why? Because you didn't give a fuck if I died or what the fuck happened to me. Yeah. It was about what the fuck you had going on. Yeah. I was a fucking wall. You were a wall? You and your whole fucking family, all of them actually. The whole dad side of my fucking family. It's always the dad side, bro. It's always the dad side. Keyword dad. That's a weird word to use for you, you fucking piece of fucking shit. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, keep going. Just <sighs> fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and let yourself go out of control. Really props to her for trying. So true. She's really trying. I love that. I don't like him, but I like Blair, and I, oh God, it's so private. Oh, okay. And see what happens. Okay. Just fuck mm. you. Okay. Also, yeah, wait, Discord says the therapist should only ever have an objective role. I don't know what the rules are, but like I never use my therapist as a replacement. Again, he's not a therapist. He's a spiritual guide or something. So I don't really know. Like I'm confused about his credentials. I'm so confused. But I don't know like what he's been trained in. I don't know if this is a real session. I don't know what is happening right now. I think that's why we're all so confused. And again, like traditional therapy is very different. But I don't know in traditional therapy, are you allowed to like do you ever use your therapist as a replacement for people you don't like? Because I never did that. Like my therapist is a safe space. I don't want her to represent anything but the positivity of us working on stuff together. So I guess I'm, to be real, a little bit scared of like, even my body language all closed off. I'm like scared of like, if I go too far with it, that maybe I'll say things that are just like super private that I'm not ready to necessarily say. I understand. Good job, Blair. Good job. Good boundary setting. Okay. Good. I was worried about that too. Like, what if she said, because she didn't want to share her trauma? What if she accidentally said it? That's what I'm saying. This is so inappropriate. Okay, good, 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 good. I love this. Okay, I love this. Oh, CJ says in ISTPD, uh, DP, ther the therapist becomes a transference figure. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so there are types of therapy where this is kind of common. And again, I don't know that she's he's a therapist, but. Okay, good job, Blair. Or, I was so afraid Blair was going to, like, say something she didn't mean to. So, okay, I'm glad that she said something. I understand. But, well, I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, here's, here's what I'll. He interrupts her so much, which is fine. Maybe it protects her from talking. But he does interrupt her a lot, which makes me think he doesn't see her. And it makes me happy because then she can shut down again and not be vulnerable with him. Is that wrong? Like, I'm almost glad he talks over her because she shuts down every time he does. And this allows her not to be vulnerable with him because I don't like him. I'll, I'll, I hear that and I get that. Um, the story doesn't matter. Oh, wow. Right? Like, and I understand you can have an impulse to, to bring up elements of the story or say mm -hmm. certain things. Mm -hmm. It's really just the energy, which you've just done, which is fuck you, I hate you, fucking die. Yeah. Right? Like, and it's just letting yourself have those feelings all the way. Mm. And, yeah. and, and seeing what might be there underneath it. I'm feeling more than usual right now. Yeah. It's like actually pretty crazy, but. What I'm, are you I'm, feeling? Um, it, it definitely feels like a release, but like also like my body feels really like angry. Okay. You know, which I guess is the goal of it um mm. and it feels good to feel it it does feel good to feel it you scared 
A little bit, a little bit. What do you need in this place that you're scared? What do you need? Mm. I guess I need some form of justice, mm. like mm -hmm. for like everything that's happened. No, I know I need that. But I also know there's no way to do that because well, he's dead. This is where philosophy comes in. Yeah. Okay. But let let me. You want to try something? Yeah. Just let just let me let me have it. Okay. And just stand behind me. Okay. okay? Like right here. All right. And just feel like I because I've said this you know early on. I feel this like protective energy toward you. Leave and you probably needed protection. And you probably need. Does he reference her as a woman at a, at any point during this interview? Does he reference her as a female at any point or a woman at any point in this interview? Protection now. I'm, I just, the response I want to have to that is I know it's not the correct one. It's just like, I can do that, but I shouldn't have to always. You do shouldn't that. have to always do it. You know, no, you shouldn't have had to do that. Your dad should have been there to. Oh, he's going to fucking trigger me, bro. I don't like him. Fucking protect you. That's his fucking job. And so just feel what it feels like. Stay the fuck away from her. Stay the fuck away. Stay the fuck away. How's that feel? You're protected. I'll protect you. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Cause it also mirrors like my shit now, which is like, stay the fuck away from me, but also like, why aren't you here for me type of Aww. shit, you know? Cause like, that's, if a dad is not being a dad, that's what you're gonna feel. It's like, yeah. get the fuck away from me, you fucking asshole. But also like, can you just fucking do what you're supposed to do? Yeah, you needed so, him. You yeah. needed him. Yeah, for sure. You needed him. For sure. You need He's like, I'm an actor. I was on Gilmore Girls. He's like, I'm an actor. So. He's like, I'm an actor. He was an actor on Gilmore Girls before this. So now he's a coach, but he used to be an actor. Good for Blair. I want to. I don't want to protect Blair. I believe in her ability to protect herself. If I'm being honest with you, <laughs> I don't think Blair needs other people to protect her. Like I think people should have protected Blair when she was a kid, but like she can protect herself now. I'm sorry. Like. <laughs> But obviously, like, I don't like this guy. Needed him to show up like this for you. Yeah, like yeah. ever. Ever. He never did. Yeah, like, I wish, you know. I mean, that's the fucked up thing, is I guess in some ways he was, like, you know. But that's that good and evil in everyone, Yeah. I guess. But sometimes the evil is, like, just a little too... <laughs> camps and this is why people don't believe in therapy bro who knows i don't know maybe it works for some people you know just over the top i guess yeah yeah well can i can i take your gloves off for a second? whoa whoa oh my god i heard oh my god my bad i heard can i take your clothes off but he said can i take your gloves off and i was like whoa oh my god Oh my god. Oh fuck. Okay. Yeah. Oh. You're doing great. You gonna touch her? And just see what it, is it okay if I hold your hand? Mm -hmm. And just 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 feel this. Um if she's autistic, she probably doesn't want to be touched. So could you like not touch her? Thank you. Because I'm you know, I'm 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 a pretty strong, tough guy. I can handle myself. Just feel what it's like. I got you. I'm not gonna let anyone hurt you. You're safe. I got you. Why is that making me cry? <laughs> I don't know why that would make me cry. That's pretty fucked up. It's like a oh, poor Blair. I love her. Look at her being all vulnerable. I hate him, but I love her. Good thing to hear. Well, maybe that's what you needed as a little girl. <laughs> little boy. Yeah.
Oh, he he's a little girl, the little boy. She need it. Yeah. Yeah. You trust him? <laughs> Maiden says, I think this kind of therapy can be very effective, but it's important that it takes place with someone with a foundation of trust. Well, yeah, obviously. So like real therapy with a structure and an understanding, I'm all about. You know, Charles says bro is the main character. That It feels like he's making it about him. That's why I hate it. It feels like he's making it about him, and that's why I'm annoyed. Like, that's why I feel like he is making it about him, and I'm pissed about it. Kay says, man is so textbook. Does this guy just run the same script with every person he sees rather than bouncing off their energy? Or are we projecting our dislike for this approach? It's I don't even think it's the approach. It's probably that it's on the internet. Because I know therapists that do like um, like boxing or they incorporate something physical. I know therapists that like um, kind of role play, but not really like they don't. I don't know that they like you direct it at them, but they direct it at like a wall. Or like I was allowed to express my feelings in the therapy office, but I wasn't at my therapist. So I guess some forms of therapy you could do it with a therapist. So I think it's just his energy I don't like. But is it because we're neurodivergent? Is it because we're all like pretty like queer or feministy? I don't want to say we're feministy, but you know what I'm saying. Like he's obviously more right winged. Is it the fact that he's more conservative? Is it the fact that like, you know what I mean? <clears throat> you can be mad at me. Blair's video is about to get posted. Okay, <clears throat> we'll we'll go to it. This has five more minutes. I'm not. <laughs> you can push me away. You can go crazy. I'm still going to be here. See, and then what is this empty promises? Like, what is this? I don't get it. Like, I don't like the promises. Like, I'm still going to be here. I'm going to protect you. I'm sorry. Who are you? Are you making empty promises? Like, that's great for someone with abandonment. I'm confused. What is this? <sighs> it's okay. Mm -mm. It's like really wild that that's causing this reaction in me. <laughs> You know, really says something. What does it say to you? That like, there's a lot of damage that clearly has been done. That I, when I hear that, it doesn't sound something like something familiar. Yeah. You know. And okay, we're not talking about the type of therapy, right? Like Brock says, I'm autistic, queer, and feministy, but I do find value in this type of therapy. We're not upset at the type of therapy. We're upset at him. It's not the therapy because real therapists do this in a variation of ways it's him i'm talking about him i don't like him and i don't like it being on the internet because it's not the type of therapy i don't like that it's on the internet i don't like that she's being vulnerable for all of us to see for the first time in her life she's never had this for the first time in her life she's experiencing her relationship and then here we go it's on the internet like what the fuck is that you know maiden says this is so exploitative that's what it is it feels exploitative like I feel like this should be in a therapy office. The first time this girl has ever faced like her trauma and it's on the internet. So annoying. And even if it did, I never believed it where it would come from. Right. You know? So someone, you know, providing me safety has never like ever been a thing for me. Yeah. You know, not it, with money, not with physical safety, not with emotional safety. No, it's just, it's just not a thing. Yeah. Never has been. Yeah, but you wanted it, you longed for it. How could you not? For someone to protect you. Yeah. Someone to take care of you, someone to be there for you. So you don't have to carry the burden, the weight of all of it. Yeah. It's too much. It's too much. It's way too fucking it's much. It's way too much fucking much. You said like I kinda had to take care of my family. That's wrong. Mm-hmm. Right? They they're there to take care of you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to do it all your, all yourself. And you don't have to be, hear me. You don't have to be on your own. You don't have to be alone all the time. It doesn't have to be that way. But the risk for you is you're going to have to let people in. And I understand why you wouldn't. I get it, right? And you can go as slow as you need to go, right? but there's a longing there for that. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful part of you. And I no, Yippie says I'm impressed she's going along with it. No, he fed right into her I'm not a pussy personality. She said I'm not here to get what was me points. Like I'm strong. It's playing right into her inability to like put boundaries on herself. You know what I mean? Like that's the problem. 
It's like, I feel like people like Blair, she will force herself to be in situations where she's like, I'm not like, I won't pussy out of this, but also like, is it real vulnerability? And like to an extent it always is, but she doesn't like have the safety to completely break down either. So it's still like a performative vulnerability. So who knows? Maybe this is like the step she needs to get to real vulnerability. This is like a version of it. This is obviously a step towards it. I'm really proud of her. She did really good. But for him to like put this on the internet and I guess she's objectifying herself and putting herself out there. But that's the problem. I think because like he's not a real therapist, maybe that would play a role. I think that's the problem. Some people did have a Dr. K's work, which to be fair, I don't watch Dr. K's older, older stuff. I think his stuff now is really, really good. But I actually don't watch his older stuff where he like makes people be vulnerable with him on the internet. Because I think as a therapist, like I do think that's like a little inappropriate, but I think it's okay for content creators to make that decision. And when you're both, it's a little confusing. Um, so on that front, I do understand, but that's like a personal, that's like my personal take is like, I'd rather talk to a therapist, like not as a therapy session with like no, none of the vulnerability on the internet. Um, but I, that's my personal opinion. You know what I mean? But okay. Sage says she wants to be, she said she wants to be as available as possible. Yeah. I think that's a cope. So she can do it. She can absolutely do it. I'm like really rooting for her to make her own decisions. She's a grown up. But I do think it's a cope. I think it's a cope um, because, again, I again, you have a broken leg and you're doing everything but going to the doctor to fix it. So like, I want to be available to everyone. Cool. You should probably – that's like saying I want to run the marathon without getting my leg checked out. She's not going to get her leg checked out by doing a collaboration with a faux therapist on the internet. Like you have to go to somebody who can mend your leg and then you can run a marathon. So if she wants to be the most available for people, she also needs to learn how to be the most available to herself. She hasn't even learned how to do that for herself and she wants to do that for other people. Like, so, you know, it is what like, if you look at it kind of like on the bigger scale, it's like I did achieve it in some ways. It's like I became someone who was connected to no one to connected to millions of people all over the world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is like, so crazy but i somehow managed to like recreate that you know kind of superficial connection that i felt like i had superficial connection mm -hmm. and she's going to continue that superficial connection until she gets the right kind of therapy and a, a, a relationship with her consciousness philosophy as a kid with people you know yeah. that it's through a screen which is still beautiful in its own way but it still lacks that like need for me to be vulnerable and actually yep. let someone in and talk. Yeah. And that's simply what was my big pet peeve with YouTubers? What was my issue with the bridge burning? I was their close friend. I could be trusted. It wasn't two sided. It was parasocial. I would trust Brittany with my bank account. I really trust. Cool. Why isn't anyone asking me how I feel? Because the relationship isn't symbiotic. YouTubers do it to each other. Adults do it to each other. Parasocial people on the internet do it to each other. I feel this way about Britney. Well, nobody ever asked me how I felt about it. And everyone kept projecting onto me. Well, they feel close to you, so you should feel close to them. I don't feel close to them. Why do you keep saying that? Because that's what people perceive as a vulnerability and intimacy. When it's not, it's performative. If there's a camera, it's performative. This is somewhat performative, whether we like it or not. We can't erase the fact that we know a camera is there and neither can Blair or this fake therapist. Cam, welcome to memberships. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Sorry I didn't like go fully with the... You nope, did. you're a good girl. It was, you were never meant to go fully on the internet in front of everybody. Great. Okay. You did I just, amazing. Yeah. A it's scary. a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. <clears throat> is there... Um, anything from this place that you, I don't know, you want to claim or you want to say or like a, just a statement that you want to make, like, I don't know, in response to all of this? Yeah, you know, I think that it's really important for me to work on developing a healthier gauge of who actually deserves openness for me and who does yeah. deserve to stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> Because right. it's some people do, but not everyone does. Not everyone. And, you know, abandoning people or leaving people or shutting down before they give me any reason to think that they would hurt me 
that's wrong on my part and I don't want to be that person at all. You want to, what kind, what's the kind of person you want to be? I want to be the kind of person that is super present, mm -hmm. that is available to everyone, mm -hmm. like not just friends and family, but you know, to my audience and to anyone who's taking in any of me from wherever they're taking it in, you know, just to feel that the what they're ingesting is like more real and more present and more for them, more human, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. This is this was <laughs> actually so important for me. Yeah. Like it really was. It's amazing. Maybe I should take up boxing or something. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I need to we, have, we have boxing gloves. We sometimes. Maybe next time, yeah. but I think I might take a boxing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to get it out. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing we didn't talk about. I used to get in a lot of fights growing up too. Oh really? I, yeah, yeah. So like, I feel like when I was swinging it, I almost had like those kind of feelings, uh -huh. like how good it felt to just like fight. Fight. But you know, yeah, I'm too old for that shit now. So, <laughs> so we do it here right. with blocks. Um, Justin, uh, for 10 hours, you hold on. You said if the cameras are on for 10 hours of your life, at some point, the level of performative, perform, performativity doesn't matter. The camera doesn't lie for 10 hours a day. And no, you're wrong. Cause I see it every day with YouTubers. I see it all the time. Chronic YouTubers who stream 10, 12, 15 hours a day. They're very good at, at lying and their audiences absolutely believe it. And only people that are only certain people will notice, but like most people do plenty fine. You don't, what do you mean? The whole world is run on that. Politicians, social media people, nobody knows what's true or what's not true. Like, I think people are able to lie all the time. Now it's whether or not people believe people, I think that's different. But I think like the camera does lie to us because we don't know how to read the camera. So we don't even know how to view what we're viewing. Like this situation here, he icks me out. He didn't ick some of you out. So I would say like the camera doesn't lie. Look at what he's doing. And you're saying, you know, it doesn't matter. I've watched streamers for years. I just don't, I think you're saying you trust yourself and your perception of what you're seeing more than you trust the camera. Because lots of people are able to mask and lie. No problem. People are online every day for hours. And it doesn't seem to matter. You know what I mean? Like, especially if they're having a cognitive dissonance, then there's no like, it's just, you know what I mean? Is there anything like else that you, you know, cause I just like, I'm aware that that was a lot. Yeah. And yeah, no I also like, if anything comes up uh, afterward, like don't, like I'm available. Mm -hmm. So don't hesitate to reach out to me Thank if you. there's any confusion. Cause sometimes, you know, we can contract or we get scared. Oh my God. Wow. You think you would have warned her ahead of time. What did I just do? What did yeah. I just reveal all of that? You know, so we can stay in, in dialogue about it because that was intense. Yeah. But I think everything happens for a reason. So I'm not going to get hung up on like, you know, for before I did it, the part of me was like, am I going to look silly or whatever? And like, I probably did, but like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. It was supposed to happen. Everything was supposed to happen. I was supposed to fucking cry on camera. <laughs> I was supposed to fucking... I literally just said, <laughs> there was a bathroom break in between filming this and the sit down. And I was saying in the bathroom to him, I was like, I can't believe I didn't cry. And then I start crying right off the bat during this one. So I spoke too soon, but it's okay. Cause that's that, that. Discord says, is it just me? I don't like her saying I need to be available to everyone. It's just a cope temporarily because she wants to save people the way she wasn't saved. I think we all feel that way as like survivors. We want to save everybody, but you can't. So like, she's not going to be like, she's not actually going to do that. When she heals and goes to therapy, she'll real therapy. She'll recognize like she can't be. You know what I mean? She can't be um, available to everyone. That's not how it works. Nobody's available to everyone. What That's code for I want to be available. Um, so I need to – I. it's a code for once I've helped myself, I can help more people. So people get burnt out on helping people because they can't help themselves. So I think she's – I don't think she means she's going to be available to all people. I think it's just code for – I want to help myself so I can help more people. That is being more present for people. Yeah. Showing them that I can do that. Yeah. And not just be some weird robot. Yeah. 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 Amazing.
Love you, Blair. Thank you. Appreciate you. Can I give you? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I won't push you away like everyone. (laughs) Thank you. I really do. This helps me a lot. Yeah. Justin says you must be friends with those sociopaths because there's no way. A lot of you must be friends. Nah, dude. You just live in a world where you mask or you recognize people do it all the time. Like, people do it all the time. Um, People aren't themselves as much as they let you think they are. Oh, I think Blair's Why Video is the video, guys. Yeah. So she's just, she's just redoing the interview. So is there another video that you guys meant for me to see? I'm not seeing it. Yeah, 3,000 people watching. Yeah, it's just um, it's just the same video. We just watched it. So, okay, that's cool. Blair's putting it on her video or her channel. That's nice. Okay, so I'm glad it looked like it helped her. Um, it looked like it started off, uh, started a possibility for her to explore herself, which I think is kind of the point here, is like this is an opportunity for her to see herself, and I think that's really, really good. I think it would be nice if she saw – people who could help with childhood trauma specifically and specifically people who've studied childhood trauma. I think that'd be really, really great. I think she might want to get assessed for borderline um, and autism if she really feels like she might have it. Um, Yeah, I'm glad it helped her. Not the biggest fan of him, but, you know, I don't have to be to see that it helped her. Um, Again, I'm not a big fan of Blair's content, but I am a big fan of Blair the consciousness in terms of her journey. I'm rooting for her and I want her to to heal that trauma to the best of her ability because it's a lot that's a lot of that's a lot to handle you know that's not easy stuff right there guys so props to her for sharing and being vulnerable um i'm so excited to see who blair is in a few years because that dmt trip she took with uh talk, talked about joe joe rogan with talked to joe rogan about with i'm tired sorry um it really showed me like she was popping bubbles i'll reach out to her i haven't talked to her in years i'll reach out to her and see if she wants to Talk to me, come on a stream, come on a podcast and talk to me and see how that goes. No guarantees. I'm sure she's really busy. I'm not sure if she'd be available, but I will reach out to her and see if she wants to chitty chat and we can have a good conversation about stuff, you know? Yes, snaps for Blair. Yes, let's go. In my head, in real life while I'm bed, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense, I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess, please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth, and living life as a fool. Dun, 